Well, happy Friday, everyone. Welcome to another live lawn care Q&A. My name is Ron Henry, and I'm here to help answer your lawn care questions. You guys will notice we're starting an hour earlier this evening than we normally do. That was a scheduling change that I made accidentally and decided just to roll with it. So hopefully we'll see how this works out. If not, we'll go back to our normal time of 7 p.m. next week. If this is the first time you ever joined the channel, the live stream, happy to have you here. The way this works is super simple. On your screen, you will see a chat box. On that chat box, you will see a area where you can let, you can enter your question, comment, concern of the day, and I work through them in the order that they come in. Sometimes I have the answer, sometimes I do not. But either way, we have an awesome time talking about lawn care. So guys, coming to you tonight, again, as usual, on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and the Twitter. And again, guys, we're starting an hour earlier tonight. We're just gonna test it out, see how that works, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll keep it rolling. All right, so let's see what we have in the live stream tonight. Hopefully you guys are all doing well. I had a pretty good week. And we got Brandon Larson here in the house. He's starting out, he says, hey Ron, soil tested low for micros. I bought granular in hopes to correct the soil versus spraying a topical application. Is my logic correct or is a topical application distributed into the soil eventually? So your, your logic is correct, uh, Brad. I mean, getting a granular does put the micronutrients um, in the soil. And the same thing also happens as well. Like if you, if you spray your micros onto the foliar, you think about it, you cut your grass, that also, again, those clippings work their way into the soil and you're, you're able to, to retain some of the micros that way. Um, so either either way works. If you are trying to actually get it into the soil, the granular approach was what you did um, makes makes the most sense. So yeah, good. I, I, it's an interesting question. This is another one that I've never really gotten before. But um, but yeah. So uh, here, so let's dig it out a little bit. A little bit. And a uh, situation where um, where spraying liquids, spraying your micros as liquids, would be advantageous. Say, is take an example where um, say you have a soil that's that's more alkaline, right? So your pH is a bit higher, to where 
Um, some of your micronutrients, like say for example, iron, aren't readily available. They, they're more difficult for the grass to make it, take advantage of it. If you're spraying it to where it's foliar absorbed, the grass, you're able to still get some of those nutrients into the plant versus if you're only putting your micronutrients in by a granular, they would not be available. But in the case of, of you know, if we assume that your pH is, is solid, so you have like a pH of 6.5, um, it really doesn't matter uh, either way. The grass is still able to use use the um, the micronutrient. The Again, the advantage of, my, of the liquids is that they work faster, they're, they're uptake faster, and if you have a soil that is, um, that is more alkaline or has where your pH is, is not such that it makes those nutrients readily available, a the the foliar is a way to still get make those available to the plant. So great question. That's that's a good one. It's not one I've I've not actually uh, received before. So uh, so thanks for asking that. So here on the ground we got uh, the Mandarian. We got a few other folks here chiming in. Some folks from Australia. Hopefully you guys are all doing well. Lawn Attic from Australia. Hopefully you're doing well. And uh, guys, it's been a good week, man. The green fuzz is coming in. The lawn is beginning to green up, which makes me happy. Um, I also got some pictures from some of you guys from, of your lawns as well, and uh, they're doing uh, doing really well. So Papa Mo's Low sent me uh, uh, an email earlier this week, some, some really kind words, and he's showing off his domination line. So uh, let me show you his lawn. This is pretty epic. So you look at his lawn, you can guess which one is his. His is the one on the right. The neighbor is the one on the left. And the only thing he's been putting into his lawn, granted, he has um, you know, been, been on our program as far as um, the liquids and Primo and those types of things. But really, since the fall of last year, he's telling me the only thing he's done is pre-emergent and Essential G. That's the only thing he's put into, into his lawn. And you can see how that looks. I mean, the, the color looks in, looks incredible. I mean, get, given this time of year, especially when you compare it to the lawn that is right next door. So definitely taking on the challenge to build healthier soil rewards you in in that kind of, uh, those kinds of results. You know, your grass greens up um, um, faster. There's just tons and tons and tons of benefits to it. So guys, I got some other video today to actually highlight um, talking about scalping, like some of the benefits of scalping. It's a question I have gotten some from viewers in email saying, you know, should I scalp my lawn? Should I not scalp my lawn? What, like, if it's going to green up faster, is it how much of a difference does it really make? So I actually have some some video today. I'm going to show you guys here in a little bit uh, from the Real Rollers Turf Park that shows, like, uh, you know, how well, the difference that scalping can make as far as as your green up. I also have some video to to show you guys the results of spraying certainty because some of the questions that some of you, you guys are dealing with are, um, you know, you're dealing with poannua in your lawn a lot this time of year. And uh, you want to say, you know, what's the effectiveness of certainty? And if you guys have been following the content, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I sprayed, I blanket sprayed the entire Real Rollers Turf Park with certainty. I did the pre-emergent, but then I also did a, a certainty application to uh, to target the POA. And then um, right before the live stream today, got some video, and I want to show you guys the results of that. So just stay tuned for that. That's coming up here a little bit later in the show. Hope everyone else is doing well, having a great evening. Um, Next up, we have Mr. Uh, Anthony Allen. Anthony Allen's up here. He says, hello, Ron and Yard Care family. Just wanted to know when is the best time to aerate Bermuda grass in Fayetteville, Georgia area? Yeah, so what I would say, Anthony, is once the lawn has fully, was, it's greened up, it's, it's, it's actively growing, that's when you want to really look into introducing aeration. Now, here's the thing. I, I've done it both ways. I have aerated um, in the past. I've aerated my lawn in early March, so like around this time frame. And I've also done it uh, in in the April time frame, and I'll tell you that really waiting until the lawn is um, is fully growing, it's, it's it's again it's fully green. You're mowing it regularly. That's a better time to do your aeration work, in my opinion, because it's going to um, it's just going to recover faster. If you do it now, and there's actually a video on, online of me showing you when when I aerated my lawn in March, it's probably from four or five years ago. It just takes a lot longer to recover. So your lawn looks like a porcupine rolled rolled around on it for you know for weeks and weeks. Versus if you wait till the uh, you know April May time frame to do it, it just recovers really quickly. You know you'll, you'll do a mow or two, and then a week later it's gonna be really difficult to tell that the lawn was aerated. So if it were me, I would um I would wait. I would wait. You still got plenty of time to do it. I would wait till um till the April April time frame. One thing I'll tell you: if whenever you're planning your aeration. I would do it around your next granular application. So say you're gonna be doing your essential G application or your granular fertilizer application, I would plan to do your aeration right before that. Cause you think about it, right? Essential G, biosimilates, your compost, humate, biochar, 
all the good stuff to help improve soil quality. Fertilizer also, or granular fertilizer anyway, is also designed to get into the soil. That's how the, um, so the bacteria can, can eat it and transform it into a, into a form that the grass can take advantage of it. All of this relies on it being in the soil. So if you wait to apply, do, your, do an application after aeration, you're just fast tracking that process, right? Like literally the lawn is less compressed. There's voids opened up all throughout the lawn. So if you do your granular biosimilant or your granular fertilizer application right after that, you're you're really um, you know you're 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 taking advantage of the of of the fact that you're you know the the, the soil is open for air water nutrients all that to get uh, to get into the soil which is which is a good thing. Great question. Um, if you have anything else, definitely let me know. It's it's good, man. I like that you guys are already thinking about the culture practices. And every, you guys are just not focused only on you know what can I spray on the lawn, what can I fertilize the lawn with. You know, I haven't gotten many mowing questions yet, but I like that you guys are asking about aeration and those kinds of things because it's really important. It's an important part of getting an amazing lawn. All right, next up we got Jason Harrison. He says, good evening, Ron and crew. Weather next weekend below freezing, boo. Yeah, but not for very long. I mean, we, we'll get some We'll get some cold weather. Here's the thing, you're gonna have that. Between now and really the mid, mid to end of April, you're gonna have some ups and downs, cold weather, warm weather, but for the most part, we are on a warming trend. We are on a warming trend, uh, as is evidenced by all the pictures you guys are sending me with your lawns greening up, so uh, so no fair or not. Even though you may have some um, some cold some cold snaps here and there, uh, it's uh, it's not going to stick around. It's really not going to stick around. So nothing to uh, nothing to be nothing to be too concerned about. It's all it's all part of it. All part of the fun. All part of the fun. You guys want to see the uh, the results? I'll show it again later on the live stream. I'll have to show it again during the seven o'clock hour. But you guys want to see the results of scalping at the Real World of Stir Part? You guys that came in here early, the diehards, even though I changed the time of the show that are, just, that are here early, y'all want to see? So last week, um, Real Rollers Lee was out there scalping the uh, the turf park. He did the zoysia plot. He did both zoysia plots, and he did just two passes down the middle of the Bermuda plot. Right, so let's see the results of that. Let me show you guys that really quick. So, if you look here, this what you're looking at right now is El Toro zoysia. This is a week later after scalping, you know, and uh, this is Zeon zoysia again, a week later after scalping. And you're probably saying to yourself, right? Let me pause here real quick. You're probably saying to yourself, yeah, but this zoysia it could be this zoysia that's greening up. How do I know that it's just the zoysia that the scalping actually is causing this? How do I know that it's not just um? How do I know that it's not, uh, you know, just the fact that it's that grass type and it greens up faster? You know, how do I, how do I know that? So if we go back here, you'll see that once we get past the uh, the El Toro, we get past the Zeon, and we get to the Bermuda. We're going to pause it right about here. So you see how that's greening up. And if you look. You notice anything special about that middle about that middle part of the lawn? So the left part was not scalped, the middle was scalped, and then the right part was not scalped. So you've got not scalped, scalped, and then not scalped again. So you know the the Bermuda the zoysia plots were all completely done. The Bermuda was not, and then again you can see the results of of the zoysia. So if you want to know, if any of your friends or family say, hey, you know what's what's the whole point of scalping your lawn? Does it you know does it actually really do anything? You have a perfect example there of two zoysia plots that were completely done. And then you also have a Bermuda where we just we were just just the middle was done and you can see the difference in color between the two sides. So if you want that green up a little bit faster, you want to dominate the neighborhood a little bit faster, and you have the time and energy to do it, getting out there and getting some scalping done on your lawn is not a uh, not a bad plan. So just, just something to keep in mind. I thought you guys would enjoy that. And I wanted to, to show you guys that this, this evening. All right, guys, so we have our first super chat of the evening, which means also our show, first show sponsor of the evening. It is from Mr. Trevor Johnson. Super chat received. He's happy Friday, Ron. Mower blades are sharp. I like it and ready to go for the first mow this weekend. Hopefully it dries up after those crazy storms in North Texas last night, planning on PGR for the first time. When should I start that? Great question. So awesome job of getting your mower all tuned up and ready to go. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm planning to mow tomorrow. It's actually raining right now, but it's supposed to stop. And then if the weather holes out tomorrow, we're gonna get some mowing on. So that's, that, I'm looking forward to that. I've already got my first mowing, but I haven't, I haven't really done, done much for the back lawn. So that's gonna get a cut tomorrow. Now, as far as plant growth regulator, uh, I like to introduce that in the April, May timeframe. So it really depends on, um, on how your grass is growing in your area. Like if you're in some parts of Florida, you could be doing growth regulator already. 
if you are, um, in, but here in, in the Georgia area, you would not want to put a good example. If you're looking at the uh, the rear rollers turf part, like that's not ready for, for growth regulator just yet, right? You really want to let that to be filled in, let it be growing nicely, and then you can introduce, um, introduce uh, Primo, introduce, let me see if I got it here, I do. Introduce this, uh, the good stuff right here, right? So, um, if if you're my neighbor, I will tell you mid April to or to the to early May is when you can uh, you can start doing that. When you decide to do uh, Primo, when you decide to start doing growth regulator on your lawn, Trevor, um, you're in Georgia, so I'm gonna assume you have you have Bermuda or you have Zoysia, right? So the the application rate, the low end of the application rate for hybrid Bermuda. Um, and also for zoysia is 0.25 ounces or a quarter of an ounce mixed with a gallon of water sprayed over a thousand square feet. So that is the amount that you would spray for, um, but that's, that's the monthly application rate. So you would spray that and that's going to give you about three to four weeks of regulation, depending on temperature, weather, rainfall, all that kind of stuff, right? So the way to do it, and that's going to not have you get tip burn and also, um, is going to, to, you know, there's the only negative to really doing it the way I'm about to describe to you is that you have to be out there twice a month to spray it versus only once a month. And that is to take the monthly rate and cut it in half. So if you have a four gallon backpack sprayer, um, 0.25 times four is one ounce. So instead of spraying one ounce once per month, what we're going to do is we're going to take one ounce, divide it in by half, and we're going to take, we're going to spray half an ounce, so 0.5 ounces of Primo. We're gonna mix that much with four gallons of water, spray that over 4,000 square feet, and that is half the monthly rate. So let's say, you know, we get a, a warm snap, right? And in, you know, beginning of April or, or mid-April, your lawn is looking awesome, living its best life, it's growing, you're cutting it, everything is looking great. And you wanna start introducing plant growth regulator. Instead of doing a full month, a full rate application, go off that half rate, start that half rate, and then just maintain that every two weeks. So. April 15th, May 1st, May 15th, June 1st, and so on and so forth, all the way through till September. But again, just look, let your lawn, let your lawn be your guide, let your grass tell you when it's ready for uh, for Primo. Once it's fully grown in and you're mowing it regularly is when I like to do it. Um, let me see, what else can I tell you? Outside of that, I would say, if you can mix a little bit of liquid fertilizer with it, I like to use Turfplex or, um, or 901C, those are both great options for um, for for mixing along with Primo. That also helps to to, to keep tip burn away. And yeah, that's uh, that's the the main thing, man. I mean, if you if you do that, you're gonna have a great result with it. Now, the only thing I got to really warn you about when it comes to growth regulator is there's there's life before Primo and there's life after Primo. Once you start doing it, you're gonna wonder why you waited so long at, because the just the way the the, the lawn looks. The fact that it doesn't grow as quickly and just the, the the way the turf gets dense and the color you get from it just looks looks incredible. So uh, let me know if you have any other questions and uh, and uh, good job on getting your mower all tuned up and ready to go for this season. All right, so we got some people here in the in the live stream as well here on the Instagram. Let me go over here and, and acknowledge you guys. So we got Granger Hicks in the house, Mr. Hot Fuck Fashion. What's going on, Granger? Hope you're doing well, sir. We also got Lawn Whisper in the house. Uh, Justin is in the house as well, so give Justin some love. If you guys have some cool season turf, looking for some cool content, uh, give Justin some love as well. And uh, and yeah, so thanks for you guys coming to hang out. Uh, Granger saying thanks for the quick shipment of a Celeprint. You are very, very welcome, sir. I know how I am. I know when I order something, once I, I place my order, I'm like I'm like checking in the UPS guy and the, uh, the the FedEx guy to see when it's showing up. So we try to ship things as quickly as possible so it gets to you as quickly as possible. So I'm glad that we're getting that right and uh, appreciate the support. If you need anything else, uh, definitely let me know. Maestro, what's going on, Maestro? Hopefully you're doing well, sir. Thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream. All right, guys, uh, as far as other um, housekeeping, actually, Trevor, let, before I forget, you know, Trevor's probably like, hey, man, hey, I was the first super chat. You know what that means, Ron? Don't, 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 uh, don't let me have to come after you. I'm in Fayetteville. I can travel. Make sure that I get him up as the show sponsor, Mr. Trevor Johnson. There you go. Your name in lights for whatever that means to you. Thank you for the support, sir. And you are currently our show sponsor. All right, so let's see what other questions uh, we have here. We got Vahid uh, Navi in the house. He says, happy Friday, my dears. What's going on, Vahid? Thanks for coming to, to, to hang out. It's nice being called my dears, you know, I've been called much worse. So it's, it's always nice to have a, a term of endearment from the uh, from the viewers. So guys, uh, on the topic of new content for you guys to also check out, um, you know, the, the one of the questions that, that I've gotten is around organic uh, ways of, of taking care of your lawn. Because there's some people that don't want to use synthetic products. So to help with that, what we did is this week, a blog post was launched. Let's see if I can make this happen. Make sure that 
My screen sharing is right. Yep, we're good to go. Yep, and a new blog post was launched this week on answering the question, the best types of organic fertilizer. So what's cool about this is it talks about, gives you a, a quick primer into fertilization. What is organic fertilizer? Um, how you can actually make it if you want, like using compost or like the differences of using compost or, or, or using an organic fertilizer product that's already made for you. Uh, what the best organic fertilizer are, like what are the things we'd want to look for in a product. And then it talks about um, the benefits of using organic ferts, and then we talk about the, the, the new product from Miramichi Green, the, their premium organic fertilizer product, which you guys have been, been, um, been very well received. You guys have been, been, been picking that up. So I um, can't wait to see the results you guys get with it, as well as um, Essential G and some liquid products as well. But check this out. It's a really cool read for any of your friends or family or anyone that's into organic uh, lawn care. You know, because you're talking about lawn care that can be used not only on your, not only for your lawn, but if you have a vegetable garden, ornamentals, anything like that. You know, this is um, this is some content that that'd be good for you to uh, to to take a look at. Feel free to share it with friends, family, anyone that you think can benefit from it. And you know, a lot of work goes into producing all producing all this content. So if you guys can can at least read it, share it, I would really appreciate it. If you are interested, here is the organic fertilizer uh, blog post. Uh, there we go. And, and there you go. So if you guys are interested in organic fertilizer or, and, and just, you know, how to make it, 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 some ways of doing it with compost yourself, check out the uh, check out the new post. And for anyone watching this after the fact, like I've been doing here in weeks past, I will also put that in the show description. So the it's not in there now, but the end of the show, that will be in the description as well. So um, so at the end, of, I tend to go and build that out the description based on what questions that people ask. So this blog post will be in there at the end. So good stuff. All right, next up is DJS1. He says, hey, Ron and the Lawn Fanatics, where can I find Spectacle Flow at a reasonable price? Thank you in advance. Well, it depends on what you consider reasonable. It's it's expensive. It's more expensive this year than it was last year. Uh, you know, I, I, to be honest, Spectacle last year was three, 325, 350. What's it going for now? I wouldn't be surprised if they're already asking close to 400 for it. I will tell you this, it's gonna cost more. If you wait till the fall, it's likely gonna cost more than it costs now. Uh, you can check like your local, um, I mean, you can check your local like lawn care places and see if they have it, but it's uh, it's not an inexpensive product. Yeah, it's gone up quite a bit, well, 420, that's a lot. You might be able to get it cheaper than this on Amazon. I mean, Amazon's got it at $420, which is kind of steep. You might be able to do a bit better than that. But um, but the reason why Spectacle, I mean, I put it this way, the, the minimum I'd expect you to pay for that is, likely in, in the in the three hundred dollar price range between three and three fifty. If you're getting a deal, that's that's likely what you're gonna pay. Um and uh and assuming it's not agency, I'm not sure it might be an agency product. But the thing with spectacle, the reason why it's so expensive is because it works. Like literally, you know, my lawn doesn't have any POA in it. Alex's lawn, other than by the little mailbox area, which I'm not sure if I actually sprayed there or applied it there, has little to no POA in it. Um, so the reason why it's such a why it's such an expensive pre-emergent is because one, one of these bottles one of these bottles treats uh, treats a lot. Like one of these you can share with you, your neighbors. I mean, one of these goes a, a, a long way. Um, I'll, I'll, you can do the math really quick. You figure it's an 18 ounce bottle and it's at the higher end of the rate for Bermuda, it's 0 0.20 times um, 18. So we take 18 and we divide that point, 0 0.20, uh, nine, is that right? 90,000 uh, 90, square feet, something like that. So yeah, so several, so several acres. I mean, this is a lot. It's a lot of product. It covers quite a bit. I mean, my math might be off, but it's at least at least two acres, maybe a little bit, a little bit more. Again, depending on the application rate. If you go with a lower rate, it'll cover even more than that. So this one little eighteen ounce bottle covers a lot, and a single application is going to keep Poe out of your lawn. So there's a reason why it costs what it does because it's frankly it's worth it, right? It's worth it if you don't want to have to deal with weeds, right? And on, and on that topic, you know, as far as um, as far as why Spectacle is so good is that it's it's excellent at preventing uh, one of the weeds that are the bane of our existence in warm season lawns and even cool season lawns too. But this time of year, POA, if your pre-emergent game wasn't on point last fall, or if you didn't do like a touch-up application in the um, you know the late late fall early winter, you're likely starting to see a lot of green pop up through your lawn that some people are mistaking for crabgrass. It is not crabgrass. It's more than likely POA annua. There were some at the Real Realtors Turf Park, and I did a video that I shot again showing the results of that. So this is two weeks after Certainty, Certainty, Surfactant, and um, obviously water. Certainty and Surfactant were sprayed. The entire um, turf park was, was blanket sprayed. 
and you can make this out in the video. You see the light spots in the lawn? Those are where the POA was. So right there is POA. Um, the areas that are, are light, there's a really good one here, but when I get, a little, get the camera a little closer here, I can show you. Like that's POA, that used to be POANUA, and you can see two weeks later after, after spraying that with certainty, how it is, uh, how it's gone, how it's all cleaned up. So, uh, so yeah, the, as far as a product that, that works well, um, it's really, it's really hard to beat. Another thing that, that's good to know about this too, right, is the entire, what I'm trying to show here is the entire turf park was blanket sprayed with this formulation, right? So I didn't just spray just the, the Bermuda plot, the entire thing was done. So you think about it, two weeks ago, the entire thing was, was blanket sprayed with certainty at the at a higher end of the of the rate chart because for POA, you need to go up on the rate to be able to really take care of it. And you can see it didn't negatively affect the green up. You know what I mean? So you, you it was it was sprayed two weeks ago, the lawn was scalped last week, and here we are a week later, and it's looking it's looking like that. So as far as a post-emergent herbicide that you can use to get rid of POA, and that's not really gonna negatively impact your your green up. Uh, this is a great test of um, of certainty just to kind of show that off for you guys. Again, all all three of those plots were sprayed at the same rate. I think I, I used, um, actually I can tell you what I used. It's um, uh, one large scoop and one small scoop um, over a thousand square feet. So you can, depending on how much area you're, you're, you're spraying, that is still on the lower end. One large scoop is the lower, is the minimum over, one large scoop over a thousand square feet is the minimum. That's the low end rate for POA. Um, to treat POA with certainty. And you can go up quite a bit more than that. So I went up a little bit above that and it did a great job. It absolutely, absolutely smoked it. So um, again, the product does work. The big thing is, is if you're gonna be applying certainty, which I've got here, if you're gonna be applying this, it is critical, it's super important that you use surfactant with it. These two go together if you want a great result. So you gotta, if you're using certainty, you gotta use surfactant along with it to get a good result for controlling POA. And again, if you, as long as you mix it properly, spray it properly, it's not gonna negatively impact your green up and it's gonna get rid of POA. So, so good stuff. So you didn't ask about that DGS one, but the reason why you asked about spectacle flow is to kind of prevent POA and it's a good segue into talking about, about uh, that, um, that, that small test that we just recently did and wanted to show that off to you guys. I figured you would, you would like it. All right, next up, we got Papa Mo's Low in the house. He says, got my leveling mix ordered with a discount. Nice, good stuff, I like that. He says, should arrive mid to late, late April, just in time to aerate and spread. I like it, Papa Mo's Low. Like I've done um, some leveling work. If you look at some of the, the videos in the past, especially when I'm just doing just top dressing, not really sand so much, but just mainly a compost product like, um, like Carbonized PN. I've done that in April, like, you know, early, the first half of April, I've, I've, uh, I've done that in the past and it, it works out great. If you're gonna do leveling work, we're gonna be going a little bit heavier. That's when I would say wait a little bit towards the, um, you know, towards the second half of April, more May timeframe. Again, it's all dependent on temperature, on weather, on how your particular lawn is doing. If it's greening up, you know, nicely and you're good to go a little bit early, by all means, but you just, you don't wanna really top dress a completely dormant lawn because um, there's, there's just no reason to, uh, to do that. So thanks again for the support, Papa Mo's Low. I'm glad you got your discount, save yourself a little bit of money, which is always nice. Always nice to do that. Always good to save money. All right, uh, Vahid Navi says, when is the best time or temperature to put down organic fertilizer? You know, that's actually in, in, this, in this article, uh, Vahid, we, we, we covered that. But really, um, once, kind of like with Milo, once soil temps are above 55 degrees, that's when a lot of the the, um, the microbial activity in your soil is gonna start picking up. Um, that's when you can begin introducing fertilizer. I usually just tell people, wait until the lawn is greening up, like you, you got the green fuzz over the entire lawn, and then you can begin fertilizing, which is normally well after the average soil temps are 55 degrees. So, um, but that is when, if, if you want the most correct answer, once soil temps 55 degrees or higher, that's when activity is gonna really start picking up as far as um, the, the, the healthy bugs in the soil. And if you want to you know, introduce your fertilizer then, that's, uh, that's fine. But really I would wait until, uh, at least for synthetics anyway, I would wait until you get to the point where the, where the lawn is, um, is growing and you're, you're ready to start mowing and, and, and whatnot. So hope that helps. With organic, you can do a little bit earlier because it does take a while for that to break down. It's not like synthetics where they, they're available as, as uh, faster. But so if you're asking, you're looking for an answer 55 degrees or higher, or when your, your lawn is green, when it starts growing in. It's a good question. All right, next up is Papa Mo's Low. He says, 
He says, uh, getting my order um, for the Golf Course Lawn Store. It's the only place I could find a Celeprin SC. Thanks for having it available. We do our best, man. I really, really, I tell you, one of my pet peeves, I really hate stuff being out of stock. I really do. You know what I mean? Sometimes, things, sometimes it's out of your control, um, but I really hate products and, and stuff being out of stock when you guys um, need them. And uh, yeah, so a Celeprin SC, we should be good on that. You know, I try to stay ahead of, uh, of it as you guys are buying it up. Um, but if you know, the thing is, you know, if you, if you know you're going to be using it this season, so the end of this month, really, uh, end of this month, early April, is when you can do your seller print application if you're using it for preventative uh, purposes. So if you want to get it, get it and, and just have it on the shelf, have it ready to go, right? So you, you've got your stuff set already ahead of time for the, uh, for the season, for the season. All right, so Granger Hicks in from Instagram is chiming in. He says, that silicon essential G really makes a difference with the stronger grass and drought resistance, your opinion. Um, so here's the thing, to be able to say, um, to be able to say that, that silica, like if you, that, that in other words, to measure that is difficult, uh, Granger. Um, you know, the, the research on having silica as an, as an additive to products, the research shows that it is beneficial. It is beneficial. Um, to be able to, to say that it, um, that, that it by itself is going to um, make a visual difference in your drought resistance and your disease resistance. You'd have to have two plots and test it like one area side by side. And really, if you're gonna do, we really, um, um, if you're really trying to be scientific about it, the only difference between those areas is that one would have to have not had any silica applied and another one would have to, right? Um, but but yeah, the, you're right. The benefits of it are increased cell wall strength. So it helps uh, disease resistance, drought resistance. Those are some of, the, some, of the, some of the benefits, which is why a small amount of it goes into Essential G. You don't need a lot of it, but a small amount goes into Essential G and a small amount also goes into the new um, Miramichi Premium Organic Fertilizer. So that's, that's a great product from that standpoint. It's an organic fertilizer, but you also get um, a bacteria package. They put like a mycorrhiza bacteria and some other fungi in there. It also has some iron and um, humate. That is also in, I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. I'm talking about this, I'm not showing it. That's actually also in this product. So if we go here to lawn fertilizer and then go to the organic from Miramichi, that's what this guy is. So it's not just a 444, that would be, that would be nice, but you'd absolutely want more than that, right? So in addition to that, if you look at the makeup of it, you get um, 4% um, nitrogen, 4% phosphorus, 4% potassium, 9% calcium, um, some iron, 5 a little bit of iron, trace amounts of iron, 5% uh, um, humate, um, and beneficial bacteria and fungi. So it's a complete package. It's, re it's a very nice, it's a, an excellent fertilizer, especially as an organic option, right? So, I mean, it's, it's really tough to beat that if you're looking for a complete feeding program or for complete package for feeding um, your lawn in an organic way. All right, so yeah, you're very welcome, Papa Mo's Low. Um, thank you for all the support. Really, really do appreciate it. Optic Cyclics in the house next. He says, uh, who else has been hit by winter storms? Not here, and you need to keep that away. Don't listen. Don't don't bring your winter storms and all your other cold weather, all this nonsense, all this all this 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 uh, this stuff that's gonna hurt our green up. Keep that wherever you are. I mean, snow's pretty, but it's pretty on television. We don't need that down here in the south. You guys can just hang on to that, and you know, let us have our um, let us lawn lawn nerds enjoy our green up and and just just counting the days to get out there and start fertilizing and mowing and doing all the fun stuff that we enjoy. You don't just mess with the optic cyclic, right? All right, so we got Randall Lard. He says, hey, Ron, starting to see the green fuzz here in Northern Alabama. Nice. It's uh, it's coming in across the country. I mean, across the, the Southeast anyway. You know, you guys have been sending me more and more pictures. You got Papa Mo's Low. His green fuzz is coming on strong as, as is evidenced by that uh, that domination line. So yeah, you guys are doing, uh, doing well. Next up, we got Samuel Burleson. He says, evening. Evening, Samuel. Hopefully you're doing well, sir. Thank you for taking some time to grace us with your presence here in the live stream. I don't think I've seen your name on here before, so if it's your first time, welcome. Happy to have you here. And then we have uh, Robert Rainey saying, afternoon all, starting early. Yeah, Robert, so that was actually a mistake on my part, right? So I, I scheduled it a little bit early, an hour earlier than I normally do, and I was like, well, at this point, just got to roll with it, right? I don't want to, I don't want people like to make plans and, and you know, plan to be there and then, you know, the day of, I go and I change it. So we'll try it out this week. It will probably go back to the to the normal time next week. But for this week, yeah, it's an it's an hour earlier and gives you guys more time more time for me to jibber jabber before it gets too late, right? So there's also uh, also that as well. We'll see how it's um we'll see how it's received. We'll see how it works out, right? Logan Rooster's in the house. He says, "Hey y'all, what's going on, Logan?" 
And then next up we have Oliver Rittim. He says, hey, Ron. Hello, Oliver. Appreciate you coming to hang out in the uh, in the show. And then uh, the Jackie Bear, Brother Ron, Umberto Chong saying, hey, Ron, what's going on, guys? Thanks for coming to hang out. I appreciate you. And then Oliver Rittim saying, order the Yard Mastery backpack sprayer from your website. Looking forward to spraying uh, down my lawn with pre-emergent. Hope it's not too late. It depends on where you are in the country. Would it have been better to get it done two weeks ago, if you're in Georgia anyway? Yes. But you know the next second best time to doing it two weeks ago is? Today, and then best time after that is tomorrow. So get it down, get, you know, get it applied. Um, you know, when it comes to pre-emergent, when it comes to pre-emergent, I am of the opinion that earlier is better than late. That has served me well for keeping weeds out of my lawn. But if you get it now and you're, you know, you're gonna get your backpack sprayer, you're gonna apply it now, just you know, just get it down, get it down, apply it, and um, and you'll you'll get a good result. You'll be better off than if you don't apply pre-emergent at all. So there's there is that, there is that. So uh, so yeah, good stuff. And I still see you know a lot of the lawn care services for the most part in my neighborhood. They've like most the pre-emergent apps are pretty much done in my area by like the um, the services that drive through here. Uh, so, you know, I'll, I'll keep you guys posted if next, if between now and next week, if I'm driving out and I see a truck out there spraying, I'll let you know. But for the most part, the, the pros have already got their pre-emergent applied, at least in my area, in my neighborhood. So good stuff. And again, whenever you get the sprayer, I can show you this really quick. Make sure you're using uh, the, the flood jet tip, Oliver. So that sprayer comes with, uh, comes with a bunch of tips, but there really there's two that you need to pay attention to. The one that yours is going to come with is going to be a white tip but it's gonna look like, kind of like this. It's gonna be a flood jet tip. So actually, I'll show you here. Why, why do I not just come over here and, uh, and just use what's on the website? So if we say backpack and look at the sprayer, these are the assortments of spray tips that it comes with. Okay, so the white tip, that one there, that's what you're gonna get. That is what you wanna use for pre-emergent. This red tip is for fertilizer, um, Primo Max, um, any kind of foliar apps. If you're spraying like Celsius Uncertainty, this red tip is what you're gonna wanna use. The white tip is what you're gonna wanna use for anything that's soil-based. So again, like a, a Celeprin, your pre-emergent, if you're using a soil-based biosimilant type product, then you could use this as well. But with the difference between these two is that this produces a larger droplet, which is gonna allow it to get past the grass and into the soil. It's gonna be it's more efficient for getting into the soil where it can do its thing. So yeah, that's the only tip I get. I gotta tell you between uh, between those two. Red, the red tip, the um, the the 110 degree uh, foliar tip. This guy, save this for your fertilizer apps, your your herbicides, your Primo, and then the white tip, the flood jet tip, is for your pre-emergent. So good stuff. Good job. You're gonna like that sprayer. It's a great sprayer. I, you know, I've had, I have, I still own them all. I saw the Chapin, I have the Flow Zone, and I have the Yard Mastery of the three. I mean, the Chapin is a great sprayer. It's a tier below, in my opinion, below the Yard Mastery and the Flow Zone. The benefit to the Yard Mastery, in my opinion, is that you buy it and it comes with everything you need. It comes with the attachment, like the adapter. Let me show you here. It comes with this adapter that you need to be able to, to put on um, the various spray tips. It got the Quick Connect. Um, and then it comes with the spray tips as well. So you get this adapter and you get the spray tips. And when you add up the cost of the flow zone, once you factor in shipping and then you gotta go out and go buy these tips and the adapter after the fact, it's actually more expensive. So that's a big reason why I uh, I like the the Yard Mastery. You know, they're, they're both great sprayers. We're not gonna, if you have a flow zone, it's a great sprayer. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying that's a bad choice, but if, if what you're trying to do is get like a premium, like a high-end sprayer that you can really buy once, cry once, and you're not gonna have to replace anytime soon, and you're also trying to save a little bit of money, then buy the Yard Mastery or the Flow Zone because it comes with everything. It comes with everything you need. So good stuff, Oliver. Next up is Papa Mo's Low. He says, Ron, regarding my pending order, what's the better purchase as far as price? The Miramichi Carbon Combo for 10K square feet or purchase the bigger bottles individually? In my opinion, the big, oh, the bigger bottles individually. Oh yeah, by far, the bigger bottles individually because if you look, um, so the the way that the the ten thousand square foot is is put together, that carbon kit is put together, is is designed to cover a three applications on a ten thousand square foot lawn, so three months worth of product, right, for ten thousand square feet. Now, if you buy the bigger bottles, um, you've got you know you're getting a, you're getting a gallon. So I'll put it to you this way: with the let's I'll show you here really quick. So if you go and you look at the um, 
the carbon kit, right? For the 10,000 square foot one, you get uh, 32, you get 64 ounces total of each product. So you get 32 ounces of release zero and two, two 32 ounce bottles, so 64, and then two um, 32 ounce bottles of the Nutri Kelp, and then the Biospectrum, right? Um, and that is enough for 10,000 square feet for, for three months or so. Um, if you go to the gallon, now you're getting twice the amount of product. It is, um, you are paying, in other words, the, the cost per application is actually a bit, is a bit cheaper. Um, especially if you are wanting to use Biospectrum every single time, because we give you just enough Biospectrum, uh, just to be able to use with the carbon kit. But let's say you want to also spray Biospectrum whenever you are, um, like say when you're putting out, you're spraying a herbicide or you're, you're spraying fungicide or you're, you're doing like a liquid, like a, like a liquid fertilizer application outside of the carbon kit, like getting, do I have one here? I think I have one. Yeah. Getting a uh, biospectrum like this, like this gets, you get like way more. I mean, this is like enough for five acres. And on that note, let me show you here on that note, um, that's good. This will start shipping soon. Um, the guys from Miramichi Green said they, they, they've got, literally it's in route right now. Before you used to have to buy this big one. Now there's Biospectrum available in an eight ounce. So it's still available for pre-order now. It's gonna be going out soon. The, if you order, it's gonna be shipping soon. But now instead of having to get just the 17 ounce one, like this large one, which is for like four or five acres, you can get a smaller one, a slightly smaller one, which this, this, um, that, that eight ounce with like a gallon um, of, of release zero or 901C and a gallon of nutri -Kelp, like that's enough to, for you to go, you know, depending on the size of your lawn to, 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 to be able to apply as much as you want for an entire season. So it's the, the bigger quantities, you get more for your money, like, like most things, right? So um, it just, it really depends. So I, I would say this Papa Moslo, if you have, if you have a smaller lawn, if you have a smaller lawn, then, Perhaps getting, say, the the 10,000 square foot carbon kit, even though you have a 5,000 square foot lawn, that is probably going to come out better than if you have like a, um, like say, a 10,000 square foot lawn and you are trying to buy um, like two of the 10,000 kits. In that case, you're going to come out better buying the, um, like a gallon of, of Release Zero, a gallon of the kelp product, and then now an eight ounce of Biospectrum. So it, it really depends on the lawn size. What, what I find is there's some people that have the smaller lawns that will, again, do exactly what I was talking about. They'll take the 10,000 square foot kit and they'll buy that one, knowing that it just gives them more applications over the, the course of the season than buying the 5K one. So it, it depends, but yes, the, the higher volume you buy, the cheaper it is. That's like, like most things. So hope that helps, sir. Uh, if you have any other questions, let me know. You got my email address. You can always email me as well and I will help out. Guys, we have another super chat, another show sponsor now. Uh, let's see here. We have Mr. Robert Rainey has joined the madness. I'm not sure if LG is in the house tonight. I think he's out. He's on uh, out uh, doing some stuff this weekend. But Mr. Robert Rainey, Super chat received. he says, show sponsor for Dalvin Larry. He got a sweet new rig. Uh, nice. What's what new rig? I haven't seen his new rig. You haven't shown. Dal so hang on, Dalvin. Did you did you post that to the uh, to the to the Facebook group? I haven't seen it yet. I got to check it out. I got to check out the new hardware, man. I got to inquiring minds want to know. And uh, thank you so much for that, uh, Robert, for for your uh, contribution. You're very generous. Super chat. You are now the show sponsor. Again, your name in lights for whatever that means to you. I'm, now I'm curious. I want to go look in the Facebook group and see what he uh, see what he got. Where did you post it, Dalvin? Is it in the group? Yeah, let me know. Thanks so much for the super chat, uh, uh, Robert. Really appreciate all of the uh, the love and support. All right, on to our next question. It's from Doug 350Z with the twin turbo package on it. He says, "Good evening, Ron and everybody. What's going on, Doug 350Z twin turbo?" And then next up, we got Todd Hickey. Todd, so you finally got one. So, so here's the thing, guys. Todd has been in search of a green master, greens master. We've been emailing back and forth. He's been, he sent me pictures of stuff saying, what should I, you know, what do you think about this? And talk about different options. And it sounds like he's finally pulled the plug. He got a 2015 Toro Greens Master. Before I jibber jabber on anymore, we must first clap it up. <laughs> Gotta happen. 2015, man, so you, you got practically a new one. Nice. He says, you absolutely love it. Graduated from the California trimmer. No comparison. The striping is great. Four and a half uh, horsepower Subaru. 
Not sure getting full power to roller, thinking belts need tightening, uh, North Carolina NC. Um, possible, yeah. So the, the belts, uh, I haven't seen your mower, but if the, there should be a guard that runs from like the, I don't know, I don't have the mower in front of me. There's like a, there's like an, for lack of a better term, like an axle, or an axle that drives this, like drive cogs on the, the, the drive the cogs on the side that spin the drum. Um, there's a belt that's attached, on, That's a, there's two belts that are attached to that underneath this like black shield. And if those are loose or they're, they've worn, then yes, that could cause you to, um, to not be getting full power. One thing to keep in mind though, I gotta tell you Todd, and this is something you need to be aware of, is that the Greens Master, the walking pace of it is slower than a trimmer or a true cut. So if you're coming from a true cut or one of those other mowers and you're used to going faster, the trimmer, or sorry, the, the, the Greens Master is gonna be a bit a bit uh, slower the walking pace. So that's something I had to get used to too. When I first got mine, I'm thinking, what's wrong with this thing? I mean, it, it, I mean it's, a good, it's a good pace, but it's quite a bit slower than like, again, like a true cut or a trimmer or a McLean. And you, it's easy to think, well, um, is there you know, a belt missing or, or is a belt loose or something, you know, something going on with it? So if you don't mind, if you want, you can send me, I don't know how you would do this. You can get someone to video videotape you like running it on the lawn. I can tell you, yeah, that looks normal. Or just look online. You can see other videos online of people uh, mowing with it and they'll, you'll be able to see if your speed measures up to theirs. And uh, and yeah, the only thing I would tell you is um, if you have not yet, and I've got some, they're up there, I can't get to them. If you haven't ordered any as yet, get yourself at least one set, like a pair of the drive belts for the drums. So on the side of the mower, you're gonna see two like um, two covers and in there there's a cog and a little pulley system that drives the uh, the rear drums. And those, you know, I've been replacing mine annually. Um, that's like a wear item and you wanna replace those really every year or eventually you're gonna find it's gonna break, well, you'll have one little break on you. So every year I replace mine and that's just good maintenance. And um, the, the belts are not that expensive. Less than when I bought them, they weren't that expensive. They were like 20 bucks or so. So I don't know what they cost now. But uh, but have a pair of them because they're not inexpensive. It's not hard to change it. Like literally, you could do it. You could do it while you're out on the lawn. You just you know, it's not it's not a difficult thing to change. But if it breaks, your mower's out of commission till you get a set. So order a pair of uh, the uh, the side drive bells. I would tell you that's the only piece of advice I'd give you. And you're right. The strap action on a Greens Master is like nothing else. It is um, it is like nothing else. Is the best way to say it. Like I had my my True Cut, and I think you know what True Cut is the best thing ever. It could never be better. Greens mowers, and eh, they're fine for golf courses, but how much better could it actually be? And I made two passes with it, and I literally shut the motor off. The mower off. And I just started laughing. I'm like, man, this is this is this going to be a whole new level of stripe action. It's going to be a whole nother level of awesomeness. And as you are now finding finding yourself that that is the uh, that is the case, right? Greens mowers are pretty sweet. They're more difficult to live with, but <laughs> they make up for the way the the, uh, the quality of cut that you get. All right, next up is Francis uh, Fausto. He's dropping in. He says, just dropping in to say, hi, what's going on, Francis? Thanks for coming to hang out, sir. He says, still a little cool here in Arizona, but I see the Bermuda is poking its head out. Very, very nice. Very nice, Fausto. Yeah, he's chiming in from Facebook. Um, but yeah, yeah, you guys shouldn't be too far behind us. I mean, I'd imagine that Arizona, depending on where you are, it should be warm. It should be you know, fairly warm um, by now, right? Or it, you're, you're, you should be that much cooler than we are here in Georgia, unless you're in a higher elevation. So yeah, you should have to be out there mowing here fairly soon. Whole Southeast United States is about to have a whole lot of fun. If you like cutting grass. If you don't like cutting grass, then you're gonna be paying someone to cut your grass. But for us, us lots of lawn care nerds, it's uh, it's go time. It's go time, baby. All right, Finn cuts up next. He says, hey Ron, good evening. Uh, good to be able to watch the live again. Uh, cool, I'm glad that you're able to watch live. Uh, that's, uh, that's always good. I appreciate you taking some time on your Friday evening to come check out the show. Jim Carson from SoCal is like, hello everyone. Both my lawns are still looking good. The Tiff Tuff is starting to get greener. It never went dormant in California. Yeah, with you being in Southern California, I am. I imagine it doesn't get as cold as it does here in Georgia. Like we had, we had a, a couple of days where it got down into single digits, and then you know you have the twenties, thirties. I mean, it just winter in Georgia is like is like a it's like a roller coaster. It's like it could be freezing for a couple of days and then it'll be 50s and 60s the next day. So it's uh, you know, a couple of days later. So it's um, we don't have a pure like, you know, weeks and weeks and weeks where it's just cold on end like they uh, do in other parts of the um, other parts of the country. So. Uh, so, yeah. But yeah, I'm glad you got your London go dormant. It means you got to stay out there and play and mow your, the entire time. Right. Which is always good. 
Joe Roberts is up next. Joseph Roberts says, good evening. Happy Friday. What's going on, Joseph? Thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream, sir. Really appreciate you. I appreciate all the love and support. I always see you on the, uh, the different uh, groups on Facebook and, and whatnot. So I appreciate all the uh, the support, uh, Joseph. Thanks for that. Uh, Optic Cyclic says, do you watch any other long hair channels? I watch a few of them. Like, believe, believe it or not, between um, like the YouTube channel, between my work, between like the golf course lawn store and, and karate, I don't have a ton of extra free time. Um, I do watch some lawn care channels. I watch, um, I mean, you guys know them. I, I watch Alan's stuff. I watch some of Alan's stuff. I watch some of BYD stuff. I like to watch anything that the uh, that Soil Lab puts out, the guys from YSOIL puts out, because um, it's, it's it's great to see the kind of testing and, and stuff that they're doing. Uh, you know, sometimes I'll check out some of Justin's content. I I would say there's any channel that I that I watch every single vi every single video I watch religiously, um, because I just because just time. But I just I do jump around and and if if a topic's interesting to me, I'll um I will I will check it out. So yeah, I do watch other channels. Most of the stuff that I watch, believe it or not, on YouTube is not lawn care. It's around like cinematography or um or business or like other and other topics that I'm just that I'm just interested in, right? So I don't um like my YouTube time is more for learning uh that that kind of stuff. Publishing content and also consuming the stuff that's gonna make me better at making content. So that's how I spend my time primarily on YouTube versus uh watching a lot of other a lot of other videos. But especially for the, some of the other creators that are just coming up. Um like you know, like I know Daryl uh, Fairway Bermuda Lawns just started his channel, I think last year. It's at least a year now, right? Daryl, if you I'm not sure if you're watching tonight. So I, I definitely just try to watch him and give him some love, you know, because I, I remember when it was like just starting out and um, you know, and and to you know, to deal with your channel and just 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 putting out content, putting out content, and not hardly getting any views. So I try and support, especially anyone that that's really grinding and trying to get there, because I know I know what that's like. You know, I mean, today today, believe it or not, we actually crossed fifty thousand subscribers. So today, March third, March third, twenty twenty three, the channel crossed fifty thousand subscribers, which is pretty awesome, right? So I, if you told me that, you know, however many years ago when I started doing this that would have ever happened, I would have told you you're crazy. So thank you, thanks to all you guys for all the love and support to get us to where we are now. And we're just gonna keep going, right? We'll see where we'll see where this thing goes. So yeah, so uh, so yeah, awesome, awesome stuff. If you guys are enjoying the channel, enjoying the, the live stream, and you're not too mad at me for starting the show an hour early tonight, if you guys wouldn't mind hitting that like button ever so gently, costs you guys absolutely nothing. It gives me a chance to take a sip of my, tonight it is, it is Milo's, but it is the Arnold Palmer tonight. I would really appreciate it. And you know, to even to even sweeten the deal, even though LG's not here, I'll even put on some intermission music while I look for the next comment. All right. So next up we have Joseph Roberts. He has actually a comment now. He says, Big Sycamore tree coming out this week. Uh, 30 years of complaining about this tree. I'm so excited to have it gone. I mean, that's kind of, that's, I get it, Joseph, but that's, that's also kind of sad. A 30 year old tree, you know, it's always, it's always not, you know, I, I mean, it's probably a little bit painful to, to get rid of that guy, to cut it down, to get, to get it out of your lawn. I don't know what kind of drama you were dealing with with it. If it was, you know, breaking up sidewalks and driveways and, you know, like potentially causing other damage to your property. Uh, you know, if that's the case, I get, I totally get it. And your lawn is definitely going to be happier. Your grass is going to be happier about it because at 30 years old, it's probably a pretty big tree. And just think about it. Think about the fun now you get of trying to renovate that area to get it to match the rest of your existing lawn. So where uh, where one thing ends, there's always new beginnings, right? New beginnings, new challenges. So always, uh, always a good, always a good thing. Next up is Gary Johnson. He says scalping this weekend in Phoenix. Very cool, Gary. And again, I'm not sure if you just joined the live stream or when you or when you joined. If you guys want to see the results of scalping or why you should consider doing it, not strictly necessary, but if you want to consider doing it. Take a look here. This is the uh, the Real Rollers Tur Park. This is El Toro Zoysia that you're looking at right now. And then coming up here on the screen, we have Zeon Zoysia. This is one week ago today. And then finally, rounding out the trifecta is the Almighty Bermuda. And if you want to see the results, a good comparison is if you look there in the middle, you see the stripe that's green. That is what's scalped. On the left is not scalped, the middle is scalped, and then the right side is not scalped. So if you want to say, hey, what's the difference between me scalping my lawn and not scalping my lawn? There you go. See, I saved it for you. You got the you got the answer to the question as far as the difference that scalping can make in how quickly the lawn greens up. And that's not really the only reason to do it, right? So as far a good reason that why you want to consider scalping is one, 
it may helps you dominate the neighborhood faster, right? You can be that guy or gal on the street. You can be that person. But in addition to that, it's a good thing, right? Because you can clean out if any thatch that you've got in the lawn. Um, it's just a good way to, 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 to start the season out, to give it the lawn a good reset to begin the season, especially if you're not someone that plans to do a scalp mid-season or you have access to a verticutter, like cleaning cleaning it out, cleaning out all that dead stuff, all that material from that, that accumulates over the late fall and winter is a good thing to do, especially if you have a warm season turf like Bermuda, especially if you're gonna be shutting, you're gonna be mowing it at, um, at shorter heights. If you want some tips and guidance on scalping, um, on our we have a blog post, it's probably, when was it? A while back here now. Yeah. So it was um, from January. Should you scalp your lawn in the early spring? Um, short answer is yes, but there's a, it also one of our YouTube videos is embedded in that. Talks about what scalping is, when to scalp it, can any types, the types of grasses that you can scalp, what kind of equipment you need to scalp it, some tips and, and things to avoid if you do it. So if you're interested, go to the golf course lawn store, check out the blog section. And this has got a lot of great info in here as well. Again, if you're on the topic of scalping, biosimilance, all that, all that fun all that fun jazz. Another thing too, uh, that some of you guys have been asking for is, um, is, uh, like, a, like a, a lawn calendar or an application calendar that, um, that's free, right? So one that that's not in the, uh, the golf course lawn academy. So we have a detailed calendar that is in the paid course in the golf course lawn academy, but for a basic one, um, we, there's one available at the bottom of our, how to get a golf course lawn blog post. So to make that easier for you to find, because people were complaining, saying, man, I got to scroll to go find it. So if you go to the blog, you go to page three, the very first one is a step-by-step -step guide on how to get a golf course lawn. If you click on that, you will see now there is a menu, a nice sticky menu. So you can pick the topic that you're interested in, mowing frequency, choosing the right mower, whatever you're interested in. But at the very bottom is lawn care schedule month by month. If you click on that, it will take you to the bottom. It'll give you some guidance as far as things you need to know. And then month by month breakdown of how to... Um, you know, a program that you can use to get an, an amazing result with your lawn. So that you're going to see this start showing up on some of the blog posts to make navigation easier. If you guys like it, let me know. If you hate it, let me know. I can always get rid of it if it's if it's a pain. So good stuff. Let me know how the scalping works out, Gary. Uh, next week, I'm sure you'll be on the live stream. So keep me posted on how your scalping does. How your scalping does. I will tell you as I look for the next comment, if you get about 30 minutes, 45 minutes into scalping. Cause when you first start, it's super exciting. You're going to be like, this is awesome. I can't wait to get, to get this done. About 30, half an hour to 45 minutes into it. You're going to start questioning life's choices. You're going to start saying, you know, what have I got myself into? Completely normal. Happens all the time. Just push through and you're going to love the results you get afterwards. So don't just want to kind of warn you what's to come if you decide to go forward with this. All right. Next up is R Carter 911. He says, I sprayed my lawn with certainty and Celsius. Do I need to add pre-emergent granular to my yard as well? So yeah, it's a good question, R. Carter. So let's let's talk about that a little bit. So Certainty and Celsius, these two guys. So Celsius, post-emergent herbicide. Certainty, also post-emergent herbicide. These are designed to, to control, to kill, to get rid of weeds that are already present in your lawn. So if you've got poannua in your lawn or sedges, this will take care of it. You've got broadleafs in your lawn, spurge, other you know pain, pain, difficult weeds, clover, those kinds of things. Celsius will take care of it. So that this is these are designed to target pro, or target weeds that are already growing in your lawn. Pre-emergent is it's kind of in the name pre-emerge. So prior to the weeds emerging, prior to the plant emerging or growing, is when you apply pre-emergent. So the idea for pre-emergent is to hopefully reduce the need for this kind of stuff, right? Because you're going to prevent the weeds from going in the first place. And so it, to answer your question quickly, yes. So post-emergent herbicides are to control weeds that are already in your lawn. Pre-emergent is designed to prevent weeds from being in your lawn. So really the time the time to prevent pre, to, to, to use pre-emergent, I like to do it twice a year, once in the um, late winter, early spring, and then again in the early fall, late summer, early fall is when I like to do it. That produces a good result as far as keeping weeds away. And if you have a little bit of breakthrough or if your timing's slightly off, that is when the post-emergents come in. So to answer your question, you, you're you using the Celsius uncertainty will clean up the existing weeds that, are, that you're seeing now. Pre-emergent will prevent crabgrass, spurge. It'll help prevent the, the weeds that are gonna start coming to life now that temperatures are getting warmer. So the spring and summer weeds, that's what your pre-emergent now is gonna take care of. 
So hope that helps, hopefully that makes sense. Um, they're all herbicides, so pre-emergent is also a herbicide, but it's a different type and it's designed to, to accomplish a different goal. So it's not like if you do pre-emergent, you don't, well, if you do pre-emergent and you, and, you, and you get it really, you get it well, you do a good job with it, your need for post-emergence is gonna be reduced, but if you use post-emergence, that does not prevent more weeds from emerging, right? So if you, if you use like just Celsius uncertainty on your lawn, it'll kill the existing weeds, but if you don't use pre-emergent, once it gets warmer, crabgrass is going to start growing again. Spurge is going to show up and, you know, any other weeds that happen to find their way into your lawn. So hope that helps. Um, you need both of them. You need both a post and you need the, definitely the pre-emergent and post-emergence was going to help take care of what you've, you've already got. So hope that helps. That's a good question. If you need anything else, feel free to ask another question and I will revisit it. All right. Terrell uh, Dupree says, hey, thanks for all the tips. I'm in the Northwest. I can't wait to use these tips. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of this stuff still applies, right? So as far as, even if you have cool season lawns, the, the difference is you would not be using, you would not use Celsius and Certainty on a, um, like if you're in like the Pacific Northwest, you would not use these guys. That would be bad to use these on, on cool season turf. But what you can use instead, if you had, say, Poa and, um, and other weeds, and then if you're dealing with sedges, then that's where Tenacity and sedge hammer come in. So these are, this is a nice combination for cool season grass and then Celsius and certainty that is for warm season grass. But the same things apply, um, Terrell, get your pre-emergent out prior to, um, you know, prior to soil temps, the average soil temps crossing 55 degrees. Um, and then as far as feeding, you know, as far as the, the rest of the program, if you look at that, that blog post, actually I could post this in the chat for you guys. I'm gonna make it easy. I'm actually gonna link, I'm gonna scroll down here and I'm gonna post the actual, um, I'm gonna post the actual link with the, that takes you right to the schedule here in the chat. Let me make sure this actually works properly. I think it does. But yeah, as far as um, as far as what you're gonna be doing with like biosimilants, fertilization, growth regulator, like all that stuff that we're doing with our warm season lawn, it applies to your cool season lawn as well. Aeration, if you wanna aerate your lawn, you can do that as well. Same things apply. The only the, the differences are some of the products you're gonna be using, particularly when it comes to herbicides, it would be different. Um, for post-emergent herbicides are gonna be different, but as far as fertilizer, the same fertilizer I use on my lawn, the same growth regulator I use on my lawn, the same biosimilants I use on my lawn, all that stuff will work on cool season turf as uh, as well. So I hope, uh, hope that helps. And uh, again, as you're as you guys get closer to um, to your lawn waking up, then um, feel free to reach out um, you know, with any questions you might have. Good stuff. All right, let me say, um, we have a question here from um, on, from Instagram, it's a good one, from the Phantom 740. It says, how much, how do you know how much to put in a certain area? Okay, so if the question you're asking is around, I was talking about um, the post, the post emergent herbicides, like, uh, are you talking about um, these guys? So if you're talking about like uh, Celsius uncertainty, there's, like, there's a couple ways to use these products, all right? So you can use them, um, if your lawn is a real mess and you're trying to do a lot of cleanup work, you could do what's called a blanket spray, meaning you spray the entire lawn, or you can do spot spraying. The way you can know how much to use in an area or the the way, a better better um, question is, is how to mix it, is um, these products have a dilution rate for with water that covers a thousand square feet. So for, uh, for certain, for Celsius, it is, um, the higher rate is 0.226. It's um it's 0.226 ounces with two gallons of water that covers 2,000 square feet, and then so you can cut that in half for a thousand if you wanted to. And then for certainty, it is um one large scoop. It depends on what you're treating as well. It's one large scoop with the same two gallons of water over um over a thousand over a thousand square feet. So it depends on um on how how big of an area you're trying to treat. Um, the way you know how much to put down or how to ensure that you're putting the amount of right, the right amount of product on the right amount of square footage is by calibrating your sprayer. So you guys always hear me talk about all the time, if you get a backpack sprayer, one of the first things you need to do before you go out and use it is to calibrate it. I've got videos on the channel on how to do that. And by calibration, what I mean is how long or what kind of walking pace do you need to have with your particular sprayer, with the settings you have as far as like the pressure setting, the flow tip, the, the, the spray tip, that you're using, how long does it take your sprayer to put out one gallon of water, right? Because that is gonna let you know to, that's gonna let you know like how, what kind of walking pace you need to have over the course of a thousand square feet. So if we're gonna cover that really quickly, like you can draw, take out or draw out a, um, or mark off rather a 20 by 50 foot area, that's gonna be a thousand square feet. And you just fill your sprayer 
with um you 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 take water right what you take um you take a a, a gallon pitcher and you calibrate it to know that to find out how much time it's going to take you so say it's a, a minute and 90 seconds right or a minute and a half so say it's uh, 90 seconds right for you to cover um a thousand square feet which would be a pretty quick pace it's a pretty brisk walking pace right then what you can do is you put a um you mark out the 20 by 50 foot section you just have nothing but water in the tank. So this way you're not going to hurt anything. So you get 20, uh, 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 a, um, uh, you take, you, you put that in the tank and then you begin spraying. You've been walking the lawn. And what happens is by the time you get to say that 90 seconds, you need to have covered that 1000 square foot plot. You see what I'm saying? So the idea behind the, um, the calibration is to ensure that you're putting out one gallon of product mix over a thousand square feet. And that's gonna ensure that you're applying these products at the correct rate. Whether you're blanket spraying or you're spot spraying, you'll be putting them down um, at the rates that's that's listed or recommended on the label. And to help with that, again, I can't I can't really send it to you over um, Instagram, unfortunately, but if you, if you go to my YouTube channel and you look up um, like backpack sprayer calibration or Ron Henry sprayer calibration, you'll see a video that covers that in, um, in detail. Uh, and I will find that here really quick and, and I'll post it for those guys that are on YouTube. I'll post that in the chat for you guys here really quick as well. So you, you'll have it, but yes, uh, the, the, the way to answer your question is through sprayer calibration. And that, that's that way you can be very confident once spraying liquids on your lawn, that you're going to be applying the product at the correct rates and not damage your lawn, um, in the process. So, and frankly, just to make sure you're not wasting product, right? So damaging your lawn is one is one aspect of it, but also you want you don't want to be putting down too much or too little of the products. So you want to make sure you're getting a good result. So if you can click on this, I don't know if it's clickable on Instagram, but this is the link to the YouTube video. And for those of you guys that are here on YouTube, this is the video to calibrating your sprayer. So let's see here, uh, sprayer calibration. Um, you can, yeah, that's the, that's the video. That's, this is my method for doing it. There's many different ways of doing it, but that's how I like to do it. So hope that helps. Need anything else? Let me know. All right. Next up is, uh, Jim Carson. He says, question, my Tiff Tough is six months old. No mo as yet. Um, no mo as yet. Can I put sand down to help even out, uh, the lawn? Yeah. 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 It's no, no problem with that as well. I mean, you're, you're living in an area where your lawn doesn't, um, you know, you know, it's, it's, it's probably already growing. I can't imagine you said you haven't mowed it at all. You haven't mowed your lawn at all at once in six months. That's, um, that's interesting. That's interesting. But at any rate, let's, let's assume that your lawn is growing, right? So you're, you said you're in Southern California, you're able to mow it. Yes, you can, you can absolutely top dress it. Um, after six months, you can, I mean, you can top dress it, you know, a, a week or two later, if you wanted to Bermuda, I mean, it's, it's not gonna, it's not gonna hurt anything. Just make sure you go light on your, on your application, but six months down the road. Yeah. No, no worries at all to, um, to top dress that, you know, if you've watched the, some of my content, you'll see, I like to use, um, a rate or to put down a quarter of an inch to half an inch of material that works out to, depending on, on, you know, how uneven your lawn is that works out to about a yard of material over a thousand square feet. And uh, if you take that rate, you're gonna, you'll do well. You have a 200 square foot lawn, so you're gonna need, you know, quite a bit less than a yard. But, um, but yeah, just, just uh, aim for that quarter to half inch coverage over your, um, over the area that you're top dressing. If you're doing it right, what you should see is there will be some areas where the sand is a bit heavier, but overall, once you're done working it all in, especially after you water it, you should just be able to see the grass, the tips of the grass sticking up throughout various parts of the lawn. If it all if it's all sandy where it's all just one big beach, for me, you went too heavy. There are people that do that, but I don't I don't recommend that for for most people. I I think you should go multiple rounds of lighter than super heavy. All right, next up is Richard Taylor. He says, um, I have asked a few questions here about a total redo of my yard. Should I kill off my old lawn now? It depends, Richard. If you're the best way to answer that is if your lawn is growing, so if it's already beginning to green up. Um, and you're going to do a renovation, I would wait. In other words, if you're, if you had Bermuda, let's say you're, you're, you're my next door neighbor and you're saying, Ron, when should I renovate my Bermuda lawn? I want, I want to like get rid of it and install a different kind of Bermuda, I guess. Right. Um, the combination that I like to use for killing Bermuda, which is, uh, 41% glyphosate and, uh, Fusilade, 
Um, those, like the Fusilade anyway, that, that those products um, work better when the grass is actively growing. So you would not want to use them on, on dormant grass. You want to, you, to get the best result, you want the lawn to be fully green and to be growing. So I would say, if you're my neighbor in Georgia and you're going to do your reno, I would say wait till April. Because by April, your lawn should be out of dormancy. And if you want to kill it all off then, you're going to get a better result versus doing it when it's, you know, kind of in dormancy is when it's when it's half half. So now would be a bit early. I'm not sure which part of the country you're in. So I'm, I'm answering the questions if you're my next door neighbor, but if you're in Florida, you're good to go. If you're in like, I don't know, Arkansas, probably not. You might want to give it a bit more time before you, um, you to kill it off to start doing your renovation type work. And yes, if you're, the, the thing is, if you're changing the grass types, especially like say you're going from Bermuda to Zoysia, or um, even Bermuda to a different type of Bermuda, killing it off is is a good thing because even if you even if you blanket the entire thing, and it's and again that combination Fusilade and um, glyphosate is a, is very potent, does a good job against Bermuda. You still you still might have a little bit breakthrough, um, and it's by, by getting rid of it by killing off the existing lawn, you're giving the new sod that you're going to be putting in the best chance of it being the dominant like the alpha of of your lawn versus if you just try and just lay your, <laughs> except some people do it, if you just try and like lay the sod over, like cut it really short or scalp it really short and then try and lay your sod over the existing lawn, that's not gonna work out well. Um, a guy that is in the neighborhood here that's, uh, I mean, I don't know, I'm gonna call him out, but he's like, he is like a, like an eight iron from my back porch. Um, he did that. He he went from he had a, his lawn was Bermuda, and then he changed it to Zoysia. And whenever whoever did the work, they just scalped the Bermuda really short, and then laid Zoysia sod on top of it. And what do you think happened once it got hot and, and you know Bermuda started waking up? You had Bermuda like punching through all over the place. So if you're if you're gonna change grass types, especially you want to get rid of it. If you're changing like you know I don't know like like um, like a common Bermuda to a hybrid of some sort, so common to say Tahoma, you're def I would also recommend doing that as well too, like you know, killing off what, you exa what your existing lawn is and then bringing in the new sod or the seeding of the, the, the new grasses you're gonna try and bring in. So that's gonna produce the best result. You're going through all this work anyway, like the, the, the little extra time it takes to, to kill off the existing grass is insurance that you're giving yourself the best chance for a good result. All right, next up we got No Name. He says, No Name just became a member. Appreciate you, No Name. Thank you for joining, sir. And that's that's a good point. If you guys feel like supporting the channel on a consistent basis, we have we do have channel membership. You just go to the YouTube channel and um, like the main channel screen and there'll be a button where you can say join. And if you feel like doing that to help support the channel, to help, help, help us to continue to produce content, we really would, we really would appreciate it. All, all, um, all contributions are very much appreciated. Just like Alex with his super chat that he's dropping in here right now which is right here. Thanks so much, Alex. Says, Thanks for helping me on the herbicide questions today. Do you recommend I spray both certainty and Celsius and wait for how long before doing a scalp? Okay, yeah, so do I recommend you spraying the certainty and Celsius? I do if you have broadleafs in your lawn and you have POA that you're trying to take care of. If all you have in your lawn is POA, Kind of unlikely. You'll probably have some broad leaves as well. But if all you have is POA, you can you can hang on to this to the Celsius, right? And just spray certainty. Just take just uh, take certainty. Where do I have? It? I got it right here. Just take certainty. Combine it with this camera's in focus. You can take certainty. Combine it with surfactant, and then that's going to be good against POA. So it depends on what you're dealing with. If you have a mixture of everything, again, broad leaves, POA, um, Celsius, certainty, and surfactant is a great. It's a good combination. That's going to do. That's going to clean up. Um, you know, going to clean up pretty much most of the weeds you're going to you're going to take care of in your lawn. You're going to find in your lawn. It's not going to do Dallas grass, but it's going to take care of like the, the like 90, 95 percent of the weeds that most people have in their in their warm season turf. The thing to keep in mind with these products is um, they work better as temperatures get higher. So if you spray this combination now, realize it's going to be a couple of weeks before you search before you see the results. So you know, I, I sprayed the Real Rollers Turf Park two weeks ago. Went back and checked it this afternoon before the show started, and it's it, what you're seeing. The results that you're seeing here on um, on the POA that it has against the POA. So some of these these light spots in the lawn used to be POA annua. Um, this is two weeks after spraying those areas with or blanketing the entire thing with Celsius. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry with uh, with with certainty. So the thing to keep in mind is that. Um, 
Herbicides are temperature sensitive, meaning they work better as temperatures go up. The reason why I like this combination is that you can spray this now and you can also spray this when temperatures are higher. So when temperatures are like in the, in the, you know, above 80 degrees, 85 degrees, you can still use this combination and it's not gonna damage your grass. For some of the, like some of the three ways that are a little less expensive or like 2,4-D, some of, the, some of those other herbicides you can use that, that are also good against broadleafs, you can use them, like now they're okay, but you gotta be really careful once temperatures get um, warmer because they're gonna, they're gonna ding your grass. Whereas this, you can use when it's cool, you can use it when it's, when it's hot, um, when it's cool, it takes longer to work, but it does work. When it's hot, it works faster and it doesn't damage your grass. So that's something just to keep in mind. Um, Alex, the best answer to your question is it depends on what weeds you're dealing with. Um, so, so hope that um, helps. The big thing is regardless of whether you end up spraying Certainty, Celsius, or both of them, be sure to add some surfactant. This is very important. Like a lot of you guys are just buying just, just Celsius by itself or buying Certainty by itself. This is important to getting the best result from these products because surfactant helps the helps the herbicide stick adhere to the leaf of the plant. So it's going to help maximize the uptake. It's going to make sure that that more of the more of it gets goes into the plant, so it's going to work better. So consider this as non-optional whenever you are um, whenever you are spraying. Uh, you know, Celsius or Certainty, pretty much out of the combinations that I mentioned. So I also talk about for cool season grass, like um, Tenacity and Sedgehammer. Sedgehammer does not require surfactant. This has one um, built into it. I believe that's correct with, with, with Sedgehammer, but Tenacity does benefit from a surfactant. So this is the only one where you don't strictly have to use one, but all the others you should. Well, I'm glad that was helpful. Um, Alex, if you have any other questions, let me know. And um, hopefully that gives you some good tips or guidance as far as how to go forth taking care of um, whatever weed problems you're dealing with in your lawn. Thank you for the super chat. Really do appreciate the support. Now the fun part of, forget, of finding where I left off, I gotta speed up because I am chatting too much. All right. Um, Next up is, wow, okay, right here. All right, next up is um, Richard, not Richard Taylor, um, is Mike D. He says, okay, new Bermuda lawn. Um, all NPK levels are low, not good. We can fix that though. He says, what's the best liquid fertilizer to use? Anything else I should add? Okay, so for NPK levels are low, you're gonna wanna use a product with, um, with all three, right? With nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Um, I believe we're currently sold out of it, but I can show you a couple of options. Let me go here. So if you go to the Golf Course Lawn Store, if you go to Shop and then Lawn Fertilizer, uh, Bloom Plex is a good option, but it's currently sold out. And also Greens Plus is a good option, also sold out currently, unfortunately. So this is a, um, this has all three, it has your your nitrogen, your, pho your um, phosphorus, and potassium, and same thing. Uh, if you're looking for a, um, I mean, you can also use turf plex, but it doesn't. But this is fairly light on your, on your phosphorus and potassium. So this is if you're trying to bring all your levels up, um, this would not be my first choice. I would use one of these two, um, whenever they come back in stock. If you're looking for a granular product, you didn't ask for granular, but if you, if I got a soil test and my gran and my my levels for NPK were low, I would be using this. I would be using the complete uh, 14714. Um, because you're just going to be putting higher amount. You're gonna, it's it's going to stick around the soil a lot longer, right? So um, this would be a good option for a granular for raising uh, your NPK levels. Also contains some micronutrients, some kelp, some um, uh, some humic acid. So it's not just NPK. It's it's a more, as the name implies, a more complete fertilizer that has a bit of everything to help address a lawn that has. Um, that looks like it maybe hasn't been fertilized, or you just you know maybe you didn't um, you didn't you didn't do anything towards the tail end of the season, causing your levels to uh, to drop off. So Bloomplex or um, the Greens Plus, either of those are good. Or if you want a granular, the Complete uh, fourteen seven fourteen Mike D. I'll um I'll I'll give you a link here to where that is on the golf course lawn store, and uh, and hope that helps. If it were me, I would do a, a two pronged approach. I would use a granular and a um and supplement with a liquid. I would use granulars for my foundation and use that once a month. And then I would spoon feed with um, with Bloomplex or the uh, the Greens Plus. But it all depends on what you're trying to do. I'm not sure if you're just trying to be on a liquid only program, but for me, I like a, I like a combination. It's what I do on my lawn. All right, next is uh, Richard Taylor. He says, uh, we just had a septic system put in a couple years ago and we put down some fescue. It is 
it's just an ugly yard of fescue and Bermuda mixed. Okay, I got you. So you got, um, so you just want to kill it all off and start over. Okay. Uh, well, in that case, the, the glyphosate will work for both the Bermuda and the fescue, but the, I believe that, um, that the uh, Fusilade is actually safe for fescue, so it's only gonna kill the Bermuda, which is fine, because glyphosate by itself will do a number on fescue. Bermuda, of those two, fescue and Bermuda, fescue is much easier to get rid of than Bermuda grass, so I, I would still stick with that same combination, and uh, that should do it. That should do, that should do a pretty good job cleaning up uh, the lawn and giving you a good foundation to just to start over with, right? So, uh, good stuff. Thanks for that additional context. Next up is Jeff Jones. He says, I've been using Prodiamine uh, 65 uh, WG for four years. Works well, except for the dreaded Poe annua. Is there something else that handles Poa better? Yeah, so if you're gonna do uh, Prodiamine, you're right. For, for Poa, Prodiamine by itself is not the greatest. It is better. It is still better than if you don't do anything. Like if you don't do any kind of pre-immersion in your lawn in the fall, and Poa is going to run rampant. Prodiamine does do a good job of suppressing some of it, but it's not as good as, um, as uh, say, something like Spectacle Flow. So if you want, like, the best, in my opinion, for Poa annua in warm season turf, it's tough to beat, it's tough to beat Spectacle. Like, this, this is what I would use for Poa in a warm season lawn. It doesn't get much better than this, in my opinion. Now, if you don't want to use Spectacle because it's it's because it is expensive, this is the price I saw on Amazon is like four hundred dollars for a bottle of this stuff now. Uh, but if you wanted like a less expensive option that is similar, it produces similar results. It's not quite as good as Spectacle, but it's but it's close. It approaches what Spectacle can do. Is you can take Prodiamine, you can take um, uh, Simazine um, under the brand name Princep. So um, so Prince, the product called Princep, but the active ingredient is Simazine. And then you can also mix in a post-immersion uh, product like um, a ma uh, called like Image, which is a Mazaquin. So those three, they're all soil-based. You can mix them all together and you can apply them. And that's going to do a better job at keeping POA out of your lawn than just doing Prodiamine by itself. So Prodiamine, Simazine, and Amazoquin. You can mix all three of those together. I have a video, I think, from last year in the fall that shows how I mix that, how I, how I put that combination together from last fall. So check that out. And uh, that's that's an option. Or you can just buy Spectacle, apply this at between 0.1 and 0.2 ounces per thousand, and you're not going to have Poe in your lawn. You can, so it just depends on which way you want to go. Uh, you know, given the cost of, um, given what Spectacle costs now, it's still probably cheaper to do um, Prodiamine, um, Simazine, and Imazequin, but then you're buying three products, you're hanging around with hanging around with three products versus just getting one. And this is, again, for POA in warm season turf, it's really tough to beat Spectacle. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, some people have better success if they do a split app of just Prodiamine in the fall as well too, but I, I still find putting a little bit of, um, a little bit of Princep in the tank, a little bit of Simazine in the tank as well, is um, is helpful for controlling POA if you don't want to spring for something like Spectacle Flow. So, hope that helps, Jeff Jones. What you are finding and experiencing is not uncommon for a lawn that has only had Prodiamine on it in the fall. No Name is up next. He says, happy Friday, Ron and fellow lawn enthusiasts. It is go time. Starting to green up a little. Scalp planned for this weekend if it dries up. Yeah, it should dry up. I don't think there's any more rain in the forecast, at least in my area, for the rest of the evening. And if that holds out, I'm gonna be mowing. Like, I'm gonna go to karate, and then I'm gonna be mowing tomorrow. I mean, here's the thing. There's not a whole lot of green, but the little bit of green that I got, you know, I'm gonna give it a little cleanup. Give it a little cleanup cut. I wanna, I wanna encourage it. I've, I've already cut the front lawn once already, and the back lawn, I have not given it, a, you know, a cut here recently, so it's time. It's time to, you know, touch it, train that grass, keep it nice and short. I got, I actually took the, um, I got the, I set the, the height of cut on the outlet to 0 0.70. That's where I'm starting it uh, right now, this for the season. So we'll see uh, how that does on out there. I might take it down a little bit lower, but we're gonna start at 0 0.70. We'll see how that how, how, how the lawn likes that and, uh, and go from there. Next up is Lon Guido. He says, live in Texas, Bermuda is starting to sprout. Alan Hayne is suggesting uh, double dark. Do you agree? I would suggest that, I mean, Double Dark's a good product. The 1600, I think that's what they're, isn't that, that their, um, the 1600 product? Um, I, here's the thing, I like, um, again, I'm not like necessarily trying to, um, to to contradict Alan or anything. I'm sure he has reasons for why he would say that and there might be some context around why he suggested that um, that I don't know about. 
Um, but I am a fan of using a higher a higher potassium fertilizer to start to start the season. So like there's like like Yard Mastery Stress Blend product or something like this, like the Stress the 12024, something like this is what I would use as your initial app for to start the season off. Like I, I would I would go with something like this versus a pure nitrogen, like a 16, I believe that, I believe that's the formulation on Double Dark. I think it's a 1600. I think that's right. Um, so I would go with something like this. Um, a higher potassium fertilizer than I would with just a pure nitrogen fertilizer for the first uh, application of the season. The best answer to the question, though, as far as what you should be using to feed the lawn over the course of the season, is to get a soil test. So, uh, you know, to know whether or not you know you want to be using just that fertilizer, you know, April, May, and and you know going forward, you really you would have to have sufficient levels of phosphorus and potassium in your lawn and where nitrogen is the only deficiency. I'm not saying that can't happen, but normally which, what I tend to find for the most of the soil tests that I look at, I tend to see a couple different combinations that are, that are a couple a couple themes. I'll find, I'll see soils where all three are low, so nitrogen, phosphorus, so the MPK, all three of them are low, which is fairly common. I'll see some where the nitrogen and potassium are low and the phosphorus is, at, is the normal zone, like it's, its levels are fine. Um, or um, I will see, a, but, what, the, but the one I see the least of is where you have um, adequate levels of nitrogen, adequate levels of potassium, and then uh, low phosphorus. It doesn't, it doesn't say it doesn't happen, but that is the combination of the soil tests that, that get emailed to me. That's the one that I see the least of. So anyway, the, the way to know for sure, so we're not guessing, is to get a soil test. So this is the one from my soil. It's the one that, that I use on my lawn, the one that I like. The reason why I prefer this is because they're, it's easy to use. Um, it comes with everything you need from a standpoint of you get a, you get the deionized water, you get the ion exchange resin. This behaves like a synthetic root. This like mimics what your, your grass does or, or it, it sees, it sees with the root zone of what your grass sees. So as far as, um, measuring what is actually available for uptake by the grass. The ion exchange resin is, is excellent for that. You get your measuring scoop. I can get it out for doing that. You have your envelope to mail it out. And um, and the only thing I would say is optional, but is a good idea to have if you don't already have one, is one of these tools. So it's a way to collect samples, like this uh, this core tool that is also available. So I can show you, I can show you here. I'm, I'm sitting here talking about this um, and I didn't actually show you where you can get one. So. Um, if you go here to soil test kits and pH adjustments, so you've got just a straight soil test kit here, or you've got this one, the starter pack. This is the one that most people that are, are starting out with will get because you get one soil test and you also get the tool to, to get the samples. You only need to buy this one one time. And then afterwards, you would be buying just the, uh, the, the soil test uh, kits. Uh, reason why... Um, I recommend or I like doing this versus just telling you go buy this product is because one fertilizer is expensive and you wanna make sure that what you're applying to the lawn is what it actually needs. What you can expect to see once you get your, um, once you collect the samples, uh, mail them out about a week, typically it's like six days, but, but less than a week you'll get an email from the nice folks at My Soil saying, Hey, Long Guido, here is what's going on with your, um, with your soil. Would you like to see your results? And you're gonna get something that looks like this. Let me log in here really quick to my portal. Yeah, so it looks like this. So this is my dashboard. You can see I don't just talk about the stuff, I actually use it. So going back to 2020, uh, 2020 all the way till now. Um, but if you look, you'll get results that look something like, uh, look at my one from like a couple years ago, it's winter. You get stuff that looks like this. So it'll tell you where your nitrogen levels are, your phosphorus levels are, your potassium levels are where your pH is, your soil pH, which, which um, influences nutrient availability, where your micronutrients are, and you also get recommendations as far as products you can use to correct this stuff. So the, the way to know exactly what fertilizer you should be using on your lawn, uh, lawn guido, is to get a soil test. Again, this is like the some of the best $30 you'll ever spend um, on your, at the beginning of the season for your lawn care program, because then you're not guessing, right? You'll, you're literally giving, you're applying products that the soil actually needs, um, which is gonna help you produce the best results. So that's what I'd recommend. I would recommend getting a, um, a soil test kit, testing your, testing your soil, and then fertilizing accordingly. Um, as far as the double dark, I'm sure it's a great product, but I am a for fan of opening up the season, opening up and closing the season with a lawn that has um, higher potassium. So like a like a, the 12024, something with a higher potassium um, is what is is what 
I prefer, but I mean, you know, it, it, it all depends. I'm sure Alan had a reason why he suggested that. And again, I wasn't there for the discussion, so uh, so hope that helps. But getting a a, a solo test is going to be is going to give you the most correct answer. Hope that helps, sir. If you need anything else, let me know. And let me get down here and grab the super chat from Mr. Papa Moslo. Thank you so much, Mr. Mr. Papa Moslo. He says, last question tonight, I promise. Probably not true, but I'll answer it anyway. He says, after I scalp, I know the sterling will need to be sharpened. Do you still use Jerry Pate for your allet or someone else? Thanks again for everything. I don't use Jerry Pate for my allet. I used, um, oh man, it's Atlanta Real Mower. Uh, the guy's name is Michael Hammond. Michael Hammond. If you tell you what Papa Moslo, I have a YouTube short on my channel where I show the freshly sharpened allet reel where I'm just sitting there just cutting paper with it. That in the description of that video is where you will see um, his contact information. So I put that in the video. He did an awesome job with it. Put a nice grind on it. I'm gonna see if I can find it here really quickly while I am chatting. I might not be able to, but if um, if I can, I'll, I'll, yeah, here it is. Here we go, yeah. So in the description of this video, let me check my channel line to you. Yeah, so here, this guy. I'll link it in the chat for you. Atlanta Real Mower, I believe his name is Michael. So give him a call, tell him Ron sent you. He'll probably charge you double if you do, but tell him anyway. And uh, this guy, that's who I would, that's, that's who sharpened my allet. He is in Atlanta, so I'm, I'm not sure if you're gonna have to drive or, or mail it out to him or whatever, but he did an awesome job. I mean, you, you can look at that video, which I will also link for you here, and you can see how this thing was cutting paper after he was, um, after he was done with it. Uh, sharpened. And all he needs is a cartridge. So there you go. So hope that helps, sir. I appreciate the super chat. And we'll see, we'll see if I can hold you this really being the last question of the evening. All right, guys, I'm gonna speed up. I know I'm talking a lot and you guys are waiting to get your questions answered, so I'll speed up so I can start getting through some of these. And next up, we have um, Pahamos Low um, <laughs> and Richard uh, Taylor says, Southern Middle, Middle Tennessee, by the way. Okay, cool, yeah, so you're in Southern Middle Tennessee, Southern Middle Tennessee, okay. So, uh, so yeah, so I would, so my advice still holds as far as later this month or early April when the lawn is greened up, right? Because that's when the herbicides you're going to be using to do the renovation are going to work better. So that, but the advice is still, um, still good. Stephen Thompson says, of course we do. So yeah, I already showed you guys how the, the, the Real Rollers Turf Park uh, worked out and Let's see, um, we have a question here from the Instagram. Sunshine Lawn Life, it's a good one. He says, I see some people are correlating or are core aerating their Bermuda grass now. Is that a bad thing to be doing now? No, not necessarily. It's not, here, here's the thing, I've done it this time of year and I've done it in April and later on in the season, like May when I've been top dressing the lawn. The reason, the only reason I would say not to do it now is that it's going to take longer to recover because the grass hasn't, it's like, if your lawn is like my lawn, you guys have seen, I don't, I don't have a picture of it right now, but if, if your lawn is like mine where it's just now starting to wake up, you know, it's gonna take a lot longer for the lawn to recover from getting, you know, getting all those holes punched in it. Whereas if you wait until April, it's gonna recover faster. It's not gonna hurt anything. If you wanna do it now, you can. If you wanna do it in April, you can too. Um, it's, it's really your call. I've done it again. I've done both. And since the time when I did it in March, I've done it since then in April or later on in the season, you're not going to really hurt anything. It just really depends on what you're trying to accomplish. If you're saying, Hey, you know, I want to do a really heavy compost application to, or, or you know, I want to do a compost application right now, or I want to do a biosimilant app, a granular biosimilant app right now. And I want to make sure I get the most out of it. And I want to do a core aeration to help that. I'm not going to be opposed to it. If you want to, you want to go for it, you can. Um, for most people, I would say wait because they don't. Most people don't want their lawns to have look like a porcupine rolled over on it for you know weeks on end. So, hope that helps. Sunshine lawn life. I've done both. It um, it's not you're not going to hurt anything by doing it early. Uh, but I just prefer to wait wait a little bit, bit longer. So, hope that helps. Good question. All right. Next up is uh, Terrell Dupree. He says. I think I'm going to recede with perennial ryegrass this year, but my front yard is looking brown. It doesn't look like it's going to regrow, so I've got some work to do. Cool, sounds like a plan, uh, Terrell. I guess you live somewhere where ryegrass is, you live where cool season grass is gonna do well. Uh, you know, root cool season grass does not do so well in Georgia once you get into the summer months, but um, you know, this time of year through, through the master's period, like, you know, through March, April, 
maybe halfway through May, it looks pretty good. But then after that, once the heat starts to hit, not so much, not so much. It isn't like uh, ryegrass doesn't do, do so well with the higher temps we get here in the Southeast. So I'm assuming you live in a part of the country where ryegrass makes sense. Hoffa Fashion says, wow, you're early tonight. Yeah, I'm an hour early, largely due to scheduling. So I mess up the scheduling and rather than change it and, you know, it makes, makes people irritated with me. I figured I'll just, just leave it at the five o'clock hours. I'm um, sorry, the six o'clock hours start then. And then next week we'll go back to our, our normal time. So we'll see how it, um, see how it, how it does. So for most of you guys, um, we're only 30 minutes into the time where you guys would normally expect to see me here. You haven't missed out on too much. I did show you guys, uh, I did show off the results of getting rid of some POA in the Real Rollers Turf Park with some certainty and also the results of scalping. I'll show that again here, maybe in the eight o'clock hour, what those results were. If you guys are interested, so stick around uh, for that. Next up is DH Designs and Painting. He says, hey, Ron, my ryegrass is getting really high because of all the rain the last couple of days. When will summer grass start growing? Uh, okay, so so when you say summer grass, you mean, so if you have Bermuda, do you have like a Bermuda lawn and it was overseeded with ryegrass? The Bermuda will begin growing, like, again, depends on where you are in the country, will begin growing now. Like now through the end of this month, Bermuda is gonna begin really waking up and doing and, and you know, starting to fill in. Now here's the thing, DH Designs and Painting, if your lawn is really a Bermuda lawn, so say you're my next door neighbor in Georgia and you overseeded with ryegrass in the fall, you're going to want to get rid of that. You want to, you're going to want to take um, Celsius, uh, Katana. There's a couple of different products you can use, but I like Celsius personally for that. You, you're going to want to use a post-emergent herbicide like this to, to, to kill off the ryegrass so that it's not competing with the Bermuda. You don't want it, You don't want the Bermuda that's trying to wake up to still have this ryegrass. It is still right now in its prime time for growing. Like ryegrass now really through like the, the first part of May is going to be, is going to be thriving. It's going to be growing. It's going to be doing very well. But that, but that it being there is going to negatively impact how quickly your Bermuda uh, greens up. So if you're if you're in the southeast and you overseed your Bermuda with rye, I would get rid of it. I would take something like Celsius and spray it out and get rid of the um, get rid of the uh, of the Celsius in your use Celsius to get rid of the of the rye grass in your lawn. That's going to get rid of the competition and is going to help the the, the Bermuda wake up and get a and 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 get us get established get it going uh, much faster if you don't do it what's gonna here's what's gonna happen if you take the route of just waiting until the temperatures get higher for to kill off the ryegrass it's gonna be like june and what's gonna happen is the bermuda lawn is gonna look really cruddy and kind of sickly and not really growing and filling in nicely and the ryegrass is gonna look not so great either so because i've seen there's a there's a, a person in the neighborhood that does it every year they oversee their lawn with ryegrass and they don't spray it out and when i'm walking the neighborhood and looking around it the lawn looks like looks like not great um in june so if you're going to do that you want to get rid of it and we are entering the time period now where you want to get rid of the ryegrass to give bermuda every opportunity to uh to grow in so so hope that helps i'm assuming based on the way you're asking the question i'm assuming that that's what's going on here that's why you have um, warm season and cool season grass. So hope that helps. But he Navi says, hey Ron, I, can I know when the best time temperature is to put down your organic fertilizer? Already answered that one. Uh, Bahid, really 55 degrees or higher when the microbial activity begins to pick up, but really when the lawn is green and you're mowing it is also a good answer as, uh, as well. Stephen Thompson, he says, does top dressing and PGR mix or wait to apply PGR? Yes, good question. So your lawn will recover faster from top dressing if it's not under regulation. Having said that, the last oh, four years, four or five years I've, that I've top dressed my lawn, it's been under regulation, it's been under PGR. So um, so yeah, I mean, it, it's going to slow down how much how quickly, how much fast, how uh, quickly it recovers. Um, but it's not like the two are mutually exclusive. If it's the first time you're top dressing your lawn, I would not use growth regulator on it. I wouldn't. I would just, I would use your top, I would top dress it, let the lawn recover. And then if you want to spray Primo after the fact, you can. What you'll find, Stephen, is as you top dress your lawn multiple times, is each time you're going to, it's going to take less material to get a, to restore it to, uh, to, to looking great, right? You know, so in other words, the really, the first top dress is a lot, of, does much, much, much of the heavy lifting. The second one, after the second one, in my opinion, you start getting into the point of diminishing returns where it does get better with the third and fourth and fifth, but it's um, 
like the juice becomes not worth the squeeze at some point. You know what I'm saying? So if it's your first time where you'll likely end up going a bit heavier in certain areas, just wait on the on the Primo. Wait on uh, until the lawn grows through and recovers from the top dressing, and then you can spray your pre-GR. If this is like year two or three of top dressing and you've been doing it every year, likely you're going to be doing it much lighter than you have than you did the first time you applied it. And if you want to have the do it while the lawn's under regulation, you can. Just know that it's gonna take a little bit longer to recover. I do it every year when I top dress my lawn. So it really just depends on how patient you are for it to uh, to recover. For your first time, it's your first time, I would wait until after you, you, the lawn recovers from it so that it doesn't look like a beach any longer than, uh, than it has to. Good question. Next up is Jeff Jones. Actually already, he says, uh, a follow up, he says, I've been using Prodiamine for four years. Um, it's something that handles POA better. I have zoysia in the Atlanta area, thank you. Yeah, so um, that was something you didn't add in the first part of the question. What I would still say is what, what I told you, all three of those, Princep, um, Princep, Prodiamine, and uh, Amazoquin, or just buy Spectacle Flow, get it, you know, split this with a couple of buy, like one of you guys buy it, and if you have other people, other friends that are into their lawns, you guys like split a bottle, like split it, you know, three, four, five ways, uh, and that way you can cut the price down and use this. This is gonna prevent you from having POA in your Zoysia lawn. Next up is Ed Bonet. He says, hi Ron, cool season lawn. How often can I apply for grubs and mosquitoes? Thanks, it's a good question, uh, Ed. So for grubs, you really shouldn't have to do too many applications. I, I treat my lawn for grubs once per season. The end of this month, early April, is when I will apply a Celeprin, a Celeprin SC. This is, the, this is the liquid, the liquid product that I like to use, the liquid version of a Celeprin, um, which is an insecticide. It's a very good insecticide, it takes care of grubs, um, bill bugs, annual bluegrass weevils, um, pretty much every turf caterpillar, so 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 army worms, sod webworms, pretty much all the stuff that's going to destroy your lawn. This will take care of, and um, I apply it once per season. I apply it in uh, um, late March, early April, and I get a good result with that. As far as mosquitoes, that's going to be an ongoing thing. What I like for mosquitoes is this, which is the Miramichi uh, Green Pest Control. This is a non-toxic pest control. The nice thing about this is that you can spray this on patio furniture, on your patio, on shrubs, on the uh, like near your plant, near your um your your house, like along the the baseboard of the outside of your house. You could play. You could spray it along gutters. You could spray it. I mean, you can spray it pretty much anywhere you want on the outside of your house. It's a non-toxic um, product. So literally, once it dries, you can re-enter the area. You know, I mean, because so if you were say you're gonna have like a party, you can have people over you know, this weekend, you could spray it, like say tomorrow evening, Saturday evening, you could go out Saturday morning, tomorrow morning, and spray the area, the patio area with this. Um, it'll be dry in an hour or so, and then when your friends and family come over, your mosquitoes and gnats, let me see what else. Mosquitoes, and gnats, roaches, noceums, ticks, aphids, white flies, chinch bugs will not be a problem. It's a great, great product. Uh, because of the way it's formulated, um, uh, it's not something that the insects can form a resistance to, so that's nice as well. And it's not, it's again, being non-toxic is always, always fun for, um, you know, always a good, a good bonus, you know, if you have kids or fur babies that like to, to frequent the lawn. Let me show you where you can get uh, both of those. So if we go back over here to the golf course lawn store, so the, the pest control is going to be under Miramichi Green. So you go to shop and then Miramichi Green Biosimilance. And there you're gonna find the non-toxic pest control. One of these bottles, depending on how you apply it, covers a lot. It's like 120,000 square feet. So if you're using a fogger, like this one gallon bottle will, it covers a lot. Like you could use this, you know, it's gonna it, be a season, multiple seasons. Um, as far as how often you could use it, every three weeks or so. And you can use it more frequently if you want, but every three weeks or so is what I find produces a good result. So the pest control for the mosquitoes and then for the grubs, you go to shop and then insecticide fungicide and a celeprin, which is what I was showing you, it comes in two options. You've got the granular, which is if you just want easy and you have like a broadcast spread and you wanna use the granular, you can go with this. Or if you want the liquid, which is what I was just showing you here, um, this gives you more con or easier control over application rates. As far as effectiveness, they're both equally effective. So if you use the, the granular or you use the liquid, you're still gonna get a great result as far as keeping grubs out of your lawn, the the liquid is just nicer from the standpoint of you can e more easily adjust rates if you if you want to. As far as coverage, 
depending on um, like the liquids are easier to adjust the application rates, like I was saying, if you apply the liquid the way that I show in the video in the product descriptions, if you go here, and if you scroll down here to the carefully filmed video um, that talks all about acelaprin, if you apply it at the same rate, which in this video, I believe is 0 0.20 ounces is what I show with a gallon of water over a thousand square feet, you're gonna get the same coverage as a bag of, of acelaprin G. So from a standpoint of coverage, they're about the same. The SC, the liquid is a little bit cheaper, a little bit, you save a little bit of money because it's not quite as expensive to ship. Um, and again, either of them, either of them will uh, will work will work for you. So hope that helps, sir. The Mirmichi Green Pest Control for the mosquitoes and the Acelaprin for the grubs and all the other lawn damaging insects. So if you have any other questions, let me know. Hope that helps. You're very, very welcome, uh, Sunshine Lawn Life. And we got no other questions here on Instagram just yet, so we can move on to the YouTube. Billy Gilbert is back up next. He says, happy Friday, uh, everyone. I'm in the market for a new mower. Oh yeah, I like this. Get to spend, get to spend some money on some hardware. Always fun. It says the deck on my Honda commercial is rotten. We got we got to put some like some um some like some quiet like some you know some sad some sad ballad music on. You know the deck on my Honda commercial. She's on her last she's on her last mo guys. She's rotten. Any suggestions? The Honda was my dad and he gave it to me when he moved. I'm I'm in the seven hundred dollar price range. Um hmm. So if you want to stick with rotary, I, I think I want to say that Honda's getting out of the rotary market. I'm not sure if you can still get Honda rotary push mowers um, as much anymore. Get like the, the Toro. Toro makes a good one. They make the um, is it the, the is it the Time Master? Is, is there rotary? There's another one. Check check Alan Haynes' channel. Check the Lawn Care Nuts channel. He has done a review of um, there's one that's black. Um, it's a really looking look. It's like bulldog colors, it's like black and red. It's a really cool looking mower. I, for, I forget the name of it. Um, that is likely in that seven hundred dollar price range. So like a Honda, if you can find one, like the HRX, like those are great mowers. If you can still find them, I don't know if you're gonna we're gonna you get one now, or the um, or any of the Toros are also good. If you want to stick with a gas powered mower, you could also look at some of the electric ones. If you want to go electric, those are decent as well. But um, you know, if you a, a if you want a, a very good high quality a gas powered push mower, I'd say look at Honda or the um, or the Toros, either one of those. And again, check out Alan's channel, Long Care Nuts channel. He's got lots of content on uh, on rotary mowers because I, I don't have any, I can't help you too much on that one because I don't I don't have a rotary mower. But uh, but yeah, you should be able to pick up an HRX in that price range. And uh, the Honda, it's Time Master and something else. I think it's, it's the, maybe it's the Recycler. There's a Time Master, there's also, the, I think the Recycler is the name of, of one of them. If I'm wrong on that, I'm sure you guys will correct me, but check out um, those as options for um, for mowers, for rotary mowers. So I hope that helps, uh, Billy. Uh, next up is uh, Vashon uh, Brooks. He says, I am the maestro from IG. Hey, so you're in two places. You're here and you're here. That's cool. He says, I scalp to the dirt with my Earthwise and the green up is popping here in Swanee. Nice. Do I need to start maintaining it at my desired height now? Yeah, so what I would do is after you scalp the lawn, set the mower, this is what I did. So after you're done, you're done your, with your cleanup cut, your scalping cut, set the mower to the height that you want to maintain the lawn at, at least for the part, first part of the season, and then just start mowing it. And if it, if the if nothing is coming off at that height because you scalped it below that, then you can just wait till the next time you mow. Eventually the lawn, the grass is gonna catch up and then you can you know, just keep, keep maintaining it at that height. What I would say is this, right? If your goal is to maintain the lawn at say 0.75 inches, three quarters of an inch, right? Cause I'm not sure what kind of mower you have, but let's say you're gonna maintain, you know, you have an earthwise, right? So, but let's say if you are with your earthwise, say you scalped it at an inch and your goal is to maintain it at an inch and a half. Then um, what I would say is, uh, start it maybe just a little bit above your scalping height, so say maybe an inch and a quarter, and then you can slowly bring it up to that to that uh, that inch and a half. By the time you get into say mid April May time frame, you're cutting into that inch and a half, which is your your target height of cut. You know what I mean? So that way you're you're trying to train you're training the grass to grow a little bit shorter. Um, you're not out there just wasting your time when you're mowing, and you're just you're slowly working your way up to the to the height that you mean you plan to maintain it at. That's what I do with my with my lawn. I am planning to, to cut mine at um, at three quarters of an inch, maintained at 0.75. I set mine just below that. It's like just right, just just under 0.70 inches is where mine is, um, where the outlet is currently set. And I'll end up at 
three quarters of an inch by by May, and that's where I'll maintain it throughout the uh, season because it's a good it's a good blend of stripe action and um, and color. You know, you still get a, a great color at three quarters of an inch, and the launch stripes not see at three quarters of an inch, and it's not so short that you that real mowing ruins your life where you're always having to be out there cutting it. All right, next up is Ahmed Dam Damra. I hope you're saying your name right. If I'm not, I apologize. He says, um, hello, Ron. Soil temperature is about 70 to 75 degrees here in H-Town. Should I scalp or wait? And also, I want to core aerate. Overseed with RN15 and sand level. What kind of sand do you recommend? Okay, so there's a lot in that question. So 70, 75 degrees. I imagine you're likely already mowing because that's that's pretty that's pretty um, that's, that's good temperature for um, for mowing for seeding for doing anything like that. Um, if you want to scalp, yes, you can you can scalp now if you want to in in uh, in Houston. Absolutely, there's no problem with that. Uh, you want to score, you want to aerate and oversee with Arden 15. You're not going to be able to do that, um, Ahmed Damra, because Arden 15 is not really a thing anymore. It's it was discontinued. What are we in 2023? It was continued. The, I think last year, early last year, is when it became unavailable. I believe it's either either the fall of 2021 or the spring of 2022. But at any rate, you can't get it anymore. So you can't. You're not going to be able to oversee with Arden 15. And the question I would ask is. Um, if you're going to do a renovation, like if you're going to kill your existing lawn and do a renovation, you're trying to grow Bermuda grass from seed, that's one thing. But most lawns, most lawns, when people, or most times when I hear people say that they're trying to overseed their lawn, or overseed Bermuda grass with another Bermuda grass, they're trying to fix a problem the wrong way. So you'll have an area of your lawn that is thin, and they'll be like, well, I can just put some, some Bermuda grass seed down, and that will make that area thicken up. And the thing I would tell you is, that if, if Bermuda is not growing in an area of your lawn, you need to figure out why, because like if, if you could put down a grass seed, let's say you could put down a grass seed, and let's just say that it matched your existing lawn perfectly, which it probably won't, but let's say you, say you could do that. Whatever the conditions are that are causing that area where the Bermuda is thin or not growing nicely to, to be that way, they're still going to be there now. They're still going to be there, you know, you know, going after you finish putting down seed, and you're going to be right back where you started. So, it, assuming that you've got enough heat, enough sunlight, um, and you're feeding it a decent diet of nitrogen, uh, Bermuda is going to take off, and it's going to it's going to spread like wildfire. So, I, I would everything else you're doing there, I like. I would I would try and dissuade you from overseeding your lawn with Arden 15.1 because you can't get any more or even any other Bermuda grass seed unless you're doing it as part of a complete renovation. If you're going to burn down your existing lawn and you're going to, you know, do it, reestablish it by a different type of grass like a Monaco or Yukon or whatever you decide to go with, then that's fine. But I would not introduce it to your other grass because it's unlikely to match. Like Arden 15 and Tiffway look reasonably good together, but I but even if you could get Arden 15, I don't know what kind of grass you have, and I don't know that it would that it would match well, and you're, you're not gonna like the way that looks. So everything else looks good. I would um, not do the uh, the overseed portion of it, and whenever it comes to leveling, I am a fan of using a blend of 70% sand, 30% compost. Like a 70-30 a blend is what I am a fan of because that way you're using the sand to create structure to help level the lawn and get that nice smooth golf course lawn look. And you're also introducing some organic material with the 30% compost or topsoil or whatever you decide to use in your top dressing mix. So you, you can use 100% sand, but I am a fan of, of using a 70-30 blend. You get like all the benefits, or most of the benefits anyway, of leveling, and you also get to improve your soil quality at the same time. So hope that helps. Look around in your area, shop around in your area for anyone that's so, that, that offers top dressing mix or leveling material, and they should be able to offer you a blend of some sort. Next up is Mr. Oliver Rittum. He says, any recommendations seeding the lawn? It's like the seeding lawn uh, show tonight. Uh, what do you think about using a pro plugger rather than seeding? I like that better for correcting areas of um, that are thin or there's there's some kind of problem that I do for seeding. So let's, 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 uh, let's um, like go over this a little bit, Oliver. So let's say you figured out, hey, you know what? Bermuda does not like shade. And I, you take the um, the steps to either get rid of the shrubs or you you raise the canopy of the tree. You're just trying to, you do, you, you or there's maybe some debris under the soil and you find that and you get rid of it. Like in other words, you've corrected the conditions that are preventing Bermuda from growing in that area. A good way to, to speed up the process of that area filling in is to take some plugs from your existing lawn, transplant them to the lawn, to the area that you're trying to get the grass to grow in now, and that way you are guaranteed that it's gonna match your existing lawn. So yes, I a thousand times I'm a fan of using a pro plugger 
rather than seeding unless you are doing a complete renovation. If you're going to burn down the entire lawn and start over, then by all means, knock yourself out with seed. But if you're just trying to correct an area that was once a problem child, plugging is a better way to go, in my opinion. It's going to, it's going to match. You know, you're not going to have to worry about it matching because it's going to be it's the same grass. Okay, so next is Mike D. Mike D. He says, my first year with my with any pre-emergent, and I used Spectacle, and it worked amazing. Imagine that. <laughs> it's good. It is good. That's I'm not I'm not surprised, Mike D. It's a it's a great product, man. It's a you know there's a reason why they charge what they charge for it because when you're the best and there's not I mean I'm sure there's probably there are other herb there are other pre-emergents that are also very good. Like I heard about one called um what's it like a pennant magnum is also really well regarded. I've never used it myself. But spectacle around here, like the lawns around here in the fall, they're getting sprayed with spectacle. Like a lot of lawn care services around here, that's what they're using in the fall because they don't want to get call callbacks. People calling, you know, November, December, you know, this time of year saying, hey, my lawn's full of weeds with the Hades. I paid you guys and, uh, and they're getting angry. I'm going to cancel all this stuff. Spectacle is a good way to prevent that from happening. So, uh, so yeah, the only negative to it, which you know, depending on how you look at it, it's not really a negative, is the price. Because you can always just split it with a, some friends or family, and then you get, you know, in my opinion, one of the best post-emergent herbicides for warm season grass at, um, at, a, at a price that's a little bit, that's quite a bit less than buying it just for yourself. Alex Risti, Ristiano, Ristiano is up next. He says, hey, Ron, I was digging in my DIY irrigation, and I noticed I have a ton of grubs. What's your recommendation? My recommendation is Acceloprin. Kind of like what I was telling the other viewer earlier, you got a couple of options. You got Acceloprin, Acceloprin uh, SC or Acceloprin G. I like the SC if you have a backpack sprayer and you find you feel comfortable applying liquids because it gives you more control over application rates. And it's also easier to store. And you know, it's just, it's a great product. You, it's just the, the, the effectiveness of each of these is the same. Um, and, uh, the SE is what I used last year on my lawn, on Alex's lawn. We had no problems with grubs or any other, any other lawn damaging insects in our lawn. It's also a little bit cheaper. So if you want to save a bit of money, you can go with the SC, right? So that there's that, this is what I would go with. And as far as how to apply it, um, in here, we tell you everything that it covers, what it controls and more. This is not the, I mean, there's a lot more than this, but this, I can't, I couldn't have like the label be like this long. So this is the more common stuff that people are know about that it controls. Um, talks about the active ingredient, why chlorantranilaprol is awesome as an insecticide, and um, application rates, and gives you recommendations around like what kind of what kind of uh, spray nozzle to use, kind of spray tip to use to get the best results. And there's a video and all that jazz. So check out Acelaprin SC. That is what I would use um, for grubs on your lawn. You want to get ahead of that, kind of like with um, disease, lawn disease. If you can put down a preventative fungicide, or in your case now get rid of grubs before they really begin to take off and become a problem, it's better to do it now than when you start noticing parts of your lawn are dying off because they're eating out the uh, the root zone. So hope that helps. Um, Alex, I will put a link here in the chat for you to a seller print. I'll make it nice and easy. So at Alex, it helps if I actually click into the box to type at Alex Ristiano and a seller print. Guys, if there's um, if there's spelling errors in the chat while I'm putting this in, it's because I'm trying to type fast and also get back to the next question. So don't make too much fun of me. It hurts my feelings. All right, next up is Mike Mike D. He says, when, "What's the exp expiration date on X Spectacle Flow?" Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I have to look. I have to look at the label to see what the shelf life is. I would imagine three years, two to three years is what I is what I would expect, which is another reason why I'd say get it and split it with friends. Um, it, it might be longer than that, but so you have to check the label to know how long it lasts. It, it, like, like most herbicides, um, if you keep them in a cool and dry place and you keep them tightly capped, like if you, as long as you keep this, like, like, you know, the cap nice and tight on this, it should last for, for several years without, um, without a problem. I have a, um, a buddy, um, that, that works at site one that has, uh, a bottle of Celsius that he's had for like eight years. And he, only, the only thing he uses it for is cleaning up, uh, spurge, cleaning up spurge that grows along his, uh, his beds and it still works great. So it just, it all depends on, you know, how it's cared for. If it's kept, if it's kept cool and dry, and especially for the products that are liquids, as long as it's, it's nice and tight. So, you know, air and moisture is not getting into the, in the product, it should last for, for several years, but check the label for guidance as far as uh, as far as shelf life goes. Next up is Upsplash. He says I have poa in really wet areas. That is common. So you'll find poa is going to is going to be a thing in areas that are get really get get wet or saturated. So if you have like a downspout, if water if water drains and it settles in those areas, you're going to have poa there. 
Um, the same thing for sedges. So what you'll find, a common thing you'll find is the areas of your lawn that you have a lot of POA, whenever it gets hot, those are the same areas of your lawn where you're gonna be disposed to have sedges, like nut sedge um, is also gonna likely be more likely to grow in those spots as well. Fortunately, certainty takes care of both of them. It kills POA and it kills uh, sedges and Kalinga. Um, but again, as, as far as to prevent that, Spectacle, a good pre-emergent is the way to go. And then if you use some use certainty with surfactant, like that'll that'll knock it out as well. But what you're experiencing upslash is not uncommon. Uh, that areas that are damp or where water settles is where you are likely to have um, you're gonna have some breakthrough with POA. Like on Alex's vanity strip, like his mailbox is like if you look at his vanity strip, I'm checking to show you here. Like if this is his vanity strip. Um, his mailbox is here, and so and there's a tree that is planted right here on this side, and the water from the, it's just a slight grade, but the water if it rains heavily, the water pools right here on the vanity strip um, in front of this tree because there's nowhere for it to go. There's like a big bulb for the tree, so so it literally will they'll run down from the mailbox and pool in that area, and that's the area where he has most of the poa. There's a little bit in some other spots, but it's mainly concentrated concentrated to the area where um, a lot of water goes and stays. So what you're experiencing is not uncommon, unfortunately. But uh, but use if you have warm season grass, use certainty with surfactant, and that will get uh, rid of it. That will get rid of it. All right, next up is McNasty Motorsports. He says, you snuck up on me. Scalp done today. Everything else done and on point. Ready to go. Nice. I like it. I like it. I like that you're getting all your, uh, your prep work done and you are good to go for this season. Good to go for this season. Okay, so we have a question here. Let's back over to this camera from the Instagram from Wise190. He says, Ron, hope you had a great week. I did. It was not a bad week. I cannot complain. It says, scalp last week, lots of worm castings this week. Should I be concerned? No, not at all. I have worm castings in my lawn. I don't worry about them at all. Worm, worm castings are a sign of earthworms, which is a sign of healthy soil. It's like nat it's like nature's uh, lawn aerator. So, so yeah, I mean, as far as earthworms and the worm castings, I don't do anything special to get rid of them. The front roller of my mower mashes them down whenever I'm mowing. So I don't even get out there and like knock them over or hit them with a leveling rake or anything like that. Literally, whenever I mow, it, they get taken care of. So no, they're they're a sign of, of healthy soil. So there's nothing to really worry about. I wouldn't do anything uh, about them. Wouldn't do anything about earthworms. They are a good thing. I mean, I get it. The castings are a little bit unsightly, but that's just um, it's just part of having healthy soil, unfortunately, right? That's all part of it. I got them in my lawn. Got them all in the back lawn. Next up is No Name. He says, I would not recommend using image when greenup is occurring. Last year, it slowed down my start of the season. On the flip side, if you want to delay mowing, go right on ahead. <laughs> so there you go. Yep. So uh, so yeah, so image, amazoquid this time of year, not great for, for Poe. I mean, it will kill Poe, but it's also slow. It's really, it's way, it's much slower than, 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 uh, than certainty is. And you know, if you want to see the results of a lawn that was blanket sprayed or th like three different types of grass, two types of zoysia, one type of Bermuda that was blanket sprayed with certainty at higher rates than this, which you are seeing, where am I, where's the video? This, which you're seeing right here, this is Real Rollers Turf Park that was um, two weeks ago today. Um, this, well, no, it's not two, two weeks ago tomorrow, this was sprayed with um, the, a higher rate of certainty over all three plots, over both zoysia, over both Bermuda, and you can see how it is greening up nicely. So in other words, the, uh, the, the heavier rate that you need to use with certainty for POA did not negatively impact the green up of, uh, of the zoysia and of the parts of the Bermuda that were scalped. So as far as an option for getting rid of POA this time of year, that's not gonna really have a negative impact on your, um, on your lawn, again, assuming you apply it, you mix it properly and apply it properly, uh, certainty is what I would say to go with. So, good stuff. All right, next up is Jermaine Battles. He says, dosage for certainty slash Celsius for spot treatment of uh, Tifway Bermuda grass. I got you covered, um, Jermaine. So if you go here, if you go to the golf course lawn store and you go to the weed killer section and you look at Celsius or certainty or the Celsius certainty kit, We'll look at that because that kit contains Celsius. It contains certainty and it contains marker dye and surfactant. Great way to save a little bit of money and save yourself some time. In that video, in that description, you will find this video. This video goes into excruciating detail of how I like to, not saying it's the only way to do it, but how I like to mix Celsius and certainty 
for spot spraying. In this video, that's exactly what I did with it. I, I was spot spraying some um, some crabgrass and um, some sedge, uh, not some, some crabgrass, some sedges, and uh, a little bit of poa um, when I, when I made this video. So that's if you watch that, that'll, that will um, that will cover it in detail, and I will actually. To help you out, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just send you a link to it. So go, you can go to the Golf Course Lawn Store, go to the Weed Killer section, the video's there, but I'll also link the video to you here in the chat as well. The only modification, so here's the thing. In that video, I was showing spring Celsius and certainty in the summertime, right? Mainly and using certainty primarily for controlling sedges. It, the only modification I would make to that, to what you see as far as application rates is for if you're spraying it now and you're trying to take care of POA, you need to go up on the application rate for certainty. So the, the rate, that rate of showing, you know, three of the small scoops um, for certainty is great for summertime. That's good for, for, for sedges. It'll smoke sedges, does a great job against it. Not quite enough for POA annua. So for POA annua, you're gonna to wanna to use one of the large scoops. If I can, I think I got one here. Do I have one? I think I got one, I do. Imagine that. So got a scoop here. You, you've got two scoops that it comes with. You got the small scoop, big scoop. One of these, one of these over a thousand square feet uh, is what um, is what the label calls for on the low end for taking care of POA. So, the, so one large scoop, um, they talk about mixing it with two gallons of water and spraying that over a thousand square feet. Um, so they're using a two gallon per thousand square foot dilution rate. It really depends on what dilution rate you wanna use. I use a one gallon per thousand square foot dilution rate. The long short of it is for every thousand square feet, um, one one of these large scoops, if you, one of them, if you're targeting POA. If you're spray, if you're going in the um, the summertime, you're, again, you're taking care of sedges, this kicks over sedges a lot easier, especially when it's warmer, and you can get by with like three to five of the, um, of the little guys, of the small scoops. That's the only modification I would make to what you see in this video if you're spraying it this time of year. And of course, use surfactant with it. Use marker dye so you can see where you sprayed. The kit's a great way to save a bit of money so you can get them all um, with just one click versus having to add them all to your cart. And I will link the video here in the chat for you, Jermaine. So you can you can check that out. Celsius, um, I'll just say uh, herbicide combo video. Um, yeah. Combo video. All right, and I'll also have this linked in the, the description of this after the live stream if you guys are interested. In, and for those of you guys that are watching the show after um, watching the replay. Okay, so hope that helps, uh, Jermaine. Uh, next up is Mike D. He says, when is the live drawing for my Allet mower? Allet mower, is the live drawing for it? No, not anytime soon, not anytime soon. You're talking about, you're talking about Bay in the back? No, 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 no. I can't, I can't do that. I can't, I can't do that. This, she, she's one of one. It's, there's one of those. There's only one of those in existence and I can't, I can't do that. I can't go put, I can't put that up for, um, for a drawing. I want it from, in an auction. Like I gave, I gave to a charity and, you know, then, then that's, that's how the, the store, we were able to win it. But I mean, I, I do, I'll do the next best thing. I'll give you a close up. How about that? You can, you can watch in there and you can see the custom, one of one platinum jubilee for her late majesty's um to celebrate her uh, the, the platinum jubilee you can see it's all done up in the union jack livery with the uh the special badge on there and it's also blacked out because this the sterlings by default are green this one has uh black it's all blacked out as far as like the the plates on the back and some of the other treatments so it's, it's kind of a cool mower if any of you guys came out to the uh to the Tur real rollers turf park um party last fall, I brought it out there. And if they do it again this year, I'll bring it out again if you guys want. It's kind of a pain to do, but you guys like it, so I'll do it, why not? All right, next up we have Randall Lard, and he says, put down some of the complete 14714, thought I needed glasses because I couldn't even see it coming out. It's really fine granules. Yeah, so it is. So what you're finding, uh, Randall, is it is a greens grade fertilizer. The SGN, the size guide number for it, is like an 80. So we can do a comparison here, quick show and tell. So if you look at, I'll show you three, three different fertilizers. So this is your standard fertilizer prill size. This is like a 210 size guide um, um, SGN. This is like common to what you'll find and some online fertilizers, uh, some of the fertilizers you'll find at your Home Depot, a lot of those will even be bigger than this. They'll probably be bigger than this. So by comparison, this is what your standard fertilizer looks like. This, by comparison, is Humic Max. This is 150 SGN. 
So the smaller the, the smaller the number, the smaller the prill. So this is quite a bit smaller than this, right? So as far as getting past the, the grass, getting past the, the grass and getting down in the soil um, where it can work, this is gonna do better than this. You're gonna see this sitting on top of your grass, this will disappear into the canopy. Even better than this is the complete, the complete and stress. So this is a 150 SGN, this is an 80 SGN. So you can see the difference. This is almost, I would say almost like a powder, but it's a very, very fine granule. Uh, and the result that is what you're seeing, Randall, where literally you're gonna apply this, it's not gonna get hung up in the grass at all. It's gonna get past the grass into the soil. When you water it, it's gonna begin working better, faster, you're gonna get more out of your fertilizer application. In addition to also having humic acid and kelp and like uh, micronutrient, a bunch of other goodies. Uh, so it's a it's a great product. So yeah, it's you're you're not seeing it because you're really, um, you're not really supposed to, because it's, it's that fine. They do make, um, they do make a version of it that is like a higher visibility prill of this same size. I, I opted not to carry that one because it doesn't have uh, as much as this contains. Like that one didn't have, I think, iron in it. Um, and some of the micronutrients, like those were omitted, and those were omitted from the, um, from that from that formulation versus this one, which has all of those. This is why we carry this one on the store and not the, uh, like the high viz. So that's why just set your spreader calibration, your spreader setting properly and just go out there and apply and you'll be good to go. But in other words, what's happened, what you're experiencing is exactly what you're supposed to experience. Even this, even like Humic Max, which is, I mean, it's almost twice the size of the, um, of the complete or the stress. And it is still, it's still hard to see this coming out of the, uh, the the broadcast spreader. And you certainly don't see it once it's on the lawn. Again, it, it gets past the grass down into the soil where it can begin working. So good stuff, man. Keep me posted on your results. I'm sure you're going to like how your lawn looks with that product. Next up, actually, no, I got a, do I have a super chat? I think I'm missing one. I got a super chat down here. I think I saw one that came in. I got one from Mary J. I saw it. There we go. And I saw one. Super chat from Mary J. Thank you so much for the super chat, Mary. I appreciate you. She says stripe action and thumbs up. I appreciate that, Mary J. Thank you for all the love and support. We got another one here from Mr. Mike D with another super chat. Uh, super chat he says, Mike D is the winner of Ron's Alan Mower <laughs> giveaway. LOL. Thanks for the Q&A. You're very, very welcome. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't know. No, I'm uh, that I won't be giving away. I mean, if Alex if Alec makes like another special edition mower available and they, you know, they want, you know, they want to give it away and they want me to use the show to give it away and they'll ship it to you. I'm fine with doing that, but not, not that. That's, um, that is a, um, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna be giving that one away. And I'm not gonna be giving that one away. So appreciate the super chats and all the love and support. Thanks so much. All right. Next up, we got Steven Edmonds. He says, I had some sod put, put in two seasons ago during dormancy. Um, and as a newbie, I didn't realize it's centipede. It's about 1,500 square feet. Would you cut and resod or spray, uh, just so kill it, and plug or something else? Okay, so you so you had the lawn sodded, and it's centipede grass. And you you're saying you don't like the is what I'm reading is you don't like the centipede. So if you don't like it, and you want to replace it with something else, then I then yes, you would you would kill it off and then replace it. You'd, you'd sod with something else or um, you know, you reseed or whatever, whichever you want to go. I mean, but I don't know. I mean, if it's, have you given the centipede a chance? I mean, I don't, I haven't had centipede myself, right? So I don't know how it looks when it's really nicely maintained, but if you'd be surprised, most grasses, most grass, if you maintain them nicely, you cut them frequently, they can look really nice. I'm sure even centipede can look, can look really good. If you, you know, if you're cutting it a couple times a week, it's, uh, there's, there's very few grasses that if you cut them frequently, that they, 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 they don't look good. You know what I mean? But um, but if you're to answer your question, if you want to get rid of it, yes, it would be to burn, like get rid of your existing lawn, you know, spray it out, glyphosate, and you know, I, I think let me think, I think centipede is sensitive to quinclorac. I believe that is correct. Check the label for, I think so. I think that's right. Um, but assuming that it is, you could mix some quinclorac along with glyphosate and spray it with that. That will likely kill it. And then you can um, you know rake it out and then put down whatever grass you want to go to. But I would I would encourage you to try and make it work. You know you can make centipede look nice if you uh, if you take care of it. So hope that helps, sir. Uh, next is uh, to answer your question. No, I would not plug or I would not plug and put something else in there. In other words, I would not plug Bermuda into your centipede grass for a couple of reasons. One, they're going to look completely different. 
And when it comes to the herbicides that you can, that you can, like the application rates you can use uh, for products, it's different. So like the application rate for Primo on Bermuda, I believe is different than it is on Centipede. Um, so just in general, it's just not good to mix grass types if you can, if you can avoid it. It just creates, it creates work and, and headaches where there does not need to be work and headache. All right, next up is Higgy Pop. He says, hey, Ron, happy Friday. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thanks so much, Higgy Pop. Appreciate all uh, the kind the kind words and support having you come in and, and hang out. Next up is Joe Wanja. He says, what's up, y'all? I was able to scalp last weekend amid the stomach flu. See, that's dedication. You were sick and you still went and got it done. You know what? You know what, Joe? We're gonna, you know what? Just because of that, I salute you. He says, planning on making a second pass this weekend and putting down some Carbon Pro G. Any other furt I should be looking to put down? Okay, so... The, you know what I'm, you know what's going to come here, Joe, right? Assuming you've got uh, the, the best answer to this question is Carbon Pro G. I'm um, good idea, so you're going to scalp and put that down. I would get a soil test done if you've not done that as yet. If you've not done that as yet, that's what I would I would um, I would look into doing. A good option, you know, that said, uh, a good option for waking up your lawn is a fertilizer that has higher potassium content. So I'll give you an option here, but really I would, it's, I mean, if you're in Georgia, unless your lawn is really green uh, to the point where you're almost about to start mowing it, I, I wouldn't do a fertilizer just, I wouldn't do a granular fertilizer just yet. I would give it, give it a couple more weeks before I did that. But um, if you, uh, if you get a soil test done and it agrees that you could use a potassium boost, you're just looking for something to wake up the lawn with that, that I'm a fan of, then something like this, like the Stress uh, 12024. This is a great product. This, this for me, for warm season grass, this is a great fertilizer to start the season with and a great fertilizer to end the season with. For cool season grass, this is a great fertilizer to start the season with and also to use during the summer months when it's hot. So whenever the grass is under stress, this is a good, uh, an option for your fescue, rye, Kentucky bluegrass in the middle of the summer heat. Like this is good. This also has um, you know quite a bit of slow release in here. So it's not gonna release all that nitrogen really quickly and push a bunch of extra growth. So this is what I would use to wake your lawn up if I had to um, to pick something, but but get a soil test done because then you know, you know, if you said you're gonna start with a with a 12 0 24 to start and say that still leaves you know, April, May, June, July, August, September. You still got many months that you need to still need to feed your lawn. And what really should you be using? You know, the way to know that is from one of these. And that way you can make sure the fertilizer that you're using for the, the main feeding, the primary feeding throughout the season uh, is based on actual data that you get from a soil a soil test soil test kit. Again, we have those on the store under the soil test section. It, they're like $30, they're not really expensive. Compared to most other things you're gonna buy for your lawn, this is literally one of the, the least expensive things you're gonna buy. And the results you get from it have some of the biggest impact in the way your lawn looks. So it, I would encourage you to invest in getting a soil test done it takes, it takes like literally a week of your time to, to do it, get your results, and then you are making decisions based on actual data. So that's the one thing I would say. But everything else, good. Scalp, a big, a big, a big heavy application of, um, a big heavy application of Carbon Pro G. I like that. And if you want to um, wake up your lawn with a 12 0 24, that's good too. Outside of what you're gonna be feeding the lawn with throughout the entire season, get a soil test to determine that. Next up, you say sticking to granular fertilizers this year before getting a backpack sprayer for next year. I hear you, that works. I mean, that's an option, but I, I gotta tell you, man, backpack sprayers are fun. Liquid products are fun. You get access to things like you get like your, your Primo, you know, you get your growth regulator, you get access to lots of fun uh, biosimilar products like the um, like the Miramichi products. And it's really not that hard to use. You know what I mean? So for budget reasons, you're not gonna do it now and you wanna wait till next year, I get it. Um, but if it's if you're intimidated by it, I can assure you that backpack sprayers are really not that hard to use. Like I've got tons of content on there. If you have questions, you can always email me and ask. And uh, they it just allows you to take your game to another level as far as the 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 what you're able to apply to your lawn and and actually saving time, right? Because think about it: when you're going to go apply a, a a fertilizer now, like a granular, you apply like take for example the 12 0 24 I just showed you, right? Like that's got nitrogen, it's got potassium in it, it's got a little bit of iron in there, a little bit of kelp. Um, a little bit of humic acid. If you want to apply any of the other micronutrients, how are you going to do that? If you want to apply a growth regulator, how are you going to do that? If you want to apply a little bit of extra kelp to your lawn, you know, it's more, it's hard to do that if you're sticking strictly, if you are sticking strictly to granulars. Now, if you go the liquid route, the backpack sprayer route, you can literally take, can I, I can show you what I do. You can literally take Primo. You can take 
Uh, 901C, you can take Nutrizolve, you can throw an, an NutriCalps, you can take Primo, a kelp product, a, a fertilizer product, and a micronutrient product. You could throw all four of these in the tank at the same time and spray them all at once. You know what I mean? So you're able to build your own concoction, play with your formulation of what you want to, how you want to um, take care of the lawn. And you can, you know, with, with liquids, you're able to mix and match and, and you just, you can, you can, you just have a lot more control over your feeding program. So I like to use granulars for the heavy lifting. I do a granular once per month, the first of every month. And then I use liquids on the first and on the 15th to supplement that and to, to, uh, to get you more, more consistent growth, more consistent color. Um, without causing, you know, a big surge of growth that you get if you do like a heavy granular app. So I would encourage you to look into it. If you want to wait till next year, that's fine too. But I got to tell you, liquids are fun. Liquid, liquid fertilizers are a lot of fun. Once you get past the intimidation of using a backpack sprayer, you can do a lot with them. All right, K263M is up next. He says, I burn my grass with fertilizer and drought Texas combo. Okay, so that makes sense, fertilizer and, <laughs> fertilizer and drought. Um, will the grass fill in alone or do I need to overseed? Uh, depends on what the kind of grass you have. If you have uh, Bermuda, Zoysia, uh, yeah, those, it will fill in. It'll fill in, it just, it'll take some time. But once, you know, it gets to be, once temperatures warm up and you start getting some heat, it'll, it will fill in. I mean, I imagine that the burned areas are just in little pockets, like it's not the entire thing is burnt. So... Once you, uh, again, once, again, once temperatures arrive, we're getting more daylight, more, more heat, um, and, uh, you know, a bit of rainfall, it's going to, the, the areas that were damaged will recover. You know what I mean? So if you, a good example is like my lawn in years past has gotten hit with spring dead spot, which are like little, like, you know, uh, little areas, like, I don't know, pie dish size areas of your lawn where, that are just dead, that were killed by, um, uh, a fungus that starts in the fall and, you know, you don't really see the problem until springtime. And there's not a whole lot you can do about that to, to fix that once you already see it. And it's just time. And literally by mm, end of May, end of May, early June time frame, you can't even tell anything was there. So in the case of your lawn, depending on the extent of the damage, how bad the burn was, it's probably not going to take until the end of May to fill in. But it will, it'll fill in. Once again, once conditions are such that the grass will begin taking off, you're going to, you know, the, the grass will do what it does and it will fill in in those, um, in those areas. Just going forward, make sure that you're, you know, you're just more careful, obviously. I don't need to tell you this. Be more careful about your fertilizer app so you don't overdo it and, you know, end up here, end up here again. As far as what you can do for the drought conditions, you could use like um, Hydrotain, some kind of a moisture manager. Uh, we carry that on, I think we can show that, I think that's in stock. We carry that on the golf course lawn store. You can use Hydrotain or you can use uh, Foreplay. Like this is really, this of the two, I would actually go with this um, if you're looking for an option because Foreplay, this is um, Hydrotain, a surfactant. Um, what else is in here? There's four products. I forget all of them. There's Hydrotain, yeah, a kelp product um, and, um, sur and, sur and a non ionic surfactant. So you've got, you get a bit of everything in this. So this is basically Hydrotain on steroids. It's got a bit of everything in there. So this is going to help you out for the localized dry spots. And then as far as the lawn recovering from the burns from the fertilizer damage, it's just going to be time. Just give it time and just be, again, obviously more, more cognizant of your fertilizer applications going forward. So you don't uh, damage it again. Right. All right, next up is Robert Rainey. He says, is Dalvin Larry in the stream yet? He just got a, a sweet new machine. I have not, I'm not sure. I haven't seen it. I have not seen it. You're making me want to go get in the Facebook group and see if I can see what he, um, what he picked up. Oh, oh my, oh my, oh my, I see it. I mean, yeah, so in our private, oh my, this is, that is nice. That is nice. So, uh, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm not sure if he, yeah, I, I can show it. I don't think Dalvin's going to care. Uh, I can, so this is, uh, he was showing this to our, um, our, uh, uh, the, 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 Galvin is part of the Golf Course Lawn Academy, which is, I'll show you guys really quick. That is our paid course, like all this information on YouTube and that I do here on the live stream is free. We actually have an academy that you can, if I don't choose the, um, the login link and actually show course details, um, that you buy, you pay for it one time, you get, um, lifetime access to, um, the training material. You get a, a discount on products in the store. Here's everything you get out of it, but you also get access to the super secret and equally awesome private Facebook group where we talk about all kinds of uh, lawn care stuff and, and help each other out and show off new hardware. So I am gonna, um, I'm gonna show you guys his new, his new, uh, his new acquisition. This thing is sweet. 
It is sweet. You guys kind of will likely have an idea of what it is, uh, Dalvin. You guys will likely know what it is, but um, but why not? I'll show you guys what he just what he got. If you follow Alex's uh, Instagram, you you'll have an idea of what he got. But this is his uh, his new hardware. Check this out. Pretty sweet. So he got this the new Alex Sterling. Lovely. He got his grass catcher, and it looks like he got the turf rake. And is that is that a verticutter? I spy. It looks like it. I think that's a verticutter. I think so. I think he got the yeah. So he got he got the. He got the Ron Henry special. He got what I what I recommend. So he got the turf rake and on the right, and he also I believe that's the verticutter. I believe so. And he got a groove roller. Can you see that there? Let me let me get this off here. If you look at um, the front there, you see they're laying down in front. He's also got that groove roller option. So man, that's sweet. Nice. Very 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 nice, sir. Congratulations. Hopefully you are here. If you watch the replay, I will clap it up for you. Nicely done. Nicely done. Nicely done. Very, very cool mower. Mow with good health. You're going to like it. It's just a really nice piece of equipment. The, the, the four hours I had one of those, I, I enjoyed it. So you're, I know you're going to love yours. You're absolutely going to love it. All right, next up is uh, Luis Ramirez. Let me see here. He says, um, hi, Ron. I'm planning on ordering Celsius Certainty and Surfactant. My question is, can I combine all three or one at a time. Also, do I need to wait to scalp before applying the herbicide? Yes, you can apply all of them at the same time. The only thing that you're missing there is is a marker dye. If you're doing if you're doing any kind of spot spraying, or even if you're blanketing the lawn, I recommend getting some marker dye so you don't over apply or under apply. So if we go here, Luis, I'll show you. So you go back to the store. Like what you recommend, what you're talking about, you're getting this, this, and this. And yes, strictly speaking, that is all you need. You technically only need certainty, Celsius, and the surfactant. But getting some marker dye is a good option as well because you're gonna be able to see where you've sprayed. And you know, and if you're doing, again, if you're blanketing the entire lawn, um, it, it helps prevent over application. So I would recommend doing all four of these. If you do the kit, it's cheaper than buying them all separately and it also saves you time. You don't have to add four products to your cart, you just add one. And, uh, and yes, as far as applying them, they can all be sprayed at once. If you come over here and look at the Celsius Certainty Kit, and you if you go to the description, this video that, I, that you see here in the description shows exactly that. It shows you how to mix all of them in the tank at the same time and how I like to spray it. Not saying it's the only way to do it, but it's how I like to use them, use that combination to get a good result. So, so yes, um, when you go to the store and you look at the products in the description for both Celsius Certainty and also the... Uh, so the, the kit, you will see that video in the description, um, product description that you can watch that will show you how I like to do it. Again, not the only way, but you, people get good results doing it the way that I um, that I recommend. And uh, so yeah, so give that a shot if you are so interested. But to answer your question, uh, yes, you can do them all together. And should you wait to scalp before applying uh, the herbicide? Should you wait to scalp before applying the herbicide? Um, so here's the thing. If you're the herbicide works better, right? These pro these products are are foliar absorbed herbicides, meaning that they have to get on the the plant's leaf, like the the leaf of the weeds you're trying to target, in order for them to work. If you go out and you scalp the lawn and you cut all the weeds down to where they're like you know they're down to the stalk and there's not very, there's not much weed left, they're not going to work as well. So what I would say is this: what I would recommend is this: is get the kit, get the kit, do that first. Right, do that first. So spray the Celsius Certainty Kit on, you know, to treat the weeds that you want to target first. Um, give it a couple of days um, after that, and then you can scalp. So let's say we could say we could um, let's say we could uh, Thanos snap, right? And then tomorrow morning you had a Celsius Certainty Kit, and you're going to go out and spray weeds. You could you would do that tomorrow morning, and then Tuesday, if you're someone who likes to scalp your lawn on Tuesdays, you could scalp your lawn Tuesday, and that would be good. That that's that's what I would say. Um, to do because you want to you want to apply it and give it a couple of days for it to be for the plant to take it up for the weeds to take it up um, so you're going to maximize the results that you uh, that you get. I really wouldn't scalp first and then spray post emergent herbicides because you're not you're, you're not maximizing the tissue the, the 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 surface area for the herbicide to work. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, so yeah, so I would do it in the, I would do it the other way. I would do it in the opposite order. Um, herbicide post emergent herbicides wait a couple of days and then scalp afterwards if you want. Kind of like how Lee did it, right? Like how, how Real Rollers uh, did it. If you look at this, the turf park, this got Celsius and certain, not, not, not Celsius, sorry, just certainty sprayed over the entire thing. Um, he waited a week and then he scalped last weekend. And this is what it looks like uh, today, right? So 
So that's what I would do. I would give it some time between when you apply the herbicide till you uh, you scalp the lawn. You're gonna get the best results if you uh, if you do it that way. Hope that helps. If you have any other questions, uh, let me know. Sean Murphy just says, happy Friday. Just ordered Humic Max for the first time. Tuesday, got here, throwing down tomorrow. Excellent shipping to Florida. Nice, I like to hear that. I like to hear that you ordered your stuff and you got your stuff and they arrived in good um, or in good shape and that it got you quickly. All the boxes checked, I like it. Once you use it, Sean, and you get, you know, you're the envy of your neighborhood and all your neighbors are like hating on you because your lawn looks so good. If you would not mind going to the store and leaving a review about your experience with Humic Max, I would really appreciate it because it does help out. Really would appreciate that. It's the only ask I have, only ask that I, that I have as far as, um, as far as follow-up goes. Uh, Dalvin says, yep, I just came in from putting it away, LOL. So yeah, Dalvin, so we just showed off your new awesomeness. He says, yeah, it's in the Facebook group. Yep. Yep, it is. We just showed off the new hotness and it is sweet. Very good job, sir. Good choice. You even opted for the Groove Roller package. I like it. I like it. You know, you're going to enjoy that, man. You're going you're to really enjoy that uh, that that mower. It's a really nice mower. But Sean Brooks is up next. He says, looking at the tiger striping after this rain tonight, I'm, I'm beginning to think mulching clippings is overrated. Thoughts? So this has been tested. So um, the, the, the folks over at Soil Lab, the guys that make the Soil Lab, the Soil, My Soil Testing Kit, they run a YouTube channel, it's called Soil Lab, check it out, all the videos are pretty short, um, you know, concise to the point, and they, you, it's a great way to learn about a cool topics about soil that aren't like overly nerdy that you won't understand what they're talking about. Uh, so, uh, they did a video and they, they actually showed the difference in nutrient, of the, the nutrients that stay in your lawn from mulching or bagging clippings, and as you would expect, you do have a bit more nutrients that stays in the soil if you mulch versus if you bag clippings. It's not a huge, di it's not like a night and day difference. It works out to about to about a fertilizer application in a season. You know what I mean? Over the course of an entire season, depending on where your, you know, your nutrient levels are, um, that's about what you can get out of it. So for me, since I started bagging my clippings last year, I absolutely love the way the lawn looks. I don't have thatch problems with it as far as, um, like last year I had, didn't have any disease problems uh, in the lawn at, um, post whenever I started like doing the regular turf raking and doing things to help keep it uh, thatch free. Um, and so the, <laughs> I would say this, if you have the time and you have a way to dispose of the clippings, then, um, then bagging your clippings is not a bad way to go. That said, mulching is, um, you know, it's a good way to return you know, natural nutrients, natural fertilizer to your soil. But, you know, to your point, a negative of it is that you get like tiger stripes. You get like grass clippings that kind of like that kind of bunch up whenever you get a heavy rain. So it's really your call. You could you could split the difference. You could mulch. You could mulch every other mow and, you know, you can mix it. it doesn't mean you have to go one way or the other. From an appearance standpoint, the lawn is going to look better if you bag clippings. From a disease prop, from a disease, um, disease avoidance um, um, standpoint, uh, I got and the very nice results from also not allowing thatch levels to increase in my lawn. So it depends on where you are in your lawn as well too, um, whether or not you want to do that. It does take more time to cut your lawn that way. And every week you got a bunch of clippings you got to get rid of. So that's something else you have to consider as well too. Um, so it just, it, it really depends on you. Depends on you. If you want to, if you want to get more out of your fertilizer, more out of the nutrients, some more of the stuff you're paying for, mulching is a better way to go because you are literally returning some of those nutrients to the soil every time you mulch. Uh, but it does, the lawn doesn't look as good appearance-wise versus if you catch your clippings. So you have the information; the decision is yours. All right. Next up is Vahid Navi. He says, uh, "Deron, thank you for your concern about the questions. Can I put down?" potassium before summer heat and after that is what you recommend uh fertilizer for for after summer stress uh yeah so vahid i believe you're you're further north so um potassium is a potassium is just good for overall plant health right it's um it, it helps with with um the movement of water throughout the plant um the like the the way you can remember it is like nitrogen is up um, phosphorus is down and potassium is all around. So overall, just it's, it's a it's a good macronutrient that helps with again movement of water and moisture throughout the plant. It's just good for for, um, for for overall plant health. Whenever your lawn is um, like warm season turf in the middle of the summer when it gets hotter and it starts to see more stress, having fertilizer with that is a little bit lower in nitrogen, meaning you're not trying to push a bunch of growth when the lawn is under stress, but also has a higher amount of potassium by volume is a good thing. So. To I think that you're asking, yes, you can you can apply it before and during 
the summer heat. Uh, and yeah, that would be that would be a good thing for for warm season folk. For people like me, I like to start the season with a higher potassium fertilizer and close the season out with a higher potassium fertilizer. And for the summer, I don't need to use that because Bermuda loves heat and sunlight. I can just can stick with uh, Humic Max um, during that time. You know what I mean? But for you with cool season grass, you're not going to want to be pushing a bunch of extra nitrogen during that time of year. You could go with a slow release product like the 120024. Um, and so your lawn still looks nice, you're still feeding it, but and you're giving it what it needs given the conditions that it's encountering that time of year. So hope that helps. I think that's what you were asking. And if not, just revisit the question and I'll uh, uh, ask the question again and I'll, I'll, I'll revisit it. You know what I mean? That's what I'm here for. Uh, two thumbs up from Robert Rainey. And he says, let's see, Mike D says, I love the chair. I had the exact uh, um, Herman Miller and headrest. Yeah, man, I, I, I love it. I almost got... There's that new one they have. I forget the one that does not have any adjustments. Um, I can't forget the name. It looks, it's 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 a really cool looking chair, but it's just not, the more I sat in it when I was at their store checking out all the different chairs, it just doesn't work well. Like the fact that with, for me, like I'll go to this one, um, this camera, because I work at my computer, I don't know, 12 hours a day at least, right? I'm, I'm sitting here a lot. Um, I tend to sit like more upright, like how you see me now. And this is better, better for that. When I'm editing videos or if I'm just working or just, just for just better posture, this is this was a better fit for someone that sits in a chair for hours and hours and hours, um, you know, throughout the day, which is not really good for your health sitting in a chair that long, but this is a good chair to for that purpose. And I like it. My back feels better ever since I got it. Next up is Billy Gilbert. Let me see. He says, um, there should be some belt tension specifications. Um, some have deflection measurements. If they're loose, you should see some belt uh, material powder. That's a good point, uh, Billy Gilbert. So he gives you some other things to look for as well, uh, Todd. But again, I, I want to you know stress that the 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 speed that the Greens Master moves at when you're mowing is slower than a true cut. Like a, a, a true cut turned like all the way up and like the reel engage and the like the drip pressure system engage. It's a lot faster. Like you're you're. It's a very brisk walk, almost like a slight run when you are that mower is going. The Greens Master is not like that. It's a, it is a, it's still a, it's still a good walking pace, but it's a, quite a bit more leisurely than a True Cut or a McLean or, or um or a trimmer. So just something to keep in mind. The mower might be absolutely fine. It's just different to what you are are used to. Gary Kelly Jr. is up next. He says, "Happy Friday." Good news. I just ordered four bags of Lebanon fertilizer from your store last night. Just waiting for it to warm up here in. Chicago, very cool. So you're getting your, your stuff ahead of time, getting your materials. I like it. That's good. Getting ahead of the uh, the rush, and so you're good for the season, which is good. And he says, um, next up, he, so I appreciate that. Thanks for the support, uh, Gary. And keep me posted as far as the results that you get with it. And then uh, next up is uh, Gary Kelly Jr. says, Jay, waiting for my wife to let me join the Academy. Well, one thing you can also tell her, one way you can also you know, pitch it to her, uh, Gary, is one, you get to hang out with all the lawn crazies that are in there in the private Facebook group, the guys and gals in there, which is, she may not care about that as much as you would, but also outside of the really good course material and the private Facebook group, there's also a discount that um, that members get on certain products in the store and it's a way for the course to pay for itself, right? So that's that's something else too for, if you, I mean, if you like, if you like the products that the Golf Course Lawn Store carries, um, particularly those from Miramichi Green, then there's a way for you to save a little bit of money if you're an academy member. So, so in many ways, over time, it can literally pay for itself in addition to learning a lot of cool stuff about turf grass and hanging out with lots of cool folks and seeing Dalvin and Robert and all the other antics that those guys that are super hardcore about their, their lawns are into. So one other thing to consider. Next up is Zach Daly Faust. He says, when starting from bare ground, do you recommend granular products or liquid? We'll be using Baron Brug Turf Bl uh, Pro Blue. So from bare ground, if you're like, so you're doing a renovation, you're starting from scratch, what I would say is a uh, granular because most liquid products, I mean, there are some liquid fertilizer products that are soil-based, but majority of them are foliar, meaning they, there needs to be some kind of a, of a grass leaf for the, for the product to, to get on for it to be absorbed. In your case, where you're starting from scratch, there's no plant, there's nothing yet. So I would use a granular. So if you're looking for something as a good starter fertilizer, like the 14714, this guy here is a good option. So like this is a, is a good for a, like a, a starter fertilizer. It's good for a lawn that's deficient in all the macros. And for what you're talking about, like as a, as a way to, to start, 
the season to, to, to prep a, a lawn for um, for seeding, this is a, a good option. This is what I would use. Um, and because again, liquids, hopefully that makes sense, right? Most liquid products are designed for there to already be a plant that you're that you're spraying them with. You know what I mean? As far as the liquid fertilizers go. There's, there are some soil-based ones, but most of them um, expect that you're, you're spraying it to actual grass leaf. So uh, granular as far as uh, as far as that goes. It's a good question. Baron Blug, uh, Baron Brug Turf Pro Blue. I've not seen that one. Let me know how it works out. Let me know how your, your seeding project goes. Next up is Mr. Todd Gleach. Says, happy Friday. Hoping to finish up the scalping project this weekend. Soil test showed up today and will be back in the mail tomorrow. Nice. Very good, Todd. So you're getting your scalping done. You're getting your soil test done. You're getting all the prep work done, all the foundation work done so that you're good to go for this season uh, once the, the temps really get up and we, we, uh, we get rolling. I like it. No name is up. He says, congrats on 50K. Let's get those likes up. Yeah, guys, thank you so much. If you guys are enjoying the show, we got 140 something people in here right now. If you guys are enjoying the live stream, feel free to touch that like button. It's a free way to support the channel. Sends good vibes to the YouTube algorithm and says, hey, you guys a bunch of lawn crazies over here. Come over and watch this content. Doesn't cost you guys anything. And I really would appreciate it. And yeah, thanks for that no name. 50,000 subscribers, a big accomplishment. That's really cool. Uh, just keep going, right? We'll see. We'll see where it, where it can go, right? So I, I really appreciate all the love and support. And uh, it would not happen without all of you guys. So thanks for all you guys watching the content, subscribing to the channel, and uh, overall just uh, keeping me going. Next up, we have Philip Hong. Philip says... Good afternoon. I wanted your advice on leveling. I have high spots next to the concrete that I would like to level off. How would I do, how would you go about tackling that? Okay, so let me see if I understand this. So you have, you have high spots, you have concrete and you have high spots next to concrete. How would you level off? How would you go about tackling that? Uh, I'm not sure if I understand the question. If you, if you've got like a sidewalk and you've got like a, an area that's higher and you're trying to, are you trying to get the surrounding areas even with the higher area? If that's what you're asking, then I would just, I would just top dress and, and level. I would just, I really would top dress and level the entire area. And um, you would minimize, you still put a little bit of material on it, but you would minimize the material that goes on the high area and the areas surrounding that high area would get more material. What you're gonna find, Philip, is whenever you level the lawn, you're gonna go out and you're gonna spread it um, with a shovel or a top dressing machine, whatever you happen to use. And then when you use a leveling rake and you start working the material in, the material is naturally gonna settle into the lower areas of the lawn and the higher areas, it's not gonna stay there. So when you're using the level rake, you're gonna kind of move it away from that. It's gonna get pushed away from that. And it's gonna, it's gonna again, like I just said, it's gonna settle more into the low areas. So when you're leveling a lawn, it's not so much that you are trying to get it, um, like you're trying to get it flat from a standpoint of this, right? Like, like it's completely flat like this because most lawns is not really possible. What you're trying to do is you're trying to get rid of any of like the like like high spots, like the the the, the quick um, um, height and low changes in the lawn to where it's um, like like to where it's more flowing, right? Like if you look at, uh, if I can find it here, I need to get a new video up because the one I have is old. If you look at, nope, not that one. If you look at video from my back lawn from a while ago, this is, uh, uh, this one here, if I can find it. Yeah, after the rain, I need to get a new video. So if you look at this, even though this lawn looks really flat, it's not, I can assure you it's not. It looks, it looks like it's flat, flat like a pool table, right? That lawn isn't. So it's higher, it's a little bit higher near the patio and it gets a little bit lower in the middle and then towards the end there where the fence line is, it's also higher. So it looks like it's pool, like, a, like it's flat like a pool table in this video, but it really isn't. And that's what you're going for. What you're going for is the natural slope or the natural flow of the lawn. You're looking to take all the all the rough edges, all the really like the sharp high spots or the, or the, 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 the sharp low spots off. So that whenever you start cutting it lower, the mower is less likely to scalp. So without having pictures, it's really hard to give you a great answer as far as, far as how to exactly address that one particular area. But I'll tell you that um, if you've got a high area, the, what, the, the way that I would fix it is I would top dress like the entire, top dress the entire thing. And what you're gonna find is the areas surrounding that high area are gonna hold on to more material than the, the crest and the high spot. And over time, if you do a couple of rounds of this, what's gonna happen is that instead of it being like a really sharp 
peak, it's gonna be more smooth and flowing, and it's gonna look nicer. It's not gonna catch your eye as much. It, you're not gonna, it's just, and as far as um, mowing, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna cut better whenever you, you do mow it. Um, and yeah, so I, th I think that's what you're asking me. I hope that, um, hope that helps. Um, yeah, so, but if you wanna ask the question again, I'll be around here for, I'm gonna be on the show for a while answering more questions. So if you, if you have a follow-up or I didn't understand what you're asking, feel free to drop another question in there and I'll, I'll, I'll visit it again. But, um, but I think I got what you are, um, what you are asking. So, and I think you're new to the channel. If you are, uh, welcome. Always nice to see new, uh, new viewers, new people in the, uh, in the live stream. So appreciate you coming to hang out. We have a super chat, you guys. Another one from Mr. Ben Raham. Thank you so much, Ben. Super chat received. He says, wishing all a great green up and happy Friday. Thanks, Ron, for all the great content and products. You're very welcome, Ben Raham. I appreciate you coming to hang out. Thanks for the super chat. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep doing my best to produce uh, good content and to bring products, uh, bring bring to you guys the products that I would wanna use on my lawn, right? That's uh, that's the thing. It's a great way to get to test out new stuff all the time. And and yeah, that's the whole point of the store. Pretty much what you see on there are the things that I would use on um, on my lawn. All right, next is Leo Garcia. It says, hello from Austin. What's up, Leo? Thanks for coming in and saying hi in the live stream. Appreciate you. And then Shauna W says, I have two sides of my front yard all Bermuda. One is probably 60% green, where the other is like 20% green. It seems too early to fertilize, but since it's so green, mowing it uh, once, but should I, since it's so green, mowing it twice a week. <laughs> Without pictures, it's hard to say, Shauna. I would give it a bit more time. Tell you what, between now and March 15th, you should see a, a fairly large change in just the overall green level of green within your lawn. So if you're... If you got one side that's 60% green, and you know, and, and I mean, if that area is that's it's largely green to where you're mowing it already, if you want to fertilize that area, you could. The area that's lagging behind is 20%. I might give that a bit more time, and and really, the more I think about it, instead of to ensure that you're fertilizing all at the same time, so you're not like one part of the month you're fertilizing this part of the lawn, and another time you're fertilizing that part of the lawn, I would just give it more time. That's the best answer. Give it a bit more time, a couple of weeks more and then you can do the entire thing based on how your lawn's looking. The area that is lagging behind is likely just getting less sunlight than the area that is 60% green. That is what I find to be true on my lawn. And a couple of weeks from now, you should find it evening out fairly nicely to where if you wanna start introducing fertilizer, you can do so. Something you can do and something that I'm gonna do this weekend is I'm gonna be spraying the carbon kit. I'm gonna be um, spraying, I'll show you here. I'm gonna be spraying, um, uh, the Release Zero, Nutri Kelp, and the Biospectrum. So this is what I'm gonna be going down with on my lawn, spraying on my lawn this weekend. So this guy here. So um, the uh, Nutri Release Zero, Nutri Kelp, and Biospectrum. So that's a nice little wake up, nice little, little feeding to the lawn. You know, nothing nothing too crazy as far as a lot of, um, uh, you know, uh, nitrogen inputs or anything like that. Just a little bit that's in the, the kelp product, just to kind of start feeding that soil, getting it ready to go for for this season. So if you wanna do something like this, I am all for it. By all means, proceed and conquer. As far as getting a granular down, I would give it a bit more time based on what you are describing. Next up is Dwayne's World, party time. Excellent. He says, hey Ron, happy Friday, it's almost time. It is, we're almost there. He says, green is coming through. It is, it is. We are getting close, uh, Dwayne, for sure. It is getting close. And then we have a question here, a question from the Instagram. It's a good question. He says, what's the best way to get a more dense lawn all around? Great question. Really is um, mowing frequency. I'll tell you that. I mean, if you, the, the more frequently you mow your lawn, um, particularly at shorter cutting heights, so if you have a grass type that, that, that thrives at, at shorter cutting heights, so like Bermuda, Zoysia, um, rye, fes, um, no, not fescue, rye, Kentucky bluegrass, uh, like those kinds of grasses, it, cutting them regularly at, at shorter cutting heights, they're going to fill in. You're gonna encourage them to grow in and, um, and, and thicken up. Reason being, if you think about it, right? Like the grass is trying to catch sunlight, right? Like the grass leaf when it's, when it's growing, it's trying to catch sunlight. And if you allow it to grow tall, there's not a, re a whole lot of reason for it to grow out, to spread out because it's growing and it's nice and tall. It's like, you know, if you have Bermuda, that's like three inches, three and a half inches tall, like it's getting, it's, there's plenty of grass, plenty of leaf for it to catch a lot of sunlight. But now if you start cutting it regularly, you're cutting it, let's say an, even like an inch and a half. 
you're cutting it regularly at an inch and a half, what starts happening is like you, it grows and you cut it off. It grows and you cut it off. And then the Bermuda starts thinking to itself, not, not literally, but this is, it's, it's trying to adapt. It's saying this crazy person keeps cutting me off and I'm still trying to catch sunlight. So I'm gonna adapt. Instead of growing up, I'm gonna start growing out. I'm gonna start creeping out. And I'm gonna allow my, I'm gonna grow leaf this way instead of this way. So what you'll find, if you look at a Bermuda lawn that's allowed to get tall, that's like three inches, you don't normally see Bermuda grass lawns that are like three inches tall and also really dense and thick. Um, whereas if you take a lawn that is like an inch and a half and it's cut shorter, um, and it's mowed and an inch and a half or lower and it's cut regularly, it's almost like, it becomes almost like carpet. It's, it can become very dense, almost to the point where it gets too thick and you need to, you need to thin it out when you get to, you know, the, the, May, the June timeframe to where you start having cutting issues, you start having scalping problems um, in areas that you didn't before. So as far as to get any lawn to look better, get a sharp piece of equipment. So if you're using a rotary mower, make sure it's got a sharp blade on it. If you're using a real mower, make sure the reel and bed knife is nicely sharp, in good working order, and use them a lot. You know, twice per week, two times per week is the barrier of entry to have a lawn that's gonna be hard to compete with. You know what I mean? If you're mowing once a week, that's still better than most of your neighbors and it's gonna be all right. But like twice a week, if you can get a mow in in the, in the weekend and then one day during the middle of the week, you're gonna be you're gonna be way ahead of the game as far as um, as far as the competition as far as like having a lawn that looks incredible. If you can get out there and you can mow it, you know, three times a week, it's gonna look even better. Like if you look about it, the biggest thing that separates golf courses from your typical home lawns, right? Yes, they do have better nutrient programs. They use more products on their on, on golf courses, but the big thing is the mowing, right? If you look at a golf green, you look at like a normal lawn. The biggest difference is that they are mowed, like greens are mowed every day. They're mowed every day. So if you're, if you're able to have a grass that can tolerate that um, and you're able to mow it every day, you're just to keep it nice and tight with sharp equipment, um, it's gonna look good. It's gonna look better. Like the reason, a lot of why my lawn looks the way it looks is because of mowing frequency. Like I work from home. So I'm either even in the evening or early in the morning before work starts. So I'm able to get out there and, and mow it in like 45 minutes and Doing that every other day produces, uh, you're encouraging the lawn to thicken up and it produces uh, an amazing, like a, a really, really good look. So yes, fertilizer is important. Yes, biosimilars are important. Yes, a good nutrient program is important. All those things are important. All those things are gonna help produce a great color. Um, is gonna help produce a lawn that is less prone to disease. But as far as from an appearance standpoint, like how it actually looks, it comes down to mowing. So twice a week, if you can get, if you get out there twice a week and cut it twice a week, it's gonna look better than person that is, um, that's mowing it once a week. I mean, all things being equal, he or she who mows more wins. That's, that's the, the general. You wanna know how you can beat your neighbors? Like if you guys are using the same nutrient program, if you mow more often than they do, your grass is gonna look better than theirs is. So, hope that helps. It's a good question, why is 190? I'm sure other people have asked that as well. So, uh, so yeah, it, it all comes down to, uh, to mowing from an apparent standpoint. I mean, top dressing also helps too, but once you do all that stuff, it really comes down to mowing frequency. Next up is Mark uh, Battle. He says, just purchased a new home, started renovating last fall. Nice, sounds like a fun project. Sounds like a nice project, uh, Marquise. Um, next up is Jay um, Circle Rick. He says, can I use image instead? You can, if you're talking about using image for Poannua, but it's gonna be slower. It's gonna, t it's gonna, it's gonna be quite a bit slower than, um, than using something like, uh, like certainty like this. If, if you have Poa and you don't wanna wait for it to get like summertime for it to die off. Like this is a better way, in my opinion, to get rid of it than using image. It's gonna work faster. Um, it's not gonna negatively impact the green up of your lawn. Like there's a lot of reasons to go with a post-emergent like uh, like certainty that's foliar applied versus uh, something like uh, imazequin, like image. So hope that helps. Uh, Dwayne's World is up next. He says, uh, Ron, what effect do you think Celsius will have on POA? Not, not much. He says, I know it's not labeled, but since I, but since it does remove cool season grass from Bermuda, I'm curious if it would work. I mean, if it has an effect, it's not going to be, I, I don't think it's going to be great, um, um, Dwayne. I mean, it's, I mean, it, I, I mean, think about it. If, um, if Bear, if Bear was confident saying that, uh, that Celsius would take care of POA, they would absolutely put that on the label because they'd sell even more of it. You know what I mean? They'd sell even more of it. So no, I wouldn't, if you're trying to get rid of POA, I mean, if you spray POA with it, it might injure it. It might yellow it a little, maybe. I don't, I, I can't tell you. I've never actually just sprayed POA with just straight Celsius. Um, but so if, if you get a little bit of yellowing, 
consider it a bonus, but I, I, I wouldn't expect it to kill it because that's not what it's designed for. If you want to kill POA, use certainty. I mean, a, a good a good point here as well, right? Even their new product, which is the um, the Celsius Extra, part of why I, well, it's a great product, but part of why I'm not a huge fan of it is it's essentially, it's essentially um, Celsius and Sedgehammer. So see this and this, essentially these two in one. And while Sedgehammer is pretty good for sedges, it's not as good as certainty and Sedgehammer doesn't do anything against Poannua. So that's why I still, for me, in my opinion anyway, like this combination is still superior to um, Celsius Extra or Celsius and Sedgehammer. So if you wanna get rid of POA, use Certainty. Don't use um, Celsius, it's not, it's not labeled for that and it's not, it's not likely to work. All right, next up we have Anthony Allen. He says, hey Ron and long hair family. I'm in Fayette, uh, Georgia, and I wanna know the best time to aerate Bermuda grass. I think I already answered that, Anthony. Um, the best time would be um, April, April, May time frame. Once the lawn is already greened up, you're already mowing it. That's when I would do it. It's going to recover faster from the aeration job. It's going to get recover, recover faster from that. So I would give it a bit more time. Next up is Todd Gillespie. He says, I did six month application of Prodimi last fall, but I'm still seeing some annual bluegrass. Not near as much as last spring, but I still have some. Also Celebration Bermuda is starting to green up. Nice. So I'm glad that your, your Bermuda is starting to green up. It is not uncommon that if you that you if all you did last fall is prodiamine, like if all you do is prodiamine, say in late August, early September, I mean it's going to reduce the amount of poa that you have in your lawn, but it's it's typically not enough just by itself to keep your lawn poa free, um, you know, throughout the entire fall and and um and winter months. So so that what you're experiencing, Todd, is not uncommon. A, a viewer earlier, I'm not sure how you've been, long you've been watching, but a viewer earlier had the same question. And what you can do to help improve the effectiveness that you get out of out of uh Prodiamine is mixing some Princep with it. So um, take Prodiamine, uh Simazine under the brand name Princep and Imazaquin or Image, mix those three together in this this upcoming fall and that's going to do a better job against POA than just using Prodiamine by itself. If your budget will allow it, the best product to use for um, for POA prevention in the fall on Bermuda, in my opinion, is Spectacle Flow. Like this stuff, you'll apply it and you're not gonna have POA in your lawn. I mean, it's gonna do a much better job than um, even that combination that I told you. That combination is really good. It's, it's close, it, it approaches what Spectacle Flow does, but it's not quite as good as Spectacle. But it's um, it's a huge boost over what you get from just doing um, just straight Prodiamine. So, what you didn't do anything wrong. It's just that um, a herbicide no has some limitations. Like even even uh, Prodiamine, it's got its limitations. You know, some people have resu um, better results with controlling POA if they do like a split app. So they do an application in like early September, and they'll do another one in like December, early January timeframe. And some people get a, a decent result with that. But it's still Again, in my opinion, use that 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 uh, that three herbicide combination: po um, uh, Prodiamine, Simazine, and uh, Imazaquin. That's uh, that's a good that's a good way to help improve the the effectiveness that you get um, out of your fall herbicide application for keeping POA away. Miles, um, I've Ebby, Miles, I always you know I've never I, I've seen you in the live stream before, and I I you got sometimes you have to tell me how to pronounce your name. I think it's Miles. IB. I'm going to say IB. Maybe I'm wrong. EB. Okay. He says, hey, Ron, when's the best time to apply lime? Uh, whenever your soil tests show that your, your lawn needs it. So I've applied lime. I mean, okay, I'll tell you, if you could, if you had a time machine, if you did a soil test in um, this past fall and it showed that your pH levels were low to where you could benefit from a lime application, that would have been a good time to apply it because lime does take a bit longer to react with the soil and to help bring to raise pH levels up. But you can apply it now if you do a soil test and your, you know, your it shows that your your pH levels are such that you would benefit from a from a lime application. I've done one in the summertime. Actually, I can show you that uh, if I can find that that uh, ooh, I think I can find those those soil test samples. I think that was in 2021 when I did it. I think that was. Let me see here. Let's look. I can. Um, I can show you, um, and I can show you the results of that as well too. Yeah, so I think it's these two. Let's go over here to the MySoil dashboard. 
So yeah, I believe it was 20, I think it was two years ago. So 2021, and then my next test was in the fall. So summer soil test, and then the fall soil test. This is what I was doing every quarter, because I was just geeking out on the results, and I really wanted to see like how things were changing throughout the year. If I compare those samples, you'll see the first, the dark blue lines, that is what the soil looked like in the summertime. And then in the late, like in um, October time frame, the light blue on the right is what the soil looks like then. So what you'll notice is that in, um, if you look here in May 28th, so the end of May, early June, is when I pull this sample. And then I got my soil test results back a week later. So like the first part of June, but before I did any fertilizer apps, I applied my, I did my lime application. And you see that reading reflected right here. Because if you look from June, from um, June until October, this was the increase in pH due to the lime application that I did. So I did this lime app, like again, in the summertime, and this it was reflected in my soil test results in October. So really the time to do it is whenever your, your lawn needs it. If you, if you pull um, you pull cores, you, you, send your, you send your sample out and it, your pH is low and it needs it, then apply lime. Um, just know that it, it, the, the reason, part of the reason why I'm a fan of doing a soil test in the fall is because for two reasons. One, thing one is you're able to measure how well your, your program worked throughout the season to see what your nutrient levels are going into the fall months. But then also it lets me know, should I do a fall lime app? Like if, if I looked at the, my, my, um, my fall uh, soil test samples and they looked like how this one does, I'd be like, eh. This looks pretty good. I, pr I probably don't need to put down any lime this fall. I'm, I'm likely good until the springtime. I, I probably don't need to do a lime application. Or if I did one, it would be a small amount, you know, 10 pounds per, nothing, like a little maintenance app, nothing nothing super heavy. Um, so that's that's the reason why doing one in the spring to one, know what you should be doing for your miniature program, but then also in the fall to see, for me primarily where my, where my pH is, um, is a good thing because it gives you enough time to do your lime app and then give it adequate time to react with the soil, bring your pH up, which is gonna allow you to get more out of the fertilizers that you apply. So hope that helps. Uh, if your soil test says you need it, you can do it. You can do it now, no, uh, no problem at all. And Todd says he's in East Tennessee. Very cool, Todd. Uh, next up is Dwayne's World. He says, um, hey, Ron, curious, how does surfactant actually work? Does it help the herbicide absorb faster? Does it make the product stickier? But drying time is the same. Yes, yes to the second one. It um, it makes it stickier. It makes it, um, it's it's actually in the name. It's actually in the name. It's the spreader, spreader sticker. It helps the, the herbicide um, uh, adhere to the leaf better, longer, which helps absorption, which helps absorption. It's almost like, think about it this way, right? Let's say like most of these products or most customers are herbicides, you really want, you really want like um, to apply them in dry weather. And then when there's not really any rainfall in the forecast for a day, really two days is better, right? But let's say um, you apply it and then two days later you get a really heavy rainfall. Um, if you have, if you're using surfactant, it's going to help that product stay on the leaf longer, which is going to help absorption. And also in the in the morning, you think about it. Every morning when you go on your lawn, how how does your lawn feel? It's wet, right? It's got there's got dew on it. So using surfactant is just another way to help boost the um, it boosts how well the um, the the herbicide adheres to the plant to the leaf. So you, again, you're just maximizing uptake. It's I mean this is a this is a big part of getting good results with certainty and Celsius. So I would consider these, I mean, there's people that buy just this by itself and it'll work okay, but it really works better when you use surfactant with it, which is why it's included in the uh, the kit that we sell on the golf course lawn store. So consider surfactant to be a necessary um, part of using Celsius or certainty if you wanna maximize your results. Uh, so hope that helps. And as, before I get this question, um, as far as surfactants, you only really want to use that with herbicides. Don't mix, don't add this to your fertilizer or to Primo or anything like that. This is only use this with your post-emergent herbicides. You don't need to use it with fertilizer, just post-emergent herbicides. All right, next up is Luke Sprinkler. He says, best products to use in the springtime. It's a great question, Luke. Um, so I'll give you, um, I'll give you my uh, answer for that. So let's go over here. So what I like to do is to start out as far as products go, I like to get a soil test done. That it's not really a product, but something you should do. And then um, to start the season out, I like to do a. Um, I think to start like to, I like to start introducing my uh, my biostimulants. So what I do is use. Go here to the store. I'll show you. 
you go to shop and then go to Miramichi Green. You can start using this product, Essential G. Literally, you can use this not just only in the springtime, but every month, as long as your ground is, the ground doesn't freeze where you are. So you can use this literally every month on your lawn if you want to. If you want to see, like you take a look at Papa Mo's Lowe's lawn, which is another viewer that's in here right now. If you look at this soil or this, um, this good lawn that I'm showing you, the only thing this lawn had from last fall until now is Essential G and um, pre-immersion. So it had to it had a pre-emergent herbicide to prevent weeds in the lawn, and it had regular applications of this product. And you can see the difference in just in the green up and how, how the lawn is looking. So I would I would encourage you to incorporate a granular biosimulant to your um to your lawn care program. And if you're someone that's comfortable with using a backpack sprayer, to also use liquids. This is a kit that I put together with the folks at Miramichi Green, and it's all about improving soil quality. You have um, Release Zero, which is a 10% micronized carbon product. So if you think about like biochar, which is, um, you can think of it as a, um, um, a, a an enhancement or a product that you can apply, an additive you can apply to the soil that helps your fertilizer work better and work longer. So it prevents it prevents your fertilizer from, from leaching through the soil as quickly if you're using the the granular product, as well as Release Zero and nutri -Kelp. So it maximizes um, any 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 fertilizers, any, you can use it with fertilizer, you can use it with herbicides, you can use it with fungicides, literally anything that you're spraying on your on your lawn, you can use this, this combination with. I primarily use it with fertilizer. So when I'm fertilizing, this goes in the tank as well. So as far as what I use regularly, it's those two. So you've got, uh, you've got the um, Essential G and you've got the Carbon Kit. Now, as far as fertilizer goes, what you do in that space, go over to the fertilizer section, really comes down to what your soil test says, based on what your soil needs. What I'll be using on my lawn will be Humic Max, which is a granular fertilizer, and then I'll use, I'll combine that with a liquid for, um, uh, this season I'll probably alternate between 901C and Turfplex, but I, I use a granular fert once per month, and then I use one of these liquid fertilizers twice per month uh, to uh, just again to not have too much too much growth to have consistent color is what I like to use. I've done it for several years and it produces it produces a nice result. The reason why I do all this, you might be saying, "Wow, that seems like a lot of products that Ron's using on his lawn." It seems like a lot of work, but the the reason why the biosimilars are such an important part of this um, is because if you look at like Bermuda grass, if you get on Google right now and you say you Google how much nitrogen does Bermuda grass need to be happy, and you, the answer that's going to come up is something like four to five pounds of nitrogen per month uh, when it's actively growing. When I use biostimulants, like I use the, the Miramichi Green, the, the, the Essential G, as well as the Carbon Kit, my lawn never sees a pound of nitrogen in a month. It, ha it hasn't seen a pound of nitrogen in a month for, for years, four or five years. I mean, not anywhere near that. Because, it, because what, those, what these products do is they make the fertilizers that you're using more available to the grass. So you're able to get by with using less of it. So whereas... Bermuda calls for around a pound of nitrogen per month is what most people apply to their lawns. I get away with applying applying around just over half a pound. So half a pound to 0.7 in that around in that area, I get a great result as far as color, um, not a bunch of excessive growth. And it just overall the lawn just looks great without putting too much um, too much nitrogen into the lawn. It helps prevent that helps um, reduce the likelihood of problems with disease. So it's just it's a complete it's a complete way of looking at it. So in my opinion, you can just feed a lawn just fertilizer, and that can work well. You can get decent results with that. But a better way to grow a great lawn is to focus on improving the quality of the soil. So you have good you have great soil, great dirt. Uh, great grass is a byproduct of that. So the the biosimilants like um, Essential G and the Miramichi Green Carbon Kit are all about improving the soil quality, which allows you to put less nitrogen, less nutrients into the soil because you're making it you're making it more efficient. Like literally, what you put in there, like the the grass is able to take advantage of more of it than if you're having just to slam it with like heavy, like high amounts of fertilizer all the time. So that is what um that is what I like to do. So. To start out, I would definitely do a granular, like um, like I was telling you, uh, Essential G, and then I would also do the Carbon Kit. Like those two are what I would consider staples. As far as fertilizer, I like the fertilizer from Lebanon Turf. Like the Humic Max is a great product. Um, the Complete is a great product. As are the Stress. Which of these you use is based on what 
your, or what you use throughout the entire season anyway, is based on what your soil test results say. So this will tell you what the deficiencies are in your soil. And based on that, you can make a decision on which of these fertilizers you wanna roll with. Um, and yeah, that's that's it. I mean, biosimulants and, uh, and fertilizer and mowing, lots and lots of mowing. Once you get into the late spring and the summertime, that's when I'll start introducing Primo Max. This helps slow down how quickly your grass grows. It helps encourage it, helps it to encourage it to grow uh, thicker and denser. So that's something as well that, you, that, that I, I also do in my program. If you wanna see, tell you what, you know, I'll, I'll give you an even better answer or one that's that's not just me talking about it. If you go to the golf course lawn store, right? And you go to the blog section right here and go to page three, and I'll link this in the chat for you as well. The very first po the very first article, the very first article that we wrote on for the store is a step-by-step -step guide for how to get a golf course uh, lawn. If you click on that, it's a very long post. It talks about top dressing and uh, picking the right mower and fertilization, how to test your soil and all this kind of stuff. Um, but if you're looking for a schedule or a month-by-month -month breakdown, you can just click here over here on the left side. We've got a um, little uh, table of contents. And at the very bottom, you have a month-by-month -month lawn care schedule where I talk about scalping, a soil test, doing your pre-immersion, uh, doing the Carbon Kit Essential G, and one for March, one for April, one for May. Um, this is a, a good rough schedule that you can use. It has your, your disease prevention in there. Like all of that is in here, and you can follow this to get a great result um, in your in your lawn. So hope that helps as far as um, at a high level. I mean, if you're in the, in the Golf Course Lawn Academy, we have a, a calendar that, that details like application rates a little bit more, um, as well as you have like a team, uh, uh, you know, like a team or a crew of guys and girls to bounce ideas off of as far as, you know, hey, I'm doing this in my lawn or I'm seeing this in my lawn. What do you guys think? Because these all, everyone that's in there are pretty serious about their lawn, right? They like literally joined a course, a group, like a like a like a think tank, all about like getting the best lawn they possibly can. So they're all pretty serious about their lawn. So that's another thing as well. But if you don't want to do that just yet, um, by all means, you can check out the free stuff, which is this, which is the um, at Luke. Let me see if I can find you here. If you're still here, I'm not sure if you are. If you are Luke, let me see at uh, Luke Sprinkler. Um, this is your answer as far as that goes. Step by step guide of how to get a golf course lawn. So um, hope that helps. Let me let me get to make sure I got your name right. There we go, and boom, that one. So click on that. It'll take you right to the bottom where that whole where a lot of what I was just like going on about um, is documented is documented there. And if you want even more, you can join the Golf Course Lawn Academy where you know you'll get the actual detailed calendar and you know. You more access to me and more access to a lot of the other folks. Some of them are on the live stream right now and they'll answer even more of your questions. But that's a good start. A good biosimulant program, soil testing, fertilizing accordingly, and then mow your heart out. He or she who mows most, all things else being equal, will win. You say, thanks for taking the time for helping us. Never thought at my age 40, my favorite hobby <laughs> would be my lawn. You, who are you telling, man? Uh, I'll tell you, I, uh, you know, I, believe it or not, when I was younger, I hated cutting grass. Hated cutting grass, because my dad used to make, make us do it. Like they have some, pro we have some properties on um, the island that I grew up on. So on the weekends, it was cutting grass. That's what we were doing. We were cutting grass in one of three places. So, uh, so yeah, I didn't like doing it. And then when you grow up, you turn into your dad, right? Who would have thunk it? But you know, that's fine, that's fine, Luke, because there are far worse things, there are far worse hobbies that you could be in versus cutting your grass, right? So there's, it's not a, not a bad way to spend uh, to spend your, your time. Next up, we got NMS Auditor. He says, Ron, I just got my soil test back and I was good on everything except for sodium, which was high. Is there a solution for getting that down in the correct range? Uh, 34.11 out of a range of 0.5 to, thir to 30. So yeah, so you're a little bit outside of high. So here's what I would do, um, NMS Auditor. I, I honestly wouldn't worry about it too much. There's not a ton you can do to, to reduce sodium levels by themselves. You can, there's things you can do, but you'll, you're not only gonna reduce sodium levels, you're gonna reduce the levels of all the other nutrients as well. So as far as um, inputs that you put in, so going forward, uh, try and minimize products that have high sodium content. Like if you're gonna use um, you're gonna be applying like a um, potassium product. You're gonna wanna use a sulfate of potash, like a SOP 
uh, product, um, or I should say a product that contains SOP potassium versus uh, the myriad of, um, of potash um, potassium. So there's two types, there's, there's um, SOP and there's MOP. MOP is what you're gonna find in most fertilizers. It's less expensive um, and it has by volume a higher sodium content. So you're putting more salts in your soil. SOP um, does not, which means it's also more expensive. The fertilizers that we carry on the golf course lawn store, the ones from Lebanon anyway, so these guys all have um, um, the sulfate, the SOP for um, um, uh, potassium, the SOP for, uh, which is why I like them. It's another reason why. You can use these monthly and you're not, you know, you're not increasing sodium levels as you would if you were using a, um, like a myriad of potassium uh, fertilizer. So again, there's, they're more expensive products, but there's like, like most things, there's a reason why. There's a reason why they, they, they cost a bit more. Um, and when you factor in that you're getting um, you know, a smaller prills, so, so so better nutrient uptake. You're also getting, like, for example, let's take like Humic Max. With this, you're getting a 1608, so nitrogen and potassium, but you're also getting like almost 9% humic acid. So as far as what I, I talk about is, is like one, feeding the soil, but also doing things to help improve soil, um, your soil quality, this product is all about that. And it's, and it's the same thing for these as well. Like all of these products, like all three of them have, um, have humic acid in them. Uh, these, the complete and the stress also have kelp as well. So, so any of these would be good choices for a soil that has uh, higher sodium. It's not going to unnecessarily add much more to your, to your sodium content compared to like some, some of other fertilizer options that are going to use, um, they're just going to put more salt into your soil. So something, something to consider. Hope that, um, that option works for you and helps answer your question. But you, and, but the thing is also too you're not too much out of the range. I mean you're just outside of um, outside of the the zone. So I wouldn't I wouldn't get too wrapped around the axle around that. I would just minimize. You know I would if you have a choice between a product with like MOP you know like uh, like a higher sodium product or a lower sodium product, then I would choose choose a lower sodium product. Kind of like if you have higher blood pressure, you have a choice between eating like you know a big basket of fries that have salt on them, or eating like mashed potatoes with nothing on it then mashed potatoes are probably a better choice, you know, than the one with all the, um, with all the, the salt on it. And in this case, the benefit of the one that's, that's healthy for your grass is also, you can get better uptake out of it. There's other, other benefits. Like the other SOP um, uh, potash also has, if memory serves me, less chlorine in it as well too. So there's, there's, there are other benefits to it other than reduced amount of sodium. So Hope that helps. Go with one of the Lebanon furlers that we carry on the golf course lawn store, and then I, I honestly wouldn't worry about it. Just minimize adding more salts. Next up is Tillman Waters. He says, uh, Ron, what do you think uh, you have that can hook on to hose like imagine? I'm not sure, like imagine. Oh, okay, um, I got you. So what products do I have that can be applied via a hose and sprayer? Oy. Not many, not many. I believe some of the some of the release products, some of the biosimilar products, can be applied in a drench. I believe so. Yeah. So like this. So I'll show you. So if you want something you can apply in a hose and sprayer, uh, let me show you. If you go over to the golf course lawn store, uh, these it's like release. Um, I'll show you the carbon kit. Uh, like this guy, where's release uh, 901C? So release 901C, if we look at it, it can be applied in a drench. So there is a, let me get the label up here. If you look at the label, um, there is, actually this is, a, yeah, this is it here. So you have the application rate for, of how I apply it, which is with a backpack sprayer, which is two to seven ounces if you're spraying that. If you want to use it in a drench, um, you can, I mean, you have to dilute, dilute it quite a bit, but you could use it with like one gallon with 50 to 100 gallons of water, right? So even for a hose, hose and sprayer, that's not gonna work that well. Um, yeah, I mean, this this is really designed if you have like a big tank that you're gonna be, you're gonna be putting it down with a lot of water in an area. There's not a lot that we have. I can tell you as far as products that you can apply with a hose and sprayer, you can look at the moisture managers like hydrotain, like uh, this the liquid hydrotain can be applied with a hose and sprayer as can foreplay, like these two can be, can be applied with a, a hose and sprayer. But the products that we have, because they tend to be 
more targeted at the professional, the pro, the pro market, they all assume that you're going to be diluting them with water and spraying them with a um, with a backpack spray or some kind of a foliar, some kind of a foliar um, application versus a drench. Yeah. So, yeah. So no, outside of maybe release zero, you get away with release zero with doing that because there's no nitrogen in it, there's no fertilizer in it. But for the most part, all of these assume a sprayer of some sort. Unfortunately, um, Tillman. So. But so what I would say is get a get a get a sprayer. It doesn't have to be an expensive one. I mean, I like the Yard Mastery sprayer. I realize that one's more expensive, but you can get one from one of the big box stores. As long as you calibrate it and you get a good set of spray tips to go with it, you and you you know you calibrate it, you get a set of spray tips, you can get a great result with it. I mean, your 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 grass doesn't know whether it's sprayed with an expensive sprayer versus versus a less expensive sprayer. The thing that's going to make the biggest difference in your application is um, that you, you see that the right amount of product goes down over the right amount of square footage with the correct um, spray tip. So for foliar, use a foliar tip. For soil-based products, use a flood jet tip and make sure you're applying the right amount of product over the right amount of area. I, again, I like the Yard Mastery sprayer because really if you buy it, it's likely to be the last spray you're, gonna have to, you're ever going to have to buy. Really good build quality um, and it comes with literally everything you need to, you know, to take care of your lawn. So... Not a whole lot of options, unfortunately, for hose and sprayers outside of hydrotain, unfortunately. So sorry about that. Next up is DK Randall. He says, Ron, thanks for helping me with my soil test and fertilizer choices. You're very, very welcome. Yeah, if you guys ever have questions, I mean, I, I, I think I put a lot of this into, like a, as far as the, the answers to the questions in the product descriptions. But if you wanna email me, I'll also email as well. If you email me and I don't answer right away, I, you know, it's not because I'm ignoring you, but I just get a lot of email and I also like uh, have other work as well too. So if like two to three days go by and I haven't answered you, just email me again and I'll, I'll revisit it, you know, but except the big thing is I want you guys to get a good result. It's not just to sell you the products and say, Hey, go buy this stuff and good luck. Like the big thing is I want, I want people like Papa Mo's love to reach out to me and say, Hey, look, I've been using the stuff that you're talking about and I get this results on my lawn. You know, I've been using your products. And my lawn looks better than it's ever looked. Like that's the kind of stuff that I want to hear. It's not just selling you guys the product. I want you to get a good result with it. So if the descriptions or the videos that accompany them isn't enough, send me an email. My email address is ron at golfcourselawn.com. And I'll feel free to answer any questions you have to make sure that you're comfortable with how to use it to get the best, get best possible result, right? Because that is the goal, to be the, the lawn that the rest of the neighbors are envious of, right? That you're, you're dominating the neighborhood, you're setting the standard. Next up is Michael Anger. He says, hello, Ron. What is the best time to put down fungicide? I'm in North Georgia. I have Bermuda grass. We've been having a lot of rain. Unless you have, unless you've had a, a, a previous issue with lawn disease in your, um, like fungus problems in your lawn, I like to wait until um, the latter part of April into May timeframe. So late April, early May, um, that's the time I like to, I like to do a preventative fungicide. So if you look at the label for like headway, or you're asking the folks at Syngenta, they're gonna tell you May, June timeframe, that's when, if you're gonna do it from preventative um, purposes, do it then. If you've got, if you've had a history in the past of lawn disease in your, you know, say April timeframe, you start getting large patch in your lawn for some reason, then apply it in April, like apply it earlier, if you have a reason to do that, you know what I mean? But if you don't, if you have no reason to, 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 um, to, apply it early, wait till the end of April, early May. That's going to be, um, that's that, because think about it. That is when we were still getting a lot of rain in Georgia. And that's when the temperatures are starting to, to rise. So if you can combine a lot of moisture and a, a thatchy lawn, so a lawn that you didn't scalp or you didn't, you know, that, that has a lot of thatch in it. Um, so uh, heat, a little bit of heat or quite a bit of heat coming in, uh, a, a saturated um, thatchy, thatchy area of your a thatchy lawn. And if there's any predisposition of your lawn to, to, to suffer from large patch or anything like that, that's when it's going to begin to surface or begin to, to, to show up. You know what I mean? So, um, so I would hold on until the May timeframe, unless there's a reason for you to do it earlier. And, uh, and, and a lot of rain shouldn't be a problem. As long as your lawn is draining, you shouldn't, you know, that in itself would not be a reason for me to do a fungicide application early. If you want to get it now and just hang on to it, that's fine, but I would wait until uh, late April, early May to get your fungicide, uh, your fungicide application down. Next up is Shauna. It says, um, have you noticed, let me get some water here or some, uh, some Milo here. Yeah. It says, have you noticed while using hot temps um, above 90 degrees, uh, using surfactant in hot temperatures above 90 degrees is a damaged grass? Does a Celsius certainty combo require surfactant 
Thanks, Ron, as always. A great question. So, uh, yeah, so if you add surfactant to any herbicide, it does, I mean, it, improve, it improves how well it works and the likelihood of it in damaging or, or you know, discoloring the grass does increase. Big reason why, like, you know, and I get I get a lot of hate in, in comments and people that that, that, that that criticize me saying, well, you know, you could just use a three-way, or you could use 2,4-D, or you could use any of these other products that will kill broadleaves. And I'm, yes, I'm like, yes, that is true. That is correct. However, when it gets hot, you can't use those products. You gotta be careful. If you look at the video that's in the, the description for these two, for Celsius Uncertainty, I purposely waited until, I wanna say it was like late July when I shot that. So some of the hottest time of the year is when I waited to shoot that that video um, to to use this combination on my lawn on weeds that were that were that I, that I, that were growing in my lawn, um, and I used surfactant with it, and there was no discoloration. There wasn't any any issue with that. So as long as you don't go crazy with the surfactant, you know, an ounce or two is all I use in my um, in my backpack spray with four gallons of water. Like this combination, like the thing. Here's the thing. The thing that makes this work well in the summer. Um, is also what makes it work a bit slower this time of year. So as temperatures get warmer, uh, you know, into the 80s, into the 90s, you can still spray this combination with low risk of damaging your grass. The, the downside of that is if you were to spray it now, you use these now, they're going to work slower against broad leaves in your lawn. You see what I mean? So the, the reason why I like this is that you buy this and it's not only good for this time of year, like, you know, like some of the three ways and some of the um, some of the lesser expensive herbicides are, you can use this now and you can use it when temperatures are higher. And yes, to your point, surf, with surfactant, you do increase the likelihood of there being discoloration in your lawn with any herbicide that you that you use. Um, part of why I like this is that the likelihood of that happening is 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 substantially reduced. Because again, that video that if you look, that's in the product description for these was shot in the middle of summer, it was sprayed in the middle of summer, and I didn't really have any discoloration in the areas that I sprayed in my lawn when I when I was using this combo. So I hope that helps. It's a big, that's a big reason why I recommend this so much. It's not that I don't know about other herbicides that you can use that will also that can do the job. This is one that you can buy now and you can use it, you know, pretty much any time of uh, of year for the most part. So there's a method to my madness. I'm not I'm not crazy. I just look this way. Next up is uh, Alexander Thomas. He says, taking notes. Uh, thanks for that, Alexander Thomas. Hopefully you're getting some value out of, um, out of the, the live stream. Next up is G Free. He says, hey, Ron, uh, Strap Action Gang, happy Friday. Happy Friday, uh, G Free. Let me check here and make sure anyone here in the gram is asking any questions. They are not. They are just participating and just hacking. Oh, actually, we got one here. We got one here from Deep Roots Lawn Care. He has a question. And guys, it's kind of a sticky one. It's kind of a touchy one. He says, recommendations for a real mower. So the answer, the best answer to the question is it depends. What I would say is, here's, here's what I would say as far as the criteria that I like to use or I tell people whenever they're selecting a mower. Uh, thing one is, um, before you even buy a real mower, is it something that you really want to do? Because with real mowing, you can't be out there mowing the lawn once every couple of weeks. So if you know for a fact that, you know, me mowing at least once a week, really twice a week is something that not only I'm okay with doing, but I find enjoyment in doing, that's you know, box number one checked, so you're good. We can continue the discussion as far as what more to get. The second thing you should consider is what can you get parts for or serviced in your area? So a good example is if you, like in this area, part of Georgia, if you have a Toro, if you have a True Cut, if you have a McLean, you have a trimmer, there's tons of places around here that will service them, they'll get you parts for them that can, that can fix and uh, repair them, right? So any of those mowers would be a good choice for the Northeast Georgia area. But I'll say, for example, I got a, an awesome deal on say like a Jacobson, right? Which is also a nice greens mower. You get a Jacobson reels mower, um, but there's no one around here that knows anything about them, knows how to work on them. Uh, there's no dealers around here for me to get parts if something breaks. Even if I got a great deal on it, it's not, would not be my first choice because mowers like anything else, especially real mowers, they need maintenance and you wanna make sure that there's someone around that can take care of it. So if you were, my neighbor, let's say you lived in Northeast Georgia and we've already we've already decided that, you know, you live in an area that's a mecca for real mowing, like this area is, and any of those mowers are options. So you can use a True Cut, a, Mo a McLean, a, an Allet, a Trimmer, you know, whatever. You can, you can use any of those mowers. You can get someone to work on any of them. For me, real mowers then fall into, you're talking about two major categories, two major like levels. You've got like your, um, like your consumer, like your residential type mowers, um, like your True Cuts, your McLean's, your California trimmers, like that's one level of mower as far as the quality of cut they're gonna produce and 
just pretty much the quality of the cup they're going to produce. That's that's the best way to describe it. And then you have greens mowers. Greens mowers are between the two of them. Greens mowers are going to produce a noticeably better cut than a true cut, a California trimmer, or like a um, or a McLean are going to produce. Really, um, any mower that has a rear drum that is propelled by a rear drum is in general going to produce a better cut and better stripes than a mower that does not. So the true cut, while it's going to do a great job, it's going to do a, a produce a great looking lawn. It's still going to be a lawn that's going to look better than your neighbor's lawn. What you're going to find is if you're mowing frequently, while you're going to have your stripes, you're also going to have um, like two like hot spots or two like uh, notches that you're going to see in every single stripe, which is where the, the rear drive wheels, those rubber wheels run along the lawn because the weight of the mower is concentrated in those two spots. So from a standpoint of just appearance, it's going to look good, but you're going to be able, but I can look at a lawn and be like, I say, yeah, that was, that was cut with a true cut because you can tell by the way the stripes are that the, along the edges, there's going to be like, like parts where the grass is going to be noticeably lower. With a greens mower, you're not going to really see that. It's going to be just, it's going to look like just smooth and it's going to look like just a, hopefully this fixes it. All right. So let me go back to where I was as far as, uh, as far as questions where I left off. Um, so next up, we got Latanja Moore. She says, I have a ton of uh, moss this, this year. I need a top dress. I plan to get it done later in the season when it really starts to grow. <clears throat> yeah, there we go. We're back. Okay. I'm going to get it done in the season when it really starts to grow. Uh, you don't really have a question there, but um, <clears throat> as far as moss... The things that I would um, I would look for, Latanja, the things I would look for as far as moss goes in your lawn are if you have areas where it stays very damp, so the areas where it doesn't, the lawn doesn't drain, I would look into correcting that. And um, if you're, something else you can check is if you've not done a soil test and you can look for, um, look at your soil pH, if that tends to be a bit on the more acidic side, that also are conditions that, that can, um, that moss likes. So, those are things I would I would check. Um, in most cases, it's the first thing, meaning that the you have a lot of moisture and it's not you know the, the area isn't draining. So you can you can try to do something about it, or you can also wait until um, temps get warmer and then it you know it'll likely become less of an issue. But that's just something to um, to to consider. So it looks like we're back, guys. If you guys are back here in the live stream and you're seeing me. Give me a thumbs up that you can actually see me on the um, on the content. You can see me on the channel. Sorry about that. Not sure what happened. It was still going on YouTube and I think on um, everywhere else, but not sorry on um, on yeah on Facebook and everywhere else. But dropped on YouTube. We continue on. All right. Next up is AJ. He says my grass is half dormant. Should I wait to cut until it's all green? Not necessarily. No, not necessarily. Uh, I mean, if it's beginning to green up you can begin cutting it. Like I, you know, I've, I've cut my grass, I've cut my grass a couple of times when it was completely dormant. And now that it's beginning to green up, I am, I'm going to be mowing it more frequently. I already cut the front lawn once already. And then tomorrow, you know, weather permitting, I will cut the uh, the back lawn. So yeah, so yeah, you, it, it, you don't have to be 100% green before you get out there and you start mowing your lawn. You know what I mean? I would not, no, no, no reason to wait. You want to start training it early. If you're going to cut short, you want to start to say, listen, you know, grass, this is what you got to get used to. I'm going to be mowing you regularly here. It's going to be a couple of times a week. We're going to be keeping you a little bit shorter. And it's going to be like, okay, I get it. I got to start growing a little more laterally. I got you. I got you. So yeah, no, no, no worries. No, there's no reason to wait. Keep, uh, start cutting it um, as soon as you're seeing any green in it. Next up is It's Audacity. It says, um, hey, Ron, I'm in Macon. And I have uh, the 12024 ready to start the season. How soon should I put it down and start my spoon feeding program afterwards? I would wait until your the lawn is greening up. So if you if, if you look at the lawn and it's it's mostly green, like if you look at Papa Mo's Lowe's lawn, like look at this picture here, like that's that's getting close. Like I'd want it to be a little bit greener than that. But if it's when you start seeing the majority of the lawn is looking that way, then that's when you can start um, looking at introducing uh, fertilizer into your um, into your program. You know what I mean? So you know another. You're in Macon. Give it a couple more weeks. Give it a couple more weeks, and then you can, if you want to use the 12 24, 
you can, and um, you should be in in good shape. Should no be should be no problem whatsoever uh, with that. You're not that far off. Not that far off. A little bit a little bit more patience. A little bit more patience. Uh, next up is uh, Mike D says, uh, "LOL, I won't ever see it." Mary J is up next. She says, "Ron, I need your optimism. I can give you that. I can. That's that's easy. Optimism. I'm I'm good at giving that over." He says, "I seeded common Bermuda last year and treated uh, fall." And treated fall and this February with prodiamine. Okay, so you did you did come Bermuda last year. You did um, prodiamine in the fall and February. I like it. Like where we are so far. I've been reading recently that pre-emergent will keep the grass from spreading. Is this true? Yes, it can. It can. Um, or I should say this: if you over apply it, if you go with with um, heavy heavy rates of um, of prodiamine, it can cause what's called root clubbing. It can, which will prevent the 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 um the grass from spreading and from from tacking down in Bermuda I've not really seen that to be much of an issue Mary as long as you you stuck you stuck to the application rate so for Bermuda uh, point um point eight what's it called point eight it's really point eight three but call it point eight ounces you limited it to that much over the course of the year so if you did that you shouldn't have a problem in other words my lawn when I when this lawn was first established and it looked like horrible. It was it was established or it was sodded in December and it got pre-emergent um, in March timeframe. So just a few months later on, it got pre-emergent and it it grew in just fine. It established without any uh, any issues at all. So no, to answer your question, I wouldn't worry about it. If you have cool season grass, cool season grass, the recommendation is to is to wait a uh, year to give it a full year um, from the time you uh, you either seed a new lawn or put sod in before you use any kind of uh, pre-emergent on it. Bermuda is a lot more tolerant. So if you did it last year, you're good. You're good to go. I, w I wouldn't worry about it. Once it, we get some more heat around and you, know, you start feeding it and you start mowing it, it's going to take off with um, with no problem whatsoever. No, uh, no issues there. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it. Would not worry about it. Uh, next up, uh, Mike says, uh, <laughs> Mike, Ron asked me to deliver to you. I will let you know when I'm on the way. All right. Yeah, whatever. You guys, are, you guys are funny. You guys got jokes. I can't wait to get my Royal Stripes in. Listen, I don't even own a battery for this mower. So I can't even be tempted to cut with it. That's how much I, I intend to never really use this mower. So no, it, it, as far as Royal Stripes, I have the other outlet. I mean, you could say that that's kind of a Royal mower, right? And I cut with that. But as far as like the, the uh, that guy, nope. I couldn't even cut my lawn with it if I wanted to, unfortunately. So, uh, so yeah, so yeah, no, uh, no royal stripes from the Sterling. Next up, we got Jay Westbrook. He's back. He says Bermuda's starting to pop here in South Carolina, and I got great rain about an hour ago. Let's get growing so I could start mowing. I can't wait. You're not too far off. Enjoy this. Enjoy it. You have a little bit more free time left before you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to be out there. So. You know, and I know you guys are ready to get rearing, but soon you're going to have to be out there doing it. So uh, don't um, don't be in too much of a rush. Don't be in too much of a rush. Next up is Justin Judkins. He says, sprayed prodiamine mid-February. Would spraying dithiapir now be overkill? In my opinion, yes. I would not. You just There's really no reason to apply prodiamine, to apply one pre-emergent like a month ago, like like a few weeks ago, and then to turn around and apply another pre-emergent like here now in early March. If you applied prodiamine at the um, at the recommended rates, you know, then you're you're good to go. You, there's no reason to really introduce prodiamine uh, dithiap here right now. Now, here's the thing: if you are say you're doing a split app, right? So say you did like a um, a lighter rate, a lighter rate of prodiamine last month, and then in April. You want to go do use dithiapir again at a lighter rate, not the full rate. So you're you're kind of using you're doing the split app type um, program, but you're using two different pre-emergence like that. Less bad. Like that would be that I wouldn't have. I'd have less of a problem with. But I would not do prodiamine last month and then turn around this month and then go do dithiapir. If if anything, prodiamine now and again assuming this assumes you didn't apply prodiamine at at a, at a high rate if you did like a, a a lower rate like a application rate that would be suitable for split applications so for bermuda like um 0 .40, 0 0.40 ounces over a thousand square feet and you want to go with dithiapir in late march early april time frame again at a reduced rate i would have that would be that would be okay um, but I can tell you, like, I don't ever do split apps. I do a, I do one pre-emergent application in late January, early February, and I do one pre-emergent application in 
uh, late August, early September, and that's it. I do two a year. I don't, I don't, I mean, I'm sure split them. I, there are some merits to doing split applications. Um, I see a lot of people with cool season lawns doing split apps. For me, for warm season grass, I one one app has produced great results for me. I have not really seen the need to um, to do uh, to to have to, to be out there twice with um, with, with pre emergent. Okay, next up is let me see here. We got a, a super chat from um, Mike. No, that already already did that one. <laughs> Where you had jokes. Next up is JC one zero five, where they're saying. Here in Northeast Georgia, I overseeded my Bermuda with rye grass this past fall. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds like fun. How soon should I spray it out? Will certainty work? Um, should you, when should you spray it out? This month. I would get rid of it in March. As far as, you know what, let me check and see the label. I know the, the most common, um, the herbicide that, that some friends of mine that do exactly what you're doing, that take care of um, of some baseball fields in this area, like this area, Snellville area, uh, use they use Celsius. They use Celsius to get rid of ryegrass this time of year. Certainty might work as well. I believe it's labeled. It's likely labeled to also take care of um, as ryegrass. Let me let me look on the on the label for certainty really quick, and I'll tell you. I'm fairly I'm fairly certain that it will kill ryegrass. I just don't know. Um, I just don't know how well of a job it will it will do. I mean, cel the, the thing is, Celsius is um, is what is what all my friends that do that that do what you're doing regularly use. Certainty. I mean, it's going to be a whole bunch of do not spray this on ryegrass. Do not uh, yeah, <laughs> do not spray this on ryegrass. This will kill ryegrass. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. So he says, yeah, don't. No, I don't. I, I think you're gonna. I, I would use I would use um, I would use Celsius. I'm looking here at the um, the label. It, it looks it looks like it can be. It says for transitioning from overseeded perennial ryegrass, uh, you go out at a heavier rate. I mean, I need, I need to read the label to, say, to give you good advice um, to, to 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 be certain. But looking here, there is some guidance. There is some guidance. JC one hundred and five. There's some guidance in here in the label around um, getting rid of um, of ryegrass. So apparently, you can. Apparently, you can. So like section, if you're looking at the label, look at um, eight point seven. Like that portion in there speaks about um, about getting rid of uh, of, of ryegrass with uh, with uh, with certainty. So yeah, but. Every woman I know does do not does not use certainty. They use Celsius. So there is that. But it looks like there, there is some um, there is some guidance for doing exactly what you're trying to do with it. So if you want to give it a shot, by all means, especially if you if you already have certainty and you want to try it, uh, by all means, go for it. Just read the label and follow the application rates. It looks like it's on the higher end of um, what it's saying. So 1.25 to two ounces per acre. So um, that's like a, that's on the higher end of what it would um, what you need to use it. Uh, it's, it's, it's giving the same application rate that you would use for Poanua, not the rate that is a lot lower for uh, for sedges. So check the label out, um, and uh, and if you decide to go with that, let me know how it works out for you. All right, next is John Feather. He has a question. He says, after I kill Poa, will it always come back? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. So uh, I will tell you this: there, there are things you can do to reduce it. So if you um, if you use a good pre-emergent in the fall, so something like two options that will work well: you can use prodiamine, simazine, and amazoquin. That combination is very good for controlling poa, preventing it in your lawn. A even better option is to use a post-emergent herbicide. I'm oh, sorry, not post-emergent. <laughs> post-emergent. A pre-emergent called uh, Spectacle Flow. Like this is this is about as good as you can get for keeping POA out of warm season turf. The areas that you, if you're gonna get any kind of breakthrough, so in other words, even if you use Spectacle, which you really shouldn't get too much, but if even if you use this, the areas where you may get a little bit of POA here and there are areas of your lawn that stay wet. So if you have a downspout, like it, that, that water drains from your roof and the water settles in that area, that's a section of your lawn where you might get some POA, um, even if you use Spectacle or you use a um, that, that 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 trifecta, that uh, Prodiamine, um, Princep, and um, Amazequin combination. But in general, if you use this on your lawn one time in the fall, you're not going to have an issue with POA. Near, not not nearly as what you're used to to dealing with. So um, so hope that helps. And, and at this point in the game. 
you really are stuck with using post-emergent herbicides like um, like certainty to get rid of it. You know, what I mean, in other words, once you see it, you're not gonna like Spectacle's not gonna do a whole lot for you once it's already here. You're gonna have to be stuck with using um, a post-emergent herbicide. But if you use if you use a good pre-emergent in the fall, that can that will do a lot for reducing the amount of poa that you're gonna have to be dealing with come um, come springtime. Like in my lawn, I don't have any. I don't have a lot of ears. I don't have really any poa in my in my lawn. You know, I did one application of Spectacle in the fall. There's a video on it. You guys can check it out. And um, yeah, I haven't had any poa in my lawn all season long. So, so there is that. Good pre-emergent will help prevent uh, will help prevent poa. Will help prevent poa. Next up is No Name. He says, uh, so two days ago, I went to inspect the yard and I saw signs of moles. Ooh, that's not good. That's no bueno. I smashed the tunnels down and purchased a mole poison. Now I'm just waiting for a new tunnel. Boo on moles or voles or gophers. Yeah, they're all bad. Moles, voles, gophers, chipmunks, anything that digs and burrows in your lawn, not fun, not cool, right? I get it. I get it. I mean, you know, if you want to also apply some, um, you want to further discourage them, take away their food source, you want to apply some acelaprin, that's a good option. That's something as well to, to, to do. Uh, you know, that's that's a good option. I mean, it's not, it's not targeting the moles directly, but it is targeting their food source, which is, again, between the poisons and you physically, like, smashing down their tunnels, all, all those things will help encourage them to go somewhere else, right? So there is that. Stay the course, man. I've been there. Moles are no fun. I don't like moles. Oh, horrible. All right, next up is Philip Hong. He says, okay, so we get some more clarity. He says, okay, apologies. I meant that I want to lower the high spots to be level with the sidewalk. I don't want my lawn to be higher than the sidewalk. Okay, so if you want to do that, Philip, the, the, the way really is to, um, I mean, you could use like a sod cutter and peel the sod back. You can, you can, you can like, Lift the sod, peel it back, remove, literally the only way to do is really to move, remove some material and then set it back down. I mean, that's an option. If it bugs you that much, you're, the only way to really get the, the area that is higher than the sidewalk to be lower is to remove like some topsoil. So you can use, again, like a, um, like a sod cutter to, to, again, to like cut the sod, peel, like lift it, roll it back, remove some of the material and then set it back down and then... Voila, you've got, you know, your your side is going to be more even with the uh, with the sidewalk. You're probably going to have the top dress after that anyway, because it's not like when after you remove it and you do the side cutting, that's going to go back perfectly smooth. Um, but if that's your goal, that was one way you could, that's one method you can use to to reduce the, um, to reduce the, the how, how high your lawn is. I mean, there's only one way. You got to, you got to remove material, you know, so that's uh it's up to you to decide whether that's that's really worth it there are some, I'll, I'll tell you there are some benefits to your grass being higher than the sidewalk there are some benefits to that like if you're I don't, i'm not sure if you're real mowing but if you are real mowing like what happens then is if this is the lawn and then this my hand here is the sidewalk you're actually able to hang the mower off just a little bit and you're able to cut you know right right up to the edge Whereas if it's like this, this is the grass, this is the sidewalk, or let's do it the other way around. This is the sidewalk and this is the grass to where now the sidewalk is higher. Like you're gonna be limited for how close you can get the mower to the sidewalk. Like the wheels are gonna, are gonna stop you or, you know, or like the, some part of the frame is gonna stop you. So you're gonna be weeding or edging along, along there to kind of get that grass cut. So there are some benefits. Like I, if I had a choice, I'd almost prefer for the grass to be higher than the sidewalk than the sidewalk to be higher than the grass. Another reason being is that you, as far as like drainage problems, you're a lot less likely to have those kind of problems, right? Because if you have, again, the sidewalk's higher, you got this concrete barrier higher, you get a lot of heavy rainfall, you literally have a border that's gonna help that water sit there and pool. Whereas if it's slightly higher, it's a little bit, not too much, a little bit higher, then as far as it drains, some of that water can drain off into the sidewalk on the driveway and, and get rid of it. So if I had to choose one, if it were me, I would, I would choose to have what you already have. I don't want it to be higher than lower. I, I would not want my lawn to be lower than the sidewalk. I want it to either be even or just slightly higher than um, than lower. So just, I mean, I know you didn't ask that, but just consider that as well as an option. I mean, you might be you might be changing one thing, but then creating another problem that you didn't necessarily account for. So just uh, just something else to consider. Next up is Scary Pepper. 
Scary Peeper. <laughs> he says, hey, Ron, uh, happy Friday. I am in zone 7B, and I mowed my tiff tuff down to half an inch. Sounds good. Did I go too low too early? Already seeing some green up, but worried about damage if it gets cold again. Thank you. Nope, you're going to be fine. It's going to be going to be you'll be just fine. I'll tell you, like last um, I've, I've tested this. So last year, that's not true. We're in 2023. Time flies when you get older, guys. So not from 2021 to 2022. In the season of 2021, I maintained the lawn at just under half an inch. And it stayed at half an inch the entire time into dormancy. And it wasn't until 2022 that I went up to three quarters of an inch. So it went into dormancy at that height and it stayed at that height um, and um, throughout, throughout dormancy. And in 2021, we got cold weather, we got snow um, for a day or two and the lawn was just fine. So I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't worry about it too much as far, especially this late in the season's um, scary peeper. We are at, um, we're into March. So you're going to be, you're going to be just fine. I, w I wouldn't worry about it. You know, I wouldn't worry about it. If you were in, oh, I don't know, a state, if you were like in Virginia, like Northern Virginia or like Northwestern Virginia, and there was still a chance of you getting some snow and you had Bermuda grass and you, you know, you decided you were going to go down to half an inch. Maybe it's a bit early for there. You might risk there being a chance of, of damage, but Bermuda is really hardy. You, it's, it's really, it's very difficult to hurt Bermuda grass. It really is. So, uh, so yeah, I, I wouldn't worry about it. I think you're going to be just fine. Just, just, just fine. All right, next up, we got Tom B. He says, happy Friday. He says, how many soil test kits do you use for a lawn your size? I got two for 13,000 square feet. What if my yard has tall pines on one side? Will that throw off the measurements? I use one. I use one over my entire my entire lawn. So I use I take um take nine samples from the back, two from the swale, and then three from the front lawn. So uh, that's that is how um that is how I do it. I use one that represents the entire lawn, and uh, and that works well. What I would do is this, Tom, is you have to, so if especially if you're new to to soil testing and you're worried about exactly what you're talking about that there might be a nutrient difference between one area of your lawn that has like pine cones or whatever, or in, an, in another area, use two different test kits. Test, you know, the one area that you're concerned about and then test the rest of the lawn with the other kit and then compare the results. And what you can do is you can, um, you can adjust what you're using for as far as inputs for that part of the lawn that you are um, worried about or that whatever the differences are. And then eventually, you know, after, I mean, after maybe a season or two, you should be able to get to the point where you're able to use one kit that represents the entire lawn close enough. You know what I mean? That, that, that that's a, that's a better, it's a better representation. So it's, it's your call. Uh, I use one over my entire lawn and I, I get good results with it. Same thing with Alex. We use one for his entire lawn and, um, and you're good to go. It's it's really more if you have reason, kind of like what you're what you're talking about. If you have reason to think that the soil in one section, for environmental reasons like big trees or whatever else it might be, um, could could make that different than the rest, then yes, use two different soil test kits. Verify whether that's the case or not. Treat it accordingly, and then you should be able to, to slowly move towards um, towards using one test kit. And then and then really what you want, what you could do then is if every other year, you want to take samples from two different from different spots just to see, hey, are they still you know jiving? Are they still playing nice together? As far as what I'm thinking for nutrient levels, you could do that, um, or you could do a soil test every single time in both locations. There's people that do that. There, there are people that whenever they email me a soil test, they literally have there's like the backyard sample and the front yard sample, and it happens every single time. So it depends on you whether or not you want to um, to do that. There's nothing nothing wrong with uh, with going that route either. So, but in my case, I use one. Next up is uh, Demarculus uh, Thompson. He says, uh, uh, Mirachi Green pesticide and fogger received. Going to be a fun weekend. Nice. Yeah, you're going to like it, man. I mean, you'll find it smell. It's a nice smelling product. Using it with a fogger is really cool. Like you can spray literally everything outside, your shrubs, your patio, Furniture, downspouts. I mean, anywhere where you might where you might see mosquitoes, like if you like near your downspouts, like I would spray those as well too. The side of the house, like anywhere where water might pool, spray it. Spray your lawn. You can spray everything with that with that stuff. Um, it, it's you, it's not encouraged to spray it indoors, not because that it's necessarily toxic or anything. It's because some of the um, the oils and and uh, some of the ingredients can be a bit slippery and it can be like a slipping hazard. So they 
they say, yeah, don't spray it indoors for that reason. But if you had like an area of your, like you had like a basement or a crawl space and you wanted to use it in there, you you could if you wanted to. But in general, indoors, you want to keep it out of indoors because it's um, it gets, it gets kind of slippery. So that's why it's labeled for outdoor use. But it's a great product, man. You're gonna like it. So it's it's a, it's far as um, what it's designed to take care of: mosquitoes, like the white flies, um, gnats. I mean, roaches. It's it's a it's a really good product, and it's non toxic. So that's another another benefit as well. Next up is uh, say is sides said. I just did a soil test myself. Very good. I like it. That's always a good thing. Soil testing is is good. It's a great way to save money and maximize your results in your lawn care program. Okay, next up is Clint Brock. He says, got that true cut. No tread on wheels, but good to go otherwise. Three years of push mowing is over. So you've graduated, you've upgraded. We got to clap it up. We got to use applause for that. Uh, rained yesterday and got some gnarly wheel marks today. Hashtag too eager. Yeah, so that so there you go. See, that's it. That's what I'm talking about. So because the weight of the, of the true cut, and I'm not, not bashing true cut, because it's a great mower. Love mine. Um, is concentrated to like two areas. You will notice that uh, that, that especially if you're mowing a like a wet lawn um, or just if you just mow a lot, you're going to notice like some tire marks in you know in in the on the outside the borders of the stripes. You know, but that's that's all part of it. Just mow your varying pa- or vary your mowing pattern each time, and it's going to be a lot less notable noticeable, Clint. But congrats, man! Congrats on the mower. I get it. Going from a from a push mower to a true cut is a game changer. All right, next up is Tom uh, Hoffenkamp. He says, surface tension is like skin on a grape. It helps hold the water droplets together. Yep. Very true, Tom. And then next up for... Uh, next up, you'll see Jason Sewell. He says, sorry for the typo. My soil test kit said to use a 1776. I don't see that combo in the store. How crucial is it to follow that recommendation? So what it's showing is it says to follow, it looks like a higher nitrogen fertilizer, um, a little bit of potassium, and a little bit of phosphorus. So, I mean, if you don't mind, Jason, send me your soil test results, um, like uh, ron at golfcourselawn.com. Uh, I would say the, um, the, the, the complete, the 14714 is a good substitute for that. So if you're, so instead of using that, I mean, again, send me the results, I'll look at them and I'll, I'll tell you what um, tell you what I think. But if you wanted to use something that instead of that, this is a um, is a good option. It has a little bit less nitrogen, a little bit more potassium and the, and the phosphorus is spot on. Uh, but this is what I would use in place of, um, you know, of that if you wanted to use something on the golf course lawn store, one of the products from, um, from Lebanon, so. So I hope that helps. But also send me, just email me the soil test results. I'll look at them and I'll tell you. All right, next up is um, Jason. He says, because I was hoping to get something from the store with a smaller size versus the larger size of the recommended 1776. Yeah, so if you're going to do that, the complete, the 14714 is what I would go with. That is, uh, that is what, that is what I, I, would, um, I would use. Again, send me the soil test results. I'll look at them and I'll, I'll confirm for you. Um, but that is... Based on what you're telling me there, again, I haven't seen your, your soil test results. That is what I would use, the 14714 um, in place of that. All right, next up is Tavo M. He says, hey, Ron, is Carbon Pro G the same as Release Zero? It is not. It is not. Well, one, well obviously, one is granular, one is liquid. He says, I ordered the Carbon Kit just wondering if adding Carbon Pro G would be too much of the same thing. No. So... Carbon Pro G is um, two products really. It's it's um, it's biochar, and it's charged biochar because there's a difference. So if you guys want to geek out on biochar, check out um, check out the Soil Labs recent video. They did a really cool video on biochar on 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 charge on non charged biochar, and um, so Carbon Pro G is charged biochar, meaning that whenever you apply it, it is a net giver. It you know doesn't take away from the soil. It's half that, and then it's also half compost. It's a compost and um, biochar product. There's also a, a, a bacteria or a microbial package that's added to it as well. Release Zero is a um, is a 10% micronized carbon. So it is it is it is like if you take biochar and micronize it, get it down to like 400 dalton, which I know doesn't mean anything to you, but you can make it small enough to where it can be it can be sprayed. That is what Release Zero is. It is 10%. Um, micronized carbon along with other um, st- other biostimulants. So it's like a you can think of it as as um, 
Miramichi Green calls it a catalyst. So anything that you would mix it with, it's going to help improve the nutrient uptake. So you mix it with fertilizer, uh, so with liquid fertilizer, herbicides, fungicides. Um, I mix it with Primo. I mix it with everything that I that I anytime I spray my lawn. The only thing I don't mix, I don't ever use it with is um, when I do pre when I do um, uh, pre emergent. But you could you could if you wanted to. It's not gonna hurt anything. Um, so they're different. One, um, one is a compost biochar product. One is a liquid micronized carbon product along with other biostimulants as well. So, they're, so they are different. The two are complementary, not, they don't compete with each other. <coughs> so using, and to ask your question, if using one, if using both of them would be too much, the answer is no. I, I do that practically every month because I don't use Carbon Pro G, I use Essential G, um, but I use Essential G and I use, um, either release zero or I use 901C, which is basically release zero with fertilizer. And when I apply those to my, I spray those on my lawn whenever, like this time of year when it's starting to wake up and it's starting to grow, um, that is what I do throughout the entire growing season. So to answer your question, no, you can spray them. You can you can do bo use both of them together. Uh, you're not gonna hurt anything. Not gonna hurt anything at all. All right, next up is uh, Tom Hoffenkamp. He says, science guy talking about surfactant, uh, liquids, AKA water are very cohesive. So this is Tom, I guess he's a scientist. He says, the molecules stick best to themselves. Water makes the balls, AKA little drop, drop, droplets because of this. Also involved is, um, I don't have anything else from you, Tom. I just like you fizzled out. I don't have, um, I don't have the, I don't have the rest of your, um, rest of your, your comment, unfortunately. Cause it was interesting. It was an interesting read. All right, well, um, you also said that service, talk about service tension. So yeah, okay, well, th thanks for chiming in, Tom. I appreciate that. And I, I didn't see the second half of your comment. So we'll have to we'll have to save it for next week or later on if you uh, if you finish it up. All right, T. Beck says, what would you use to kill POA? I would use, depends on what you have. If you have, um, if you're talking about warm season grass, if you're talking about Bermuda or Zoysia or pretty much anything other than cool season uh, uh, lawns, I would use certainty and I would use certainty and surfactant and I need to actually start doing this because I would say I would just use certainty assuming that you guys know surfactant is necessary as well I would use these two I would use certainty um which is the actual herbicide and I would use surfactant which is what makes this work better so these two would work together to um to kill POA in warm season grass if you have cool season grass you can use tenacity you can use tenacity with surfactant you can use that against POA in cool season turf so warm season turf Certainty, surfactant, um, cool season turf, tenacity, and surfactant. So it depends on which one of those you uh, you uh, you have. So hope that helps. Oh man, sorry guys on um, on uh, on um, on on Instagram. I just got I just got uh, booted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share it for you guys. I'm going to share it now, and uh, I'll just restart the stream. So give me if you're on Instagram. Sorry, I'll restart it. We got to four hours and that's like the limit of, uh, of Instagram streaming, right? Kind of weird. All right, uh, so yes, that helps um, uh, T-Beck certainty for warm season, Celsius for cool season. Hope uh, that helps. All right, next up is um, Barry Allen. He says, I'm a bagger. I will never go back to mulching. You know, I get that. A lot of people that bag their clippings tend to say that. Like once you start bagging your clippings, you really don't want to go back to, um, you really don't want to go back to mulching, and I uh, I get it. I get it. Uh, from an appearance standpoint, it's a night and day difference. It really does. It really does make a, a noticeable difference in the appearance of the lawn. So I get, I get why people don't want to go back to, to mulching after you um, you start bagging your clippings. For me, the only negative or the only hassle to um, to bagging clippings is. Uh, is the fact that you have to get rid of it. And I, I get I have a big pro, I have a big lawn, so it's a lot to have to get rid of. But outside of that, there's not really not really any negatives, you know what I mean? So good stuff. Instagram folk, I'll be back here in a second. It's it's uh it's it's uploading that current video and I'll restart the stream again. So sorry about that. It happens. All right, next up is Two Trilla. He says, um, hey Ron, where would I find a second quick attachment for the Yard Mastery backpack sprayer? That's a good question. So what you can get one of those from Flow Zones website. So let me find it here really quick and I'll get a link for you. Um, I'll, I'll find it here for you under accessories and quick connect adapters. So here, this guy here, you can make one too, but this is a direct link to that two Trilla. So let me see here at, let's see here at two Trilla, at two Trilla and um, quick 
connect attachment. Uh, there you go. So you can get one there. All right, Instagram, we're coming back. Let me um, restart here again, another live, and there we go, and we're live. Okay, coming back. So so yes, you can get one there uh, to Trilla, and it's, that's actually a good thing, because I actually have two of them, right? Because I bought one of them, actually that's not true, I was given one of them by a viewer, and then the Yard Mastery came with one of those quick attached connections, so I have one that, that pretty much my Flojet tip lives on, and I have another one that my Folio tip lives on. So literally I just have to like just, just change the quick connects. So having two is kind of nice. I get why you would um why you'd want to do that. All right, so we have a super chat here from the notorious LG. He's back here. It's not quite enough to get him a show sponsor, but it does not matter because we're glad to have him back. Super chat received. He's I'm supposed to be enjoying life in the Bahamas right now, but all I can think of is catching the Ron Henry show, first world problems. Well, at least hopefully you are. You're in the Bahamas, which is kind of cool, and hopefully you've got a nice beverage that you're enjoying, maybe something with an umbrella in it, and uh, and living that life, man, relaxing uh, on your vacation. I appreciate you even on the live sh on the uh, on your vacation, LG, taking the time to, to pop in. You gotta you gotta realize, man, you were missed last week. I'm not sure if you were like just lurking last week, but you were missed. People were asking where is he? You know, um, Doug was looking for you. A couple of people were looking for you, and, uh, and yeah, so I'm glad to see that you're back. Glad you made it safe. And I appreciate all the support. And just for you, while I look for the next question, I'll even put on some Tango Bolero. Only because it's you. Only because it's you. All right, so next up, we have Mark Rom Romano. What's going on, Mark? Mark is up, he says, Aloha, Ron, I'm just here lurking. That's okay, Mark. That's no, no worries at all with just lurking. You're still here. Appreciate having you uh, watching the content. Um, let's see here, a uh, better view for the Sterling. <laughs> there you go, there's a better view if you guys want that. All right. Uh, yep, so thanks for coming to hang out. And um, uh, Jimmy uh, Thigpen says, um, I know you love Miramichi, but it's expensive. What generic products do you recommend? So here's the thing, Jimmy, I actually don't, don't, don't uh, I don't actually consider the Miramichi products to be expensive because if you look at the application rates, if you look at, um, like how much of the product you can use over a thousand square feet, it's actually a lot less expensive than, um, than the products that you will find at, definitely more less expensive than products you'll find at the big box stores. Now, the initial purchase price might be more, but the cost per application, it's not even in the same universe. It's, much, it's actually quite a bit less expensive. Good example, if you look at some liquid, let's say even some other liquid um, products, right? So leather liquid lawn care products, like they'll have application rates of, you know, of 10, 12 ounces, with a gallon of water over a thousand square feet. So they're a lot higher as far as application rates. You take like the Release Zero, Nutri-Kelp, uh, 901C, any of those products, like the application rate is like literally two ounces to seven ounces mixed with a gallon of water. And I tell everyone to stick with that look to the lower end of that. I've, I've tested it at like two ounces, and I've tested it at seven ounces, and you get a good result either way. So two to three ounces per thousand square feet is what I recommend that most people use, saves you some money, and you still get a, a great result. So if you compare the, the price of the product um, with a, again, like the, you're right, the, the, the bottles themselves are more expensive than you're gonna find at Home Depot or even other online DIY options, um, but the cost per application is, is less. Is less, and I and I would argue for me, I would argue uh, the formulation is really good. It's a better product. Like you, you look at you get any of the products from Miramichi. Um, there's no chunks in them. They're all like really finely screened. I mean, it's just a really, it's a, it's just a, it's just you get what you pay for. Is this what I, is what I would say. Um, as far as generics, I don't really. I don't really have, I, don't, I can't, there's not really any, there's, there's nothing that I can recommend that is going to replace the products from, um, from Miramichi Green, especially in the liquids. I mean, the granulars are some products that are, com that are somewhat, that are somewhat comparable, but they, but the, the products that are comparable, a good example. So if you don't want to use Essential G, uh, you could go get Humachar, but Humachar is more expensive. It's quite a bit more expensive than Essential G and Essential G has more ingredients in it. You know what I mean? So if you are comparing compa um, if you are comparing comparable products, it is like uh, it's really hard to beat the pricing from Miramichi. Their products are are good. They um, and they are they are competitive. They're at the same or less than um, equally comparable products. You can't compare them though to like Home Depot products because there's just different 
It's a different, it's a different universe. You're comparing professional products that are designed for the professional turf industry for products that are, that are developed or designed for DIY. And the DIY products are more expensive per application than the um, the Miramichi products. So, um, so that's that's what I would say. That's why there's not really any generics that I recommend because I don't think that even if there were generics, they would be as good value as what you get from the products from Miramichi. So, hope that helps, um, and uh, maybe it'll help you reconsider or you know take a second look at their um, at their products because I'm a I'm a huge fan of them. They're good. They're they're really good stuff. All right, next up is Tom Hoffenkamp. He is back. He says, happy Friday, y'all. Um, may patience be with us all waiting for the warm weather. Early spring is not in SoCal this year, bruh. I don't know, you and Jim, you guys must live in different parts of SoCal because Jim, his lawn never went dormant and you're in SoCal too. And you're saying that your lawn is, well, you didn't say it was dormant, but you're just saying that it, the warm weather isn't there. So you guys must live in different parts of SoCal, I guess. Maybe you're in Northern SoCal compared to him. All right, next up is uh, Mary J. She says, um, LG used it first. Uh, yes. Um, yep, so we, yeah, so I, Mary J. I said, so yes, uh, LG, Mary J was ahead of you on the Super Chats, but I mean, I guess you were traveling, so we'll have to make allowances for that. And then next up is um, Doug 350Z he says, oh no, sorry, my car just broke down. <laughs> Uh, no worries, uh, 350Z. Uh, that happens. It's a tuner car. I mean, if I'm looking at your, your, if your handle is the car you drive, that car was not built by Nissan. So it's a, by definition, it's a tuner car, which means probably a little bit less reliable, right? All right, so next up is Papa Mo's Low. Uh, he says, two trillers spoke with, uh, spoke to your um, uh, wife the other day when ordering my leveling, which from Super Sod. Very nice lady. Okay, that's cool. Uh, that's cool. Very, very cool. Uh, nice. I didn't know that um, your wife works at Supersod. That's cool. Very, very nice, uh, Tutrello. I did not know this. Small world. Small world. No no wonder No wonder that you are also are so much into, uh, into lawn care. Makes sense now. All right, next up is Higgy Pop. Higgy Pop says, uh, should I drop the triple tent fertilizer after my scalp or drop the fertilizer after aerating and putting down leveling sand? My plan was to scalp and drop triple ten, and then in April, aerate and drop the 1648 fertilizer. So, what I would say, Higgy, is if you want to uh, scalp, uh, if you want to scalp and then fertilize, assuming your lawn is starting to green up after the scalping work, that sounds like a good plan for me. By the time you get ready to do your fer your uh, leveling work, so it sounds like April time frame, maybe late April time frame, it'll be time to feed the lawn again, and then you can do your aeration and your fertilizing and your lawn leveling. That is what I would do. So I would scalp once the lawn greens up, fertilize enjoy life, enjoy like the slower growing and mow your lawn and make it look nice and get everything all set up. And then then for your next fertilization, which will be closer to the time when you're gonna be doing your leveling work, that's when you can do your aeration and your leveling and your fertilizer application. As far as sequencing for the second one, um, you would aerate, fertilize, and then top dress. For the first one, you would scalp, <clears throat> you would scalp and then you would apply your fertilizer, your triple ten fertilizer. So, um, so yeah, that's the order that I would do them in because between, um, yeah, I mean, unless, unless your lawn is just not greening up at all just yet and your first feeding of the season is going to be in April, I would get your scalp done and then, and then, you know, give it a, give it a, a fertilizer to wake it up if you want to do that. There's no, no problem with that at all. All right. Next up is, uh, G Free says, Ron, that's a great soil test kit. My soil, yep, I like my, I like them. That's why I recommend them. They are good. And then uh, next up is uh, no name saying, stop, Robert Rainey. I don't want it. I guess he's getting one from. I was just talking about the mower. All right. Next up here is a super chat. We got one from Doug through Z Twin Turbo. Thank you so much, super Doug. Appreciate you. Received. He says, um, car broke down delivering uh, my. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Sterling, uh, no more 350Z, uh, P992, uh, and Twin Turbo V8 F150. Nice, nice. You upgraded. You, you, you're you moving up in the world, man. Sounds good, Mike. So you moved away from the, from the uh, tuner cars. Okay. All right. I see you. Sounds good. All right. Now the, now the fun part is always finding where I left off. All right. We're back. So Dwayne's Royal has a question. He says, Ron, 100 degree temps. Three quarters of an inch height of cut, plant growth regulator, your guess on mowing frequency per week to maintain. Um, so if you're gonna do PGR, uh, um, at 100 degree temps, three times per week, 
three times per week, Dwayne. So, I mean, every other day, that every other day um, is what you're, is likely what you're looking at, is what I would, um, that would be my uh, my guess. That would be my guess. If you, even under regulation, uh, I would say three times per week. It also depends on what you're on your fertilization program too. Like how much, um, like how are you feeding the lawn? You know what I mean? If you're backing off on how much nitrogen you're giving it, which would be a good idea at 100 degree temps, uh, you maybe can get away with two with two mows, but really three, I believe, is what you're going to need to stick to 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 maintain a nice appearance, uh, you know, over with, given those conditions. So, next up is Rusty's creation. He says, "Hey Ron, full send on my first program in South Texas. Granular liquids went down on the first. Nice, I, I, sounds good. The earthway I bought last year has been awesome. Anyone with a smaller lawn, check out the 2600A. Yep, I uh, I'm with you, Rusty. I am a huge fan." of the Earthway broadcast spreaders. They are pretty awesome. And uh, yeah, I mean, they're they're a great prosumer spreader. And I'm checking here on Instagram. Guys, we got my soil in the uh, in the house. My soil testing in the house uh, here on on the gram. We got uh, Sam McQueen, Brody, uh, Moro's here. Very cool. Um, let's see here. Mike uh, Din87 had a question. He says, any thoughts on tribute total? Uh, so from what I understand, tribute total as a as a post-emergent herbicide that's good against Dallas grass to help, to, it's not gonna kill it, but to help like knock it back to control to where it becomes just less of a pain. Um, that is the that is a use case that I have heard where I've heard tribute total being used the most. Um, outside of that, it's kind of um Outside of Dallas grass, I'm trying to think of what else you would use tribute total for because that's literally when I've asked my buddies about it, they're like, yeah, it's expensive, but if you've got some Dallas grass and you want to help control it a little bit, that's what you can use. But even they say the best thing is to dig it out. So I, I've never used tribute total myself, um, Mike. I might, you never know, I might get a, I can get a container of it and try it out and see, but it's, um, it's not, it is not inexpensive. It is not inexpensive. And, um, you know, the, the people that I hear about using it for the most, it's, it's when they're trying to target uh, Dallas grass in a warm season, in a warm season lawn. Let's see what else we got here. Papa Bo's Low is here. He's double dipping and uh, my soul testing. Cool guys. Thanks for coming to hang out. Appreciate you guys in, uh, in the live stream. You got a better look of the, uh, of the Sterling here in the background. All right. So good stuff, Rusty. Sounds like you're doing it right. Keep me posted on as far as how the lawn develops. And uh, with that, with everything you're doing, being that you're in South Texas, I, I imagine, you know, temps are warmer. So you are ready to go. You're raring to go. Uh, 350Z says, speaking of LG, I haven't seen him since I dropped that, super, that mega super chat. Hope that um, was his internet bill money. You guys need to be nice. LG's back. He dropped a super chat. He's here. He's just been off doing other things. Here's the thing. You got to realize, when just like you guys, LG graces us with his presence. It's not like he has to come here. You know, He has other things he can do on a Friday night outside of hang out with us, and maybe he had other stuff to do. This it sounds like he was traveling now to, um, to Bahamas, which... Pretty good reason to not be here, to be late. It's a good reason to be absent, right? I get it. All right, so we got a couple more Super Chats here. We got, uh, took care of Doug through Z's already, but we have another one here from Mr. Dalvin Larry. Thank you so much, Dalvin. Received. He says, hey, Ron, I pre-scalped earlier this week, but now uh, that I have, <laughs> but now that I have the new toy, I'm thinking of turf raking before doing my, my final scalp. Thoughts? Also, I need to pick your brain on how often to verticut and turf rake. Okay, so here's what I would do. Under no circumstances would I scalp with a new mower. So if you, I would not do that. We're not doing that. So you, the mower you used to scalp with, if you want to scalp again, by all means, go for that. What I would do is this: you could, you can turf rake, but if it were me, what I would do, um, Dalvin, is I would, I would do your scalp, and then, or you, or you do this. You, you could turf rake now if you wanted to, but that's kind of unnecessary because you're going to do it again anyway. You could do your, you could do another scalp if you want. And then turf rake and do, a, I mean, a couple of rounds of turf raking. Like one round is not going to get everything up. So um, I would do your, your scalp to get the height of cut where you want it. And then do like multiple rounds of turf raking. That's going to clean up a lot of the stuff that fell that, that did not go into the grass catcher. And in general, it's going to prepare the lawn. Um, and then you're good to go. If you want to do a cleanup cut after that, that is not scalping. Like, you know, if you want to bump the height of cut of the mower up a little bit, um, that will be fine. It's going to have, it's going to give you a nice appearance after all the turf raking is done from your last scalping. And then you're good to go. Um, as far as how often to turf rake, once your once the lawn is greened up and you're regularly mowing, I would say once per week is good. Uh, that is what I do. And then as far as verticutting, you should not need to verticut until really the end of May. Like once the lawn is, has, has, uh, start, is starting to thicken up, 
that's when you can start introducing the verticutter regularly. You know, once per once per month is really all you're going to need, and uh, that's going to that's going to help thin the line out a little bit to where it still looks nice, stripes nice. You're not going to um, have any cutting or scalping problems from it getting too thick. So turf raking, there's really not a limit on that. You can do it as often as you want, but once per week, I find produces a good result and. It, to where you're not out there pretty much twice as long. So you're not out there like turf raking the entire lawn once and then out cutting the lawn afterwards. So once per week is good. Uh, once you have all the debris cleaned out and uh, verticutting once per month is um, is good. So once per week on the turf raking, once per month on the verticutting. What I could tell you is this, if you are trying, now here's a little secret, here's a little secret now. I mean, there's not that many people in here, so it'll just be you, me, and the other 100 people in here, okay? If you're trying to, let's say that like 4th of July is rolling around, right? If you want to get that domination, the stripe action, like really popping, what you can do is this, and you can just say this for this for the special mows, is say so you got company coming over on like um, tomorrow. Well, not tomorrow. So say Sunday. What you could do is on the mow tomorrow, you could turf rake before. That's going to help comb the grass in that direction, really help burn those stripes or set those stripes in, and then do your cut afterwards over the same direction, over the same pattern that you just turf rake. That's going to really make the stripes pop even better than just the mowing. So that's something to keep in, and keep in mind. Turf raking does really help improve that stripe action because it's literally combing the grass, encouraging it to grow in the direction that you're making that pass in. So that's a little, little, little pro tip for you there for you to get that stripe action like really super fire, but I wouldn't do it every time because it just, you, it's a lot more work, right? You're, you're literally doubling how much time you're spending in the lawn if you do it every time you mow your grass. So just something to consider. Hope that helps. Thank you for the super chat. Let me know if you need anything else. Next up is Robert Rainey. He says, hate to be the bearer of bad news, but y'all uh, have peeped the 14 day forecast of the Southeast. Yeah, it's gonna get cold. We are gonna have a little cold snap here, but it's gonna be temporary. Don't worry about it. It's just gonna be, this is just a temporary thing. It's gonna pass through. It's gonna come and it's gonna go, Robert. Don't, don't, you, don't you worry. Let not your heart be troubled. It will be just fine. We will get through this. We will get through it. No, uh, no worries. All right, so I have a question here. Well, first of a comment I want to acknowledge from um, Emerald Lawn Maintenance. It says, thank you for your quick response. You're very, very welcome. Happy to help out. Um, next up is T1000. He says, hello, after being on the waiting list for three months, Hancock has my Yukon Bermuda grass seed ready. However, I've used pre-emergent during the winter. How long will seed be usable if I wait till next season? It's a good question. I, here's the thing, I, I tend to only buy it the season I tend to use it. I've never actually hung on to seed or for like, you know, for for years and, and seen how it how it does. Oh, I don't know. As long as it's kept dry, cool and dry, that's gonna that's gonna help get you, you know, that you still get a good result out of it, you know. It um but uh I, I don't know the answer to that T1000 because I've never actually tried it. I don't know how long it's gonna hold or how well it will work if you hang on to it until next year. So I'm sorry I don't have a better answer for you on this one. So what you might do is you might hang on to it and if you're gonna do a renovation next season, next season obviously you're not gonna do a pre-emergent in the springtime and you could do, you could get like a fresh bag of Yukon then or whatever grass you just had to go with and put the fresh stuff out and then if you want to, um, uh, you know, if you want to then, you know, save what's left over for like for follow up for filling in like little bare areas, you could use it for that. But I, I don't know that I would rely or trust it for to do the heavy lifting after it's been sitting around for an entire year. It might be fine, but but fresh seed is better than seed that's been sitting around for a long period of time. It's a good question. Let me um, let me do some research on that and let you know if if waiting a year is good. But my I'm, I'm inclined to think that fresh seed is better than seed that's been sitting around for an entire year. If you do keep it sitting around, make sure it's kept in a cool and uh, and dry spot. Okay, so we got a question here, a comment here from, from the Instagram. It says, I have been super busy, missed my pre-emergent window in Charlotte. Okay, five day average has been around 59 degrees and the window is usually right at 55. Do you think it's fine or summer going to be Weed City? I would, here's the thing. The next time you have a, a block of open weather where it's not like raining outside, I would get your pre-emergent out. I would get your pre-emergent out. I would, um, I would absolutely um, do that. I would, not, I would not wait. I would get your pre-emergent out, um, um, MJ uh, guy. I would, I would, yeah, I would do that. So yeah, 
get, like, apply your pre-emergent. That's 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 uh, that's uh, that's what I would tell you. You know what I mean? Like this time of year, you're in Charlotte. Yeah, get it, get it down is what I would say. Uh, drunken lawn guy. <laughs> okay. Uh, you're fine. If you want to, you want to buy some stuff, you can actually, you can go here. There you go. I'll, uh, I'll oblige you. There you go. You are taken care of. You ask and you shall receive. All right. Next up is Robert Majoros. He says, uh, just tuning in to listen and keep learning POA plus every other weed I know to man is in my backyard. I'm playing, blaming the pups for breaking the pre-emergent barrier. Quite possible, Robert. It depends on what you also did for pre-emergent. So could, if you only did um, prodiamine, that would cause you to, I'm not surprised you can have some breakthrough with POA um, from that. And uh, and yeah, definitely having the, um, the pups digging in the lawn does not help. It'd be interesting to find out, is the POA all over the lawn or is it in areas that tend to stay more damp? That would be an interesting question for you, uh, for you Robert. Uh, next up is Tutrilla. He says, happy Friday, um, everyone. For those of us in the South, the green is finally among us. Very cool. And then uh, uh, finally, up next we got uh, Billy Gilbert. He says, that helped a lot, Ron. I am not stuck on a rotary, but I'm in Washington. My lawn isn't awesome yet. I use the HRX for, uh, there's a used HRX close to me for 400 bucks. That's not a bad price because they're normally in the more than 700 price range. Maybe I'll grab that to get me started this season. Thank you. You're, you're welcome. Yeah, the, the Honda HRX is a great mower. If you can snag one that's in good shape for 400 bucks, I would uh, I would absolutely do that. Not a bad um, not a bad choice. Not a bad option. And uh, Fausto Francis Fausto stopping by. Thanks, Fa um, Francis. Appreciate you. Thanks for you coming to hang out as uh, as always. We got a bunch of thumbs up. And guys, if you guys are enjoying this, um, again, I apologize for the technical difficulties we had earlier where you, the YouTube stream dropped. Don't know what happened. Uh, it happens, it's technology, but we're back. So if you guys are enjoying the show, getting some value out of it, feel free to hit that like button because it is free. It's a great way to support the channel and I really would appreciate it. I really, really would appreciate it. I'm trying to see if there's any other um, questions. So we got a super chat here from Dalvin. Larry, oh no, I actually already answered that. I've already answered this question. I just want to make sure I don't miss it. Sort of my fares, right? If someone gives me a super chat or asks a question and I don't, um, and I, I miss it, that would be rude. Be very, very rude. Okay, so next up, next up we have, um, let's up, we have Jimmy uh, Thigan. He says, um, I just realized you had a store selling Miramichi Green. I uh, asked for a generic humic. Sorry, man. I didn't mean any disrespect. No, no, no disrespect taken. No, no, not at all. I mean, I get it, dude. There's um, like this stuff is expensive. Like some of the stuff that like doing what we do on our lawns is not inexpensive. And there's no, there's no disrespect, man, at all. And if I if I came across that way, I apologize. I I wasn't I wasn't trying to come across um, that it was disrespect that you're that you're being disrespectful or anything like that. Um, it's just that it, when it, the the instrument realized that the the how the product was, um, how the Miramichi products are, are designed or, or the, the initial audience of who they were designed for is a professional turf industry. So which means higher concentration levels, um, frankly, higher standards, and the cost per application is, is, is typically lower than what you're going to find at, um, in retail in like in the big box stores. As far as generic humic, I don't know of just like humic acid just by itself. I know there are some products for that, but I don't know of any off the top of my head. Because like as far as getting humic acid down, I get that from, or like humates, I get that from Essential G and I get it from the fertilizers that I apply. I don't apply humate by itself, but you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't I'm trying to think. No, I don't do that just by itself. It's it's usually as part of another product, part of a carbon pro, uh, of essential G or um, or one of the other for, or one of the fertilizers. So uh, so yeah. So like a good example, of like where I get my humic, like my humic um, acid is from uh, is from Humic Max, right? Like it's like eight point nine percent humic acid. So that's how I get it. But it's not it's not really that's not a generic. But I'm sure there are. I think that you, there are some humic acid generics. I just don't know of any. I've never, that's something I've ever looked into. You know what? I will do a screenshot of that and do some research for you, Jimmy. Not sure though, because I've never looked into that one personally. But yeah, man, it's all good. No worries. No worries at all. All right, next up is Troy Ridley Photography. He says, hey, Ron, in pre-emergent, um, some granules are 35% prodiamine and liquids are 65% prodiamine. So granules are less potent, even though they're limited to, even though limited to 7.1 pounds per year. Yeah, it's just, it's a, it's a concentration of, of active ingredient 
uh, Troy Ridley. So the, the net result is if you're putting, if you're following the label and the label tells you don't, in the case of the granular, don't put more than 7.1 pounds of this product down in a calendar year, that means that based on the concentration of prodiamine that's in that product, that's going to get you that that's that gets you to the uh, to the annual limit. So for a um, for the sixty five the sixty five um, wild dispersal granule, um, it's a uh, it's a point eight it's a uh, the annual limit is 0.83 at that concentration. I'd have to look. I have to look and see what some of the other products are. But like what like because uh, there's also I think there's also a forty. I think there's also a forty concentration a forty percent concentration for prodiamine as well. I believe so. I think that's I think that's right. I think so. Um, that's what barricade might be. I have to, I have to look and see. But the, the long term of it is, is just respect the label. If the label tells you no more than this much of this product over a calendar year, don't put any more than that in and you're going to be good to go. So whether you're using like a granular or using a liquid, as long as you respect the label, you're you're just fine. You are good. Good to go. Uh, Timmy Teo says thumbs up. Thanks so much, Timmy Teo. Appreciate you uh, here. And I'm not sure what else we, I'm looking here for other ones. Uh, Tom Cement says, frowning orange face. And then Louis Castile says, looks like we're gonna get a freeze in Georgia in a couple of weeks. Is it okay to put the triple 10 down? I would not do granular fertilizer unless, you're, unless your lawn is at the point where you're about to start mowing it. Um, if you, I have, I have to look at the forecast and see how bad we are, we're looking here as far as the, uh, the forecast goes. Let's, let's take a look. We can look at our, our 10 day. Um, today is the third. So on the third, so, okay. So tomorrow, high of 69, 69, it's Monday, 69, it's Tuesday, six, uh, 74, 69, 65. Um, so we have, okay. So in my part of Georgia, there is literally from now through the 17th, um, the 16th, which is as far as it's going out. I have one day, one night, which is Sunday the 12th, which is over a week from now, when weather is going to get down to 30, the night, the low is going to be 33 degrees, so not even really freezing. So, um, and the highs are all in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. So if your lawn is going, if you are at the point where you're about to start mowing your lawn, where it's, it, you've got the green fuzz and you're out there mowing it and you want to introduce fertilizer, I see no problem with doing that. If you want to wait until this passes by, you can do that too. I think either way, you're going to be just fine. But really, I look at your lawn and let that define when you start um, when you start pushing um, start pushing fertilizer. I'm a fan of doing it when it's when it's greening up when you're starting to to mow it. That would be my um, my recommendation because that's what I've done. That's what I do. If you want something to do between now and then, Louise, you can spray the carbon kit. So like the the Miramichi, the nine, the the, the release zero the um, the Nutri kelp and biospectrum you can spray that now if you want to with no problem at all so if you, something to scratch that itch if you want to hang on uh, a little bit longer before you put the the triple ten out you can absolutely do that absolutely do that okay next up is Justin uh, Judkins it says okay so I'm using give me a drink here guys I've been going for a lot of hours here mm. I'm using. Uh, the 65 water dispersal granule for the first time this season. The label reads ounces per thousand square feet. But with it being a powder, I can't help wanting to weigh it in grams. That's fine. You can you can convert ounces to grams. Um, I weigh it in ounces. But the what you're going to want to do, uh, Justin, is you're going to take, you're going to get a scale. And do I have a measuring cup? I don't have one here handy, unfortunately. But you're going to take a scale. What I do is take a scale. Take a, put the scale, the measuring cup on the scale, turn the scale on, zero it. And then you can add the amount of material based on the application rate that you are going to go for on your lawn. So if you have Bermuda, you could apply it anywhere between 0 0.40 on the low end, all the way up to 0.83 on the high end. Um, and then you're going to mix that, that, that 0.83 with a gallon of water, and that's enough to cover a thousand square feet. If you like grams more, that's fine too. You can take the you can take the ounces and convert ounces to grams, and then take the the rate that you want to use, convert that to grams, and the same thing applies. Um, put the put the you know put the measuring cup on the scale, um, turn on the turn on the scale, zero it out, meaning it's it's at, it's at zero with the with just the scale on there and no product in there in, in the in the um, in the cup. Add the amount of product that's correct for your um, application rate you're trying to target. Um, fill your sprayer up half it with water, add the, add the amount to the sprayer, mix it up and then fill it, finish, um, um, adding it 
and um, give it another mix and then go spray your lawn. So for, uh, I'll give you some rough math. If you have the mythical 4,000 square foot lawn, which I always use for my examples because it makes the math easier. If you had a 4,000 square foot lawn and you were gonna apply prodiamine at the higher end, so at the, the rate that I use, the higher end of the application um, rate, which you can only do once per year, you would mix 3.2 dry ounces of the 65WG, the water dispersible granule, with four gallons of water, and that will cover 4,000 square feet. So you're taking that, you're taking an, a rate of 0 0.8, 0 0.8 times four is 3.2, with four gallons of water over 4,000 square feet, and that's gonna get you a, uh, a good result. So if you wanna convert that to ounces, you can too, but the big thing is just make sure that you are, you're mixing the right amount with a gallon of water per thousand square feet. So that's doesn't really matter if you do it in grams, micrograms, you know, you know, ounces, you know, fractions of a pound. It doesn't really matter as long as you are um, you're measuring it accurately. So grams are more precise than ounces. So if you got a, you know, if you have a scale that's you want to do it in grams, you could do that too. So hope that helps. And uh, definitely it's a good idea. Get your pre-emergent down. That's a good, that is a good plan for um, for this weekend. Good thing to do. Uh, Philip Hong says, cool, thanks for the insight. I'll likely go even with the sidewalk or slightly higher. That's that's what I would do. You know what I mean? I would not, I would, it, it, for me, the grass being slightly higher than the sidewalk is more desirable than the grass being lower than the sidewalk to me. That's, that's, that's what I like. It just makes mowing less of a hassle. You know what I mean? Next up is uh, Jason Patton. He says, I did my soil test kit. It said to use a triple 12. Then you should use a triple 12. If that's what it says to use, you can use a triple 12. Alternatively, you could use the, the complete, the 14714. Either one of those will work. But the triple 12 is a good is a good product, good option as well. We carry both of them on the uh, the golf course lawn store. So you want to use a triple 12, we can we got that on the in the fertilizer section, or you can use the the 14714. It's your call. Uh let's see here. Um Let's see. Oh, uh, let's see here. Um, Walter Mahone says he keeps arguments because he thinks I'm rude. Um, uh, no. Okay. Let's see here. He says. Uh, uh, he's, I'm not sure what you're what you're uh, saying. What you're what you're saying. Um, um, Walter. Um, I don't think you're rude. I don't. I'm not sure what you're. Uh, why you would think that? But I don't think so. I don't. I don't really know you, so I can't say that I, I think you're rude. You seem like a nice guy. I mean, you're kind of the live stream, right? So, all right. Next up is Alice uh, Shibley. He says, greetings from Arkansas. L always love the Friday feeds from you. Uh, bought my first real mower, a Toro E-Flex in November and been eager to use it ever since. Must pause before we move on. We must, we must clap it up. It's gotta happen. Gotta happen. Congrats on the new mower. This has been eager to use it because I've been using a rotary my entire life. It's gonna be a game changer. It's gonna, it's gonna, I mean, that term is overused, right? Game changer, but it's, it's, it really is a night and different, night and day difference. You're not gonna be able, if you compare how your lawn looks, right? How it looked before, which I'm sure it looked fine with the rotary because you were into your lawn, you're likely mowing it fairly frequently, right? But the difference in how it's going to look when you put that E flex on it is just, you're not gonna, I mean, it's, you're, you're gonna really like it. The, now, I will tell you the one thing that you will look forward to, or I would plan for at some point, is when you want to start taking your height to cut down lower is is a top dressing. You know what I mean? Like if you've not top dressed your lawn already, you didn't say that, but if you haven't top dressed your lawn, the only thing I would say to plan for is a top dress. Do it at least once. Your lawn drainage will thank you and the appearance and the ability, the ability to cut the lawn without scalping will also thank you. That's the only thing I, the other thing I would say outside of congratulations on a pretty awesome mower. I can't imagine having to wait from November until now to break out a brand new mower. I think I would have taken it for a spin at some point. The first, the first sign of a little dry weather, and uh, you know, I can find a little patch of saw, a patch of lawn. I, I would have given it a little bit of a pass, you know, just just to check it out, see how it does. All right, we got uh, Devin in the house. He says, "What's up, Ron? Way late tonight. Another good night of turf talk. Yeah, man. I start. Here's the thing. It's a long night. I started early, and we're going uh, we're going late. We had a little blip there in the middle with, on YouTube, but uh, but yeah, it's." Uh, it's late. You guys have questions, so I am sticking around to try and help out and answer. Hopefully all is going well. I need to have you back on the live stream. And here's the thing, Devin. I promise if you come back on the live stream, I will not keep you on the entire time. I realize sometimes these go to like, you know, three, four hours. Plus, I'm not going to have you stay on the whole time. If you want to just drop in and, you know, for an hour and be like, hey, listen, I'm in the house. I'm a man. I got stuff to do. I'm going to drop some knowledge on you guys for an hour. 
ask your questions because then I'm about to be out. If you want to do that, we can absolutely do that. I'd be completely fine with it. You just let me know. You know, you you let me know what your schedule works like, what it looks like, and when it works for you, and I will um, adjust things to make that happen. Next up is No Name. He says uh, ten uh, over ten. Ron, make sure he doesn't accidentally set the show an hour earlier <laughs> again, again this year. Yeah, because I thought that you know what would happen is you guys we would start earlier. Some people and might show up, and then you guys would be like, okay, we're done. We can hang out. But no, it's like almost uh, 85 people still in here now at almost 11 o'clock at night, which is, uh, means that's a good sign. It means that we are in the season. It is the season for, for, uh, for stripe action, right? It is the season for stripe action. Everyone's getting serious about their lawns, which is cool. Will Ward, he says, Ron, I put down uh, image to kill Poa on Tuesday. Is it too soon to scalp on Sunday? Um, no, should be, should be fine. Uh, do you think image is already taken in the POA and will it kill it even though I cut it low? Yeah, it shouldn't be, be a problem, Will, because remember with image, you want to apply that and then water it in. So that one is a little less sensitive as far as, um, as far as the time between you apply it and mowing. Although you still want to give it two days or so if you can, uh, then a post-emergent herbicide that is a foliar based. You know what I mean? So like, like a certainty, it relies on there being leaf to, for absorption image relies more heavily on uh, on being taken up from from the roots so yeah if you did it on tuesday and you want to scalp on sunday yeah you're good to go you're, you're absolutely fine to do that i mean a perfect example is like the real rollers turf part they had um with them we sprayed cell we sprayed cells i keep saying cells we played certainty on um the week prior to this and uh, no, this is the wrong one, wrong uh, wrong video. We, we sprayed Certainty the week before this video was taken, which was um, before the live stream today. And uh, this is a week after scalping. So if you go back two weeks ago, Certainty was sprayed. And then um, a week later, last weekend, the scalping was done. And then um, this is what it looks like today. So that's, uh, so yes, I, I say all that to say that yes, you can apply the herbicide. And then if you, as long as you give it a few days and then you want to do your scalping afterwards or cutting afterwards, you're going to be good to go. No, uh, no problems with that at all. Good question from Jason Patton says, when would you apply Essential G? Every month at the beginning of the month. That's when I do it. One application, one app per month is what I do. Uh, and as far as when you can apply it, any time of year, as long as the ground isn't frozen. So technically you can apply Essential G 12 times per year if you wanted to. You can apply it, every, I do it monthly. Once per month, every month, as long as you live somewhere where the ground isn't frozen. Um, but that is true for everything. You shouldn't be applying anything to, to frozen ground. So I uh, hope that helps. It, so my, my, my program normally, Jason, is on the first of the month will be... It will be like, um, so say, let's say we could fast forward to April. In uh, in April, my, like the first of April, it would be Essential G. It would be um, it's likely going to be Humic Max. Um, it'll, and then that's for granulars. And then I have my liquids, which would be um, 901C, Nutrizolve, um, uh, the uh, uh, Biospectrum, and um, I'm missing one. No, and that's and that's it. Yeah, no Primo was yet in early April. So, so yes, you can apply them literally every month. I do at the beginning on the same day that I do my granular fertilizer. I typically also do Essential G as well. So I'm out there anyway. No reason I have to go out and get the, the broadcast spreader out twice. So I just do it all on, on the same day. There's no issue with doing them on the same day, literally right after each other. You can't, you just can't apply them at the same time because they require different spreader settings. But you could literally go out and do Essential G. Get that down, and then turn around and change your calibration, obviously, and throw your and um, put you know fill the hopper with fertilizer and go apply that. No problems at all. I do it all the time. Next up is P is Petro says. Um, let's see. Can I says can I um, add prodiamine to Celsius Certainty Mix or uh, should I spray in different apps because one fall and one is swell? That's a that is an awesome question, um, Petro. So. The best answer is exactly what you described, is if you if you want to get the best results out of Celsius and uh, Certainty, two apps is the way to go. Because really, if you are doing, um, here's why, I'll explain to you, right? We take like, take Prodiamine. Prodiamine does not require surfactant, and it works better if you use a um, a spray tip with a larger droplet size, right? So that's that's how Prodiamine likes to be applied. Celsius and Certainty like to, is, works better when you use a, if I don't drop this, a foliar spray tip, so a finer droplet size, 
It also does better when you use surfactant, which you don't really want to use with prodiamy, with um, with uh, with with pre-emergent, um, and it doesn't need to be watered in afterwards. So if it were me, if it were me, what I would do is I would um, it's a couple ways you can do it, but you could apply your prodiamine, right? You could apply your prodiamine, water that in, and then the next day you could go out and, or even later on that day, once it's once it's dry, once the, the turf is dry again, you could apply your prodiamine in the morning, water it in, and that you're good to go, let the, let the lawn completely dry, and then um, you could come back and do the Celsius Certainty Mix with the proper spray tip, right, with the foliar spray tip, and with surfactant, and that is going to yield a better result than spraying Celsius Uncertainty with a um, with a, a flood jet tip and no surfactant. So can you use them all together? Yes. Will it work? Yes. Will the result be as good as if you did separate apps where you actually sprayed them with the correct tip and with a surfactant? No. So if you have the time to do it, I would do them separately. I would, I, re I really would. Um, because like to your point, one is soil based and because of that, it benefits from a different spray tip, um, which in a different, you know, different type of, different type of application. It, it, it likes to be um, sprayed and then watered in. That's your pre-emergent. Whereas Celsius Uncertainty, like being used with surfactant, it, it benefits from a finer droplet size and it does not need to be watered in. So if, I, if it were me, if you had the time to do it, I would do the prodiamine first, water that in, let the lawn dry, and then do your, your post-emergent herbicides afterwards, and then give it several, um, give it a few days before you mow. So if you did it, let's say you did it on Monday. So Monday, you would apply, Monday morning, you applied prodiamine, and then Monday afternoon, when it's completely dry, you could spray your post-emergent herbicides, and then I wouldn't mow before Thursday. One more for Thursday, and then that's that's gonna that's gonna do, you'll be doing you'll be doing both things as correctly as possible. So that's a great that's a that's a very good question. Um, thanks thanks for asking that, and and uh, yeah, that's that's good. Most um, most people try to do them all together, and I have done them all together. Um, like when I was doing the neighbor's lawn, that was like a huge mess and just needed to clean up because I didn't have the time to go do it to go and mix up two different tanks, two different batches, and it produced a pretty good result. But it works better if you if you do them separately. All right, next up is happy fish. Not a sad fish, but a happy fish. It says, I cut my St. Augustine down to an inch and put some triple 13 down. Sounds like a plan. Sounds like a plan. It says, seems to be coming back. I hear you. All right. And uh, Mike is still, Mike is just, is Doug is still having a, a party. Him and Mike D are having a great time with the idea of, of Doug delivering my uh, my Sterling mower to him. You got, you know, it's funny. You guys are just, are, are, a party. You guys having a party uh, all, all by yourself. I like it. All right. Next up is Happy Fish. He says, what to do with 5,000 square feet lawn with a mix of zoysia and St. Augustine in North Texas? Mm. It depends. What do you want? Like, what do you, do you want to keep the zoysia or do you want to keep the, or do you want to keep the St. Augustine? Um, I'm trying to think. The Saint, I'm trying to think, what would you use to get rid of, like you can spray, if you want to get rid of the St. Augustine in Zoysia, so you want to keep the Zoysia, because I think it's an easier problem to solve. You could spray the St. Augustine with Quinclorac, like that will, um, Quinclorac with like a, with like a MSO, with a methylated seed oil, like that, like the, your, your uh, St. Augustine is not going to like that. Um, that will, that will knock it back and a couple of rounds of it will likely kill it. Um, and the zoysia should tolerate that just fine. If you want the other way, I don't know. I'm trying to think of what you could use that will kill zoysia, but that will not kill St. Augustine. And I, I'm, 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 kind of, I'm drawing a blank on that one, unfortunately. I'm drawing a blank on that one. It's, it's, it's almost like if you have zoysia, if you have Bermuda in zoysia, there is a solution for that. But if you have, it's the same thing. If you have zoysia and Bermuda in a, in a lawn and you're trying to get rid, if you're trying to get the Bermuda out of the zoysia lawn, that is easier to solve than having Bermuda, than having zoysia in a Bermuda lawn and you're trying to get the zoysia out of a Bermuda lawn. Does that make sense? Hopefully I'm saying it and I'm, I'm, explaining it, I'm explaining it properly. So if you're trying to keep the zoysia, there's options for killing the St. Augustine in a selective way that won't, that, that will minimize damage to the zoysia. But if you're trying to do it the other way around, I don't know. I'd have to research that. Let me, um, let me take a screenshot of that, and I will um, get an answer for you, Happy Fish. Assuming that of what I'm asking is what your is what your question is. I mean, 
the question just might be, what should I do? If you want to keep both of them, just keep fertilizing them and mowing them and just be happy, right? Just, you could do that. Um, but if you want to have just one, then that's, um, that's more challenging, more difficult. All right, next up is Mike D says, is Doug part of the Golf Force Lawn Academy? Sounds like my kind of people. I don't know, because here's the thing. Some of these, some of these guys, I know some of the people by their, by their names, who they are. Um, uh, there's, there's some people that, that are in there that I know who they are that are also in the academy, um, but I don't know if Doug by name is also in the Golf Course Lawn um, Academy. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Ask him. Ask him. If he, is, if he is and he wants to tell you, he'll tell you. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Next up is Doug 350Z. He says, POA has been bad, been very bad this year. I drive through my neighborhood and it's everywhere. I don't recall it being bad, this bad last year. I don't know, man. I mean, it depends. It depends on, on your, on your preparation. Like if you, like there are, there are lawns, the lawns in my neighborhood that got, that got spectacle. Like they got, you know, they had the lawn care service and they got spectacle in the fall. They're, they're pretty, they're, um, they're for the most part POA free. I mean, you might see a little bit here and there near drainage areas or areas where water settles, but for the most part, there's not a whole lot of POA, uh, in their lawns. The lawns did, that did not get pre-immersion it's very apparent that they, um, you know, that they didn't get pre-emergent. So it, it might be depends on how the, how the laws were taken care of, you know, how they were, how they were treated. There is that. I, in other words, I've not heard of anything special this year that's causing like a rampant outbreak of Poannua that has not happened in years past. You know what I mean? It could be, but I've not, not heard of that. Not heard of that being a thing. All right, uh, Mike D says, how long does it take for things like products like Bloomplex or Greens Plus to become restocked? How long is this live stream going? I've been ignoring the wife for four to five hours. Do not ignore your wife. Like, go see her. Like, ignore me. Like, you've already been here for a while. Go go see your wife, man. Happy wife, happy life. Don't, yeah, I mean, I appreciate you being here, but do not get in trouble over, over me. Don't do that. Uh, as, um, as far as them getting back in stock, there is an, or, literally there is an order in for them. There's been an order for them, in for them for uh, over a week now. Like, uh, over over a week, coming up on two weeks now. And so I'm, I, I'm, I've been told it's en route. It's on its way. Um, and it's a bigger order this time, so hope we don't run out again. Uh, but yeah, it's it's in route. It's not a believe me. It irritates me likely more than it irritates you that it's out of stock because we're in March and this should be solved by now, right? So I get it. It, it is it is coming though, Mike. So my apologies. Um, and when it is back in stock, I will send out an email. Letting if you're if you're on my mailing list on the Golf Course Lawn Store, I'll send out an email and let you guys know that it is uh, back. Or also message on or make a put a, a post on YouTube letting you guys know that it's back in stock. So good stuff. I apologize about the, the product being out. Okay, next up is uh, Noic95. He says, good evening, best weed killer for general weeds. I'm considering Celsius. Yeah, like if I could have one herbicide, one herbicide for warm season turf, it would be Celsius. If I could have a second one, it would be certainty because the two of them together is a, is a combination that knocks out like most of the weeds that you're gonna have in um, in a warm season lawn. So if you could only have one for me, Celsius, if you could have a second one, uh, certainty. That would be my jam. That's what I would do. Next up is Petro says, thanks for um, for adding Primo to my routine this year too. Yep, it's good stuff. I mean, I, I got only warning I gotta tell you is there's life before Primo Max for your growth regulator and there's life after it. And it is awesome. It's one of the best things you can do to your lawn care program because it's, uh, I mean, it's just, it's just sweet. The way it makes your turf look, Proves the hardiness. There's all kinds of benefits to doing uh, Primo Max in your lawn. Joshua Chastain says, "Do you change your walking pace when you change the spray tips from foliar to flood?" Not really. It's not. Um, it's. It doesn't vary. It doesn't vary that much. Um, Joshua, it doesn't vary that much. It doesn't vary that that uh, that much between between the two of them because you know the different colors, like the, the different colors of the spray tips. Um, there's a reason for that. Like you have, you have red, white, blue, yellow. And if you go look at T-Jet's nozzle, um, like they have a chart, like that's based on, on pressure and the flow rate that you're after. So what I believe that Yard Mastery did is they matched, like that's why that spray tip is white. Um, they matched that, the, the white flood jet tip with the red, um, the red foliar tip. And that has, that is, is in my, what I found is that Produces a, a pretty good that produces a good result. In other words, the coverage that I get whenever I do foliar spray. So on my lawn, it is um, typically three backpack sprayers worth. So I do like I have to fill up three times to do my entire lawn. Um, the same thing holds true for whether I'm using the flood jet tip or whether I'm using the foliar tip. So that's um, so yeah, I don't have to vary my walking pace between those two. 
Next up is Joshua Chastain. He says, I was hit hard by mole crickets last year. Do you have a recommendation of how to get to combat them this year? Yeah, so for mole crickets, um, there's a product, I think it's a Delta Guard. I think that's what um, that I've, I've, I've recommended to some viewers that have dealt with that in the past. And it it is uh, it did the the trick for them. I believe that is what... I believe that is what it um is what it is. Maybe Delta Guard, maybe I am I'm thinking about something else. I think that's what it was for um uh for mole crickets. Let's see here. Uh yeah, Delta. Let me, let me pull the label up here and check really quick. Of course, yeah, I believe I believe that is that is correct. Um uh, Joshua Chastain. Let's look here. Let me get my um, this out and find out where it is taking me for that in the uh, the chat. Yeah, yeah. So for mole crickets, yeah, that's what I was thinking about. It is it is on the label. That's that's what I thought. That's what I thought it was. I I, I knew it wasn't. Um, and it was a bear product. So Delta Card. Look into into this. It comes in a lot of different forms. There's a granular version of it. And I'll send you a link here. Uh, definitely check the label out and and read the label as far as application rates. But um, this is uh, this is what um, viewers in the past that have asked me for a recommendation. This is what I've, I've I've given to them, and they've they've reported good results. So this you are at Joshua Chastain at Joshua, and uh, that you go. There you go for 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 mole crickets. That should um. She gets you all uh, squared away. It may take more than one application, but uh, but the viewers that have used that have reported back good good success. So hope that helps. Uh, next up is Tyler Nelson. He says helping my neighbor do his soil test this weekend, spreading the good words about Ron Henry. I appreciate that, man. Thank you for one for helping your neighbor out. That's always a good thing. And then second for um, letting people know about the channel and the content and the story. It really means a lot. Thank you so much. And the next up, we got Cooper's dad. He says, curious, how long was the scalp at the turf park? Or so how low was the scalp at the turf park? Uh, I have Zeon Zoysia. I'm planning a first time scalp area in top dressing. I have pre-scalped down to one inch with the Honda rotary and a, a new California trimmer. Plan to maintain at one inch. Lee took it down to, all, to pretty much to, to the dirt level, man. I don't know what, you know what he said it to, but... Um, but low. If I had to guess, like half an inch, maybe just just under that, it's low. It's low. You can see some areas here. Yeah, I mean, you can actually see where was it? You can actually see here some areas where it got into, you know, where not so that in this section. Hang on, let me stop here and start over. So right here, what you're seeing, like that brown, that is not really from scalping. That is from water settles there, and is a little bit of a disease problem. So we're gonna be taking care of that this season. But over here, where you're seeing you know where that um, the brown areas that is from the mower bottoming bottoming out, and the same thing here, the little brown you're seeing there that is from the lower heights of cut. So he cut, he's very low. I mean, under under half an inch is where he did the scalp on the uh, the zoysia, and uh, so so yeah, um, I'm not saying you got to necessarily go that low, and it sounds like you went down to to half, you went down to an inch and you're planning to maintain at one inch. So yeah, so if you took your, if you did your neck scalp at half, at, at between like five eighths to three quarters of an inch, that's good. Like I would, I would call it good there. You know what I mean? There's no reason to take it all the way down to the dirt unless you really want to. I mean, you can, but there's no reason to, to go that low. So, uh, so yeah, if you're going to maintain it at an inch, then going just below that is, um, is a good idea. That is what I would recommend. But yeah, I don't actually know what Lee set them over to. He said it low. <laughs> he said it low. You guys, you can tell. It was it was, uh, it was was right down there on the dirt. Uh, Ahmed Jones says, when is the best time to scout my lawn? I have Bermuda. How do I keep it from growing so fast during the spring and keep it green? Two great questions, and I will give you two answers. The first question, as far as when you can scout your lawn, you can do it now. You can do it now. You can do it two weeks from now. You can do it in April if you wanted to. But I'm a fan of doing it early than, earlier than later. Reason being is that when you scalp your lawn, um, actually, I can show you the reason why. Um, we'll, we'll cut over here back to the to the turf park video. Um, I think I can fast forward here. No, I can't because your comment's on top of it. So when we get to the end of the end of this video and we get to the Bermuda, you're going to see why I'm a fan of scalping lawns earlier. And that is that 
the lawn will green up faster. So the entire zoysia plot, both the El Toro and the Xeon zoysia were completely scalped. If you pause right here, you'll see on the left, that was not scalped. The Bermuda's not scalped there. If you look at the middle, that is scalped. And then you look at the right, that is not scalped. So that's the results you can expect from scalping your lawn. You know, you mean you're you're going to, in addition to getting rid of all the fashion debris in the lawn, um, the scalp is going scalping is going to help you get the lawn to green up sooner. So that's another benefit of it, in addition to cleaning out fashion and and debris um, in the lawn. So if you want to do it, if you're planning to scalp, now is a great time. If you, especially if you're in the Northeast uh, Georgia area, I, I would I would consider doing that. As far as to how to prevent Bermuda from growing so fast in the spring and also keep it green, what you want to use is plant growth regulator. This product, Primo Max, when I get to mid to late April, I'll begin introducing this into my program and I spray this every two weeks. And what that does is it slows down how quickly the grass grows. You figure that you can literally cut mowing, you can reduce your mowing frequency by, by about half. Now, to help out with that, we had a blog post that we did last week that is right here that talks all about plant growth regulation. So the way you get to that is you go to the golf course lawn store, you go to the blog, and then the second article um, is this one on how plant growth regulation can make your lawn thicker and greener, which is just for you. It's written just for you, Ahmad. So it talks all about what plant growth regulator is, what are the benefits, a little video talking about using it, how to mix it, talks about Primo Max, talks about um, application, talks about how to avoid tip burn and some of the, some, some little pro tips here that you can use to get the best result out of spraying plant growth regulator. So it's a short read, five, six minutes uh, max. Um, and it's gonna, it's gonna get you squared away between that and the videos on how to get a good result with, um, with PGR. So Primo Max, we carry this in the golf course lawn store. It is under the, you go to shop and you go to lawn fertilizer. It's technically not fertilizer, but I didn't have anywhere else to put it. So this is where I, that's where it is. At the top shelf, right there, you'll find Primo Max. So you can use this and you can mix it with any of the fertilizer and leather liquid products that you see here. I typically mix Primo Max with either 901C and NutriKelp, or I mix it with uh, TurfPlex. So your, your call, it can be applied by itself too. You don't have to mix it with anything, but if you're out there spraying the lawn, why not spray a little bit of fertilizer while you're, uh, while you're at it, right? So there you go. You had two questions, two answers. Hope that helps. All right, next up is Melvin Otto. We're almost, got, we're almost done, guys. We're winding down. I'm almost talked out. He says, I have Bermuda grass. Do you recommend to scalp and aerate now that it is starting the season? I recommend scalping. If you want to aerate now as well, too, you can. But I, for most people, here's why. Because if you, if you aerate now, what's going to happen is it's going to look, it's not going to look great until the end of this month. It depends on how fast your, your lawn grows. But if you aerate, say, if you just wait, we're in the first week of May. If you just wait till the end of May, right? And you aerate, literally a week later, you're not gonna be able to tell the lawn was aerated because the grass is gonna be growing. It's gonna be it's gonna be woken up more, it's gonna be growing, and you're not gonna be able to tell. If you don't really care, meaning if you don't care whether that, you know, your lawn has has like, you know, you can, you can visually see all the holes in it and you wanna do it now, you can. I've done both ways. I've aerated in March, in early March, and I've aerated in um, April and later on in the season. You can absolutely do it now if you want to. Most people do it later on. They do it like in April or later because their lawn just recovers faster from it. So it's completely up to you um, which way you, uh, you, you want to go. The only thing I'll tell you, Melvin, is if you are going to aerate, um, you know, what, what I would do is I would scalp now and I would aerate, say, like in April. And what I would say is, as far as timing your aeration, I would do it right before your next fertilizer application, your, your next granular fertilizer or your next granular, your next biostimulant application, because you want to, you know, why not take advantage of the fact that the soil is all opened up to do your fertilizer app or your biostimulant app. So that's, that's the only thing I would say, do your aeration and then right after that, fertilize and do your biostimulants and you're good to go. You're kind of splitting hairs again, you're not, it's not gonna hurt anything to do it now if you really want to, but I would just say, if you can, wait. Wait till wait till April or even later in the season. You're not a whole lot of rush. Um, and yeah, uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, no Name says, that blog is fire and so is that merch. Yeah, the blog, man, it's been a lot of work. Believe it or not, it's a lot of work creating, writing all this content, um, which is why when you guys ask about, hey, do you have like, you know, how much time do you spend on, on YouTube watching like lots of other lawn care YouTube channels? I don't, I just don't have time. <laughs> I don't have time, I'm pretty, I'm really busy. Right. So um, if I do that, then I'm not going to be doing something else. So 
So yeah, and as far as the merch, just to, just for you, no name, if you guys want some some Ron Henry merch, some golf course lawn store merch, you can get that at our updated merch store, which is now in the chat. You can get it right here. I will also have that in the show description once this is all over and you'll be good to go. So if you wanna get your merch, you'll be good. So at the end guys, um, um, you can you can check the, any of these that are watching this after the fact. Uh, the links for the new blog post will be there. The um, the new merch, uh, the merch link will be there and anything else that I think you guys might find valuable will be in the description. And uh, yeah, you should be all, uh, you should be all good to go. And then Adam Carter says, uh, can you aerate every month if you own an aerator? You could, you could. Um, I don't know that you necessarily, I mean, you could, yeah, you, you, you could, Adam. Um, for me, I would rather, um, I don't know, I, if I had a choice of doing one thing per month during the growing season, I would, I would choose verticutting over aerating. You know what I mean? I think you're gonna get more, you're gonna get more benefits out of that. I mean, the lawn, the, 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 your lawn should not be getting that compacted every four weeks. You know, if you have a if you have a sports field, if you have, I mean, they, they don't even they don't even aerate. I mean, mainly because the members would kill them. But you, you they, they don't even they don't even aerate golf courses that that frequently. They don't aerate golf courses every um, every four weeks. So if I had a choice between doing one thing and one culture practice every four weeks, aeration would not be it. It would be verticutting or or something else outside of that. So uh, so hope that helps. And then Ahmed is like says I use my cleats to help uh, aerate my lawn. Very, very cool. Well, guys, gals, again, apologies for the small technical delay we had tonight where it, um, you know, YouTube stream dropped temporarily, but we got it wrapped up. We, uh, we, we, uh, we uh, soldiered on. Thank you guys so much for watching the content and hanging out. I really do appreciate it. Um, again, the fertilizers are in stock, the Lebanon Turf Fertilizer, so be sure to check that out. Get your soil test done if you've not done that as yet. If you've not done your pre-emergent and you're in the Southeast United States, what are you waiting for? We have them in stock at the Golf Course Lawn Store. Even if you don't get them from us, go get some pre-emergent and apply it to your lawn. Your, your lawn will thank you when like June timeframe rolls around. And I think that is all, guys. That's all I got. Thank you guys so much. I really do appreciate it. Get out so you do something fun in your lawn and have an amazing weekend. Take care.